Uh, we I just got to say, we're not- we're not, you, you know, know the, taking you know the, the mickey. the really weird thing about all this? Right? What? And it's annoying because you were saying about, you know, oh, what should have Trisha have asked and all that. Yeah. But one of them mentioned, um, that one of them was adopted and the other one wasn't. Don't talk rubbish. <laughs> no, seriously. I didn't understand it, right? Of and course then, you didn't. And then Trisha sort of said, well, let's have a chat and- and they were like, no, I don't want to go into that. What do you mean one was adopted That's and what you said, one of them- <laughs> I don't- don't quiz me on it, but that's- that's <laughs> what was- that's what was said. Hi there, I'm a- <laughs> Hello there, I'm a multi-millionaire. Oh, and yeah. I've uh, just seen your orphanage. Oh, I'd yeah, love lovely, to adopt one of your children. You'd like to adopt one? L I'd love to adopt a children, because I've got loads from around the world, so I'd love yeah. to adopt one. I'd, I'd give you ten thousand oh, dollars towards oh, your- Oh, well, uh, well, well, we'll speed it through then, yeah, Brilliant. yeah. Okay. We've actually got two left. I so need one. I'm only interested right. in one. Yeah, I don't okay. need any more. Don't need any they're more. Sisters, they're sisters. They, uh, I know it would be tragedy to break them up, but I really only need one. Now break it up. There's the there's the rub. You see, sure, because sure. Um, you just need the, the one. There's ten thousand dollars now. You can have that. I'll sign it now. But okay. I don't want to discuss I'll it further. I'll bring it around. I'll bring brilliant. it around. Brilliant. Okay. okay. Ding dong. Hi. Yeah. Brilliant. You brought my kid, right? Yeah. There she is. There. That's the, a joy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just standing next to a bush. Yeah. Do you want to? Can you bring her out? No. With me? It's like, there's, like, there's nothing behind the bush. So just you just want. Do I you just want. I want to be able. I just want to be able to walk three hundred and sixty degrees round her. Do you want her or not? Yes, I I can't they believe it. <laughs> What's that little trolley? She's talented. Oh dear. You're oh. talking nonsense, Carl. Well, whatever. <laughs> Feeder. That's it. Just what I'm feeling. XFM, one of four point nine. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's time for the the newest quiz in town. <laughs> this is where Carl. Inserts himself into a seminal film. Last week, um, he was the little kid in Sixth Sense. You remember? To uh, a great acclaim. The critics loved it. They said a triumph. Uh, this week, he's fiddled with the graduate. Um, this is the scene where, of course, uh, uh, he goes upstairs to the hotel room. And, um, he's, uh, it's, it's on the cards. She's a dead cert, Mrs. Robinson. Well, there we go then. So, uh, are you ready for it? And I've uh, brought some condoms from home that uh, Suzanne got for Christmas. Benjamin. What? Will you bring me a hanger? A what? A hanger. <sighs> Tell you what, I've uh, I've got wood. What? Just saying, I've uh, I've got wood. I've got metal ones as well. What, what sort do you want? Either one would be fine. All right. There you go. Are you afraid of me? Uh, no. No, I've I've seen weirder things than you. Uh, have I ever told you about the the two lads I went to school with who had big heads? Webbed fingers as well, but not related, and uh, weren't mates, but both had the same thing, which is a bit, a bit weird. Uh, yeah, I've never found out what was wrong with them. Can I ask you a personal question? As long as it's not about me head being round, because Ricky's always going on about that. He's saying I've got a round head. Well, you can admit uh, that, can't you? No, it's, it's, I'd say it's a normal sort of shape. It's just round. It is, isn't it? Yeah, but what, what, what do you mean? So is yours. Ed should be it's round. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. It's just a normal shape. Mm-hmm. And you can talk. Look at your saggy ass. Anyway, get your knickers off. Hello, darkness, my old friend. <laughs> I've come to oh, that was a joy. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. It was an absolute treat. Now, I should say that, obviously, uh, the prize is a copy of The Graduate. Now, bear in mind that XFM is giving away these prizes. Yeah. Carl is so cheap that he wouldn't even buy it on DVD. He's oh. bought it for six ninety nine on VHS. It'll be panned and scanned. It won't be widescreen. There's none of the extra features that you get on the DVD. Oh, That's look at you... Carl's face. He's gutted. Carl, did you pocket the rest of the cash? No, no. I have to use my own money to buy these, right? What, you're, you're using your own money to give this stuff away? Yeah. So I had to go and buy that. XFM is so cheap, I understand. I know. Right? I know. And, uh, it's not worth having it on DVD, is it? Why it's not? An, it's an old film, so. 
<laughs> so the quality is, is uh, do you know what I mean? They can't really tidy it up. Of course they can! They do it from a print. They don't do it from the video. They don't get, they don't get the video and go, let's make it into yeah, a DVD. An old Bitamax copy <laughs> that someone knocking about. <laughs> Uh, well, anyway, it's you the can... the same film, though, isn't it? Uh, Fine, okay, well, yeah, you're right, yeah. But anyway, film, yeah. you can win, uh, six ninety-nines <laughs> worth of The Graduate. The question, and it's email only, Steve, uh, Steve, it's not Steve, it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. The question is, name the actor that Carl, uh, was taking the place of in the film, and of course the actress that he's performing opposite. ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Lovely. Do you want to play something from there? I would love to. It seem appropriate. Yeah. Dear Mr. Simon and Mr. Garfunkel, please, let's not have the sound of silence. Let's have some more beautiful music. Get back together, please, quickly. Uh, I think what? you should do every single link. <laughs> Brilliant. It's the best bit of the show. That's <laughs> uh, so on XFM 104.9. Are we well, going to have time go. to play the clip again before, uh, I don't know, before two o'clock, let's say? Are people not listening to the question? Is that what you're... Are some just people are not listening to the question. Oh, dear. Okay, we'll, we'll play it again at about two then. And personally, any excuse to hear it again, because I thought it was a I, th I think Carl should go out and get the DVD. I think it's embarrassing to give away the, uh, yeah, the VHS. Yeah, you have to get it. You have to go out and buy the DVD later. Carl, on the DVD, it's got a booklet, it's got an audio commentary, it's got behind the scenes features, and it's got this pristine widescreen version of the film. You've got some cheap 699 version. Yeah, and on so, VHS. because you were being mean, because it was your own money, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to waste that now, because yeah. no one wants it. So it's gonna cost you t twice as much as it would have done if you just got the DVD the first time round. <laughs> a valuable mm. lesson learned. Yeah. Have I, re have I rewound it? <laughs> <laughs> There's a penalty if you've not. No, you haven't rewound it. Go and get the DVD later. This, the, they're gonna win a DVD. No, I looked at the DVD and it was 18 quid. I'm Go and get it! Quid and the... claim it back! No, you've gotta wait What ages. a cheap station this is. It's outrageous. I mean... Oh. Well, do you want to go on with the other prizes with, uh, what we're giving away later? What, what is this for Rockbusters? Well, it's... We don't give away prizes, we throw away prizes. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> really cleaning out, cleaning <laughs> yeah. out some drawers in XFM. Go on. I'm just having a quick look through before I... Because we've sort of revamped Rockbusters a bit, there's that extra bit in it <sighs> now, isn't there, that audio bit? You're selling it, you're big, you're big sell. Oh, we've got, we've not straight there. into that yet, though. There's a DVD, oh, yeah. there's a DVD there, what's I'll, that? I'll go through them later, Rick, I just need to absorb it. Don't so, get excited, So, uh, who did, uh, Carl play in the clip? What actor's place did he, uh, take and what actress played opposite him? Um, that's ricky.gervais. At xfm.co.uk. Sure. Brilliant. Mm. Yeah. Is that it then? Let's what have we got uh, coming up? We've got some... Play a bit of Coldplay. A bit of Coldplay, be right. Coldplay. Yellow on XFM 104.9. Get it on DVD. It's an embarrassment. Seven quid's worth of old video, pan and scanned. I bought it now, that's what they're getting. Right. He's put a downer on it. All the work, you know, that went into that, and then just gonna fob them off with a bit of old celluloid like that. Right, listen, still to come, right? We've got, um, the, the monkey's thing. Ooh, chimpanzee that! And when I was out last Sunday, right, at Johnny's birthday party. Yeah. Steve was there. Yeah. Got talking about stuff. Um, and a debate. That we didn't really finish, cropped up. It blew your mind, didn't it? Amazing. Oh, like, I know about this. Steve told me. This is the, uh, infinite amount of monkeys. Um, or a monkey with a typewriter and an infinite amount of time would eventually come up with the works of Shakespeare. Yeah. There was no debate. It's a philosophical, mathematical problem. There's no debate. It's true. It won't happen. No, listen, Carl, listen. Infinity sorts it all out for you, right? An infinite amount of monkeys at a typewriter, right? They would do, they do everything. They type everything. Infinity just sorts it all out for you. There's no getting to it and they're going, oh well, uh, let's have a look what they've done. <gasps> this one's come close. It did Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> it would do it all. It would type everything ever possible, conceivable. Yeah, but... It's a, it's a, it's a mathematical thing. Well, we've heard your side of the argument, Rick. Really. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, it's a persuasive one, but let's hear Carl, because he yeah. heard about this in a pub last week, yeah, so what's he's your got problem? some strong what's your problem ideas with it? What's your problem with it? Well, f first of all, right, you're saying it's a load of monkeys. It's not just one monkey that's- It depends. That can live forever. It, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. It's either a, a chimpanzee with a typewriter, with an infinite amount of time, he would eventually, by definition, mathematically, type everything, ever possible, okay? Or, it's an infinite amount of, um, uh, chimps with typewriters, and one of them will type it first time. But already that's, that's sort of, that's not right. 
you either need to have what one monkey- What do you mean? What, what? You mean the, the, uh, employment laws? Point. What can... do you mean it's not right? Let's hear him out. Please. Okay. If it's one monkey- <laughs> Yeah. With a typewriter that's got loads of ink in it and that, right? At least it knows what it's done in the past. Don't- It's not- Keep going! Cry. If you've got a load of monkeys- It's like- It's like if you have too many- What's that saying about too many chefs- Too many spoil... chimps spoil the soup. Right. Well, it's the same thing. It's like, well, I, I didn't tell you to put salt in it. I was gonna put salt in it and it messes it up. Whereas if it's just one, they know what's gone on. So what I'm saying I, I, is- I, I, just leave him go. I can't no, be bothered, Steve. I want to hear, I want uh, to hear it, the This rest. blows my mind. He doesn't know what this does to me. It's a mathematical problem. I want to hear the rest. Well, it's just- I just don't think it will happen. What I do mean, you mean you don't think it'll happen? Infinity works it out for you, by definition. Well, what's stopping them typing the same thing again? They would. They- in fact, the problem should be, if you had an infinite amount uh, uh, of time, that, um, it would type- that works with Shakespeare an infinite amount of times and everything else an infinite amount of times. But, you know, that's not- that's just- that's- that's not as- But not- not Shakespeare. OH! SHUT UP! YOU, you IDIOT! So, Red Nose Day comic relief has come round again. Yeah, um, Red Nose Day is obviously the very specific day in the calendar for the whole generic term comic relief, I think. It's it? normally when the uh, telecast happens, yeah. um, people know that that's the day when they can uh, dress up, do charitable acts. But of course Comic Relief is a charity that's working all the time for uh, disenfranchised all over the world. Are you, have you always been a, a strong champion of Comic Relief, Carl? Not really. Um, Why was I expecting that answer? Well, I do loads of stuff without going on about it. My gift to the world has been you, Carl, to be quite honest. I feel that you're the world. I'm now. sure there's people in Africa going, we'd we prefer blankets. <laughs> <laughs> Doing a, a Wills charity, isn't it? Is it? Sort of. I mean, if, no, you, if, you make half, if you make a donation to a charity within the will, I suppose that's quite charitable. But just giving money to your relatives isn't, is it? Of course it is. <laughs> well, they it shouldn't is, have it. They're getting some up for nothing, but it's, I, mean, I don't know, it's giving something away that you have no use for. <laughs> exactly. I yeah, mean, but, but forget that, it's someone is getting something yeah. when they've done nothing for it, really. Well, it is, I suppose it is charity, but charity is usually infused with some sort of altruism. It's, it, it's like, it's not charity on your part, because you're literally not around anymore. So it's no longer you giving it, it's just some money that Yeah, but I could, I could either was. give it them or not give it them. Once I'm dead and I've turned to mush, I shouldn't be worrying about <laughs> Suzanne's mum getting a table. <laughs> but, is that, is that you what know, you're leaving her? Well, I've, I've called up my dad first. Why are you said, doing a will for the show? Because of this travel thing right, I'm yeah. doing, and it can get dangerous, you know. But why have you done a will up to now? Because you sort of, uh, I don't know, I felt sort of young and free. <laughs> Whereas now I'm I've never that's never two words I've associated with Carl. <laughs> no. He's always seemed like a man who's in his late fifties. Yeah, and exactly. I'm certainly yeah. Never, the idea that you're free. It's it, more... it, even if we're just talking about the head alone, it's <laughs> it's the it's the head of a late fifties. Free of hair. Yeah, <laughs> totally free of fucking hair. I'm sort of getting on first name terms with my doctor. Oh mm. really? Chatting more. Oh, what is it this time? How's your yeah. middle finger? You Not know, too bad, Carl. All, all that sort of thing, so it's just made me think- Have you had that done for the will, by the way? For insurance I think and stuff? you need to do any for a will. I think you do. There's nothing the on the paper. Exam. No. No, uh, listen, for insurance purposes, I think you need to have, um, a testicular exam for testicular cancer. You're just leaving the high risk for testicular cancer, actually, and you're- you're entering the high risk for prostate and cancer. And you can have both at the same time. You could have both the at, the same time, at the same time, if he's a very dexterous doctor. Um, I wouldn't want that. Why? Too much like- It's just too, too much painful. going on, it's like someone juggling you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like being examined by Squidly Diddly. And so you said you called up your dad? Called him up, I said is there anything you want if, I'm, <laughs> if, I, if I die? Right, and presumably you know, Suzanne, she's getting the, she's getting the lion's share. She is, but then the fellow who was on the end of the phone talking us through it all was going, oh you should get married. I was going, oh shut up. He's saying, well, it make it things a lot easier when it comes to this, and it's like, well, that isn't a reason to get married, is it? <laughs> well, so she can have all my stuff. I said, I've wrote on the bit of paper that she mm. can have it, but it's something about um, tax. If you're not married, you have to hand over more. I think you get so much, and then it's like ridiculous tax rate. Yeah. But she's going. You should, that's why we should get married. I'm going to be paying tax. I'm going. Hang on a minute. She's already like thinking about money loss <laughs> instead of me disappearing. Yeah. She's going. Yeah, we should. I'm saying, look, you'll be getting a load of money. 
I said, if I die on this program anyway, mm. I'm insured, you'll yeah. be getting about a million pounds for that. Yeah. I said, so that's, that's something you haven't got now. Yeah. Got nowhere near that now. <laughs> I said, so even if you have to pay tax on that, yeah. I, I don't think it'd be right to get married just in case I get killed. Have you also two sets of parents, Matt? No. That'd be good, would it? Well, I suppose it's a reason to, isn't it? At least if you're getting married, there's a reason for them to meet. At the moment, there's no reason for them to meet. No. They'd get on each other's nerves. My dad wouldn't get on with a man. <laughs> Why? Just wouldn't. She doesn't like me, so she won't like me dad. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's just an exaggerated version. <laughs> so, <laughs> I think, uh <laughs> It doesn't need to happen. But you could just nip down the registry office, get it done, done and dusted, and you just phone up your folks and say, it's already happened. It's I too said late. that. I said, listen, if we had to do it, I said, if, if it was like we'd got to do it for some reason, mm. I said, I'd do that. You, we can have it done by two, you can be back in work for three. <laughs> because at the end of the day, there's no other, there's no, you know, we've known each other for years. Yeah. We're not going to suddenly turn into some sort of Tom Hanks and Meg Ryan film yeah. just because we got married. Yeah. It's going to be the same, exactly yeah. the same. Yeah. <laughs> Me and Jane were out with them and Suzanne the other night, right, uh, at dinner. And honestly, he is so, so grumpy. He was saying about, uh, uh, for Christmas, right? He said, you've had a flaw. <laughs> you've had a flaw. <laughs> now, what did that mean? We had a new floor put in. But how is that her floor? Because she wanted it. But you walk on it too. I paid for it. I don't understand what but you mean. But don't you understand that, like, <laughs> a, 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 you know, a romantic break or, a, or <laughs> clothes or perfumes, you know, sort of things that are kind of indulgent for a lady, that's, that's a gift. Not yeah. a new floor. That is like something that you give to some little African fella on Comic Relief. In fact, I think I saw it once. He didn't <laughs> yeah. have a floor. <laughs> exactly. They built him a floor. I, I remember watching it with you, and they gave him a new pair of shoes and the floor. He went, hold on, floor or shoes, <laughs> not both. <laughs> so you think charity is all right as long as people don't get above their station with charity? I think it should be there as a little, little booster. Right. They've always got their hand out. Right. And it's been like that since I was a kid. Yeah. I remember being a kid, people mm. knocking on the door, my mum going, don't look at the door, there's someone there. <laughs> <laughs> and we just pretend they weren't Charity's there. Charity's not at home, not at your home. <laughs> no, but because it's all the time. I mean, my mum didn't like answering the door anyway, even if it was the pools man, she'd sort of say, don't move and he might not see that we're here. So you just froze where a man was at the door. Well, you just, because the front room was near the door so people right. could see in. Right. So you just sort of stayed there and pretend that either well, you can't so like hear him. some sort of predator, like, they can't see you if you don't move. Well, even if he was peering in through the window and he could see you in there, not moving. So he looked through and there was three people just frozen, <laughs> right, right, like statues, right, just their eyes looking at him. Yeah. And well, then confused. Well, like, they're clearly dead, I'll move on. <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's, there's obviously been a gas leak. <laughs> <laughs> and did you did you say sitting or stand up or no. did you sort of like throw yourself no, to we the just, floor? No, we just sat, we just sat on, on the, you know, where you were and you just stayed still. But did he ever look in and see I you don't know, because you didn't turn around, did you? <laughs> so you would pretend you couldn't hear the door? It seemed to be the 80s, I had a lot of it, because it was yeah. all the Avon thing, wasn't it? It was perfume, yeah. Yeah. Tupperware. What? Tupperware. Tupperware? Yeah, the plastic boxes. <laughs> Tupperware! It's, it's dishes for fat people. Uh, here we go. Oh, these are big. God, they are. They're for fat fuckers like you to eat out of. Just a lot of charity stuff. Just a lot. It seemed to be the time, the 80s, that they suddenly found out they can sort of scav money off people. OK, right, let's do the scenario. I'm, I'm at the door. Uh, I, can, I can see you're in there. You might as well come open the door. Carl? Carl? Why are you staying so still? Are you, are you trying to avoid me? <laughs> it's working. Carl, your eyes are moving. <laughs> Can you come to the door, please? <laughs> I suppose in the end you've got to move Carl, on. Carl, um, no, I'm going to stay here. <laughs> I'm just going to stay here until <laughs> you have to move. <laughs> Carl! <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I'll move on then. Right. It works. <laughs> yeah, it works okay. perfectly. Because Brilliant. once they've got you, that's the whole thing with charity. Once they've stopped you in the street, if you've stopped, that's it. Keeps on going. You know, I mean, the good thing now is you've got an iPod. 
So you can just either pretend you're on the phone mm. or listen to music. Or just stay very still. <laughs> just freeze when someone says, Can I trouble you for. <laughs> oh, he's totally frozen. That would be amazing because they're normally in one spot, aren't they? Yeah. So it's just so they're carrying on selling stop you, and so you've got to stay there for the rest of it outside waitress. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> for seven yeah. hours. <laughs> yeah. It goes dark. <laughs> well, I'm. I finished my shift. I'm off. And then you just see <laughs> you, your eyes just see them walk away like that, and they all meet in their little tunics. And then you start walk. They look back, and you freeze. <laughs> and then they walk on, and then you can go home seven hours late. Ever since I was young, I've always liked going in charity shops, particularly because, you know, you can you find sort of interesting old records in there. Never sort of gone in there to buy clothes and stuff, but, you know, books, whatever. And, uh, I was in a charity shop, you know, and I've patronized, patronized them for years, and I noticed that through the window, there was like a paparazzi guy, and he was taking pictures of me through the window. That was a bit weird, and obviously the old ladies in there didn't have any idea who I was, so they just thought that was a bit strange. And then it was in one of the, uh, the magazines, like the kind of celebrity magazines. It's, oh, here's Steve Merchant. You know, he, despite all the money he must have made from his various projects, he's still going in charity shops. And you just think, but sorry, how is that a bad thing? Like, I'm yeah, sure. I give a lot of stuff to charity. A lot. Most of the time, just because it's, it's nearer than the wheelie bin is. It's just a way of getting rid of garbage most sure. of the time with me. Stick it all in a bin bag, good stuff on the top, the stuff that you're embarrassed about, yeah. stick it in the bottom of the bag. What are you embarrassed in, about? Just old shoes, trainers. Some of the books you've written. Uh, socks, socks, underpants. Underpants! You do not give underpants to charity. Washed. But who's gonna <laughs> wash, <laughs> I know, as opposed to just like peeling them off. <laughs> yeah. Well, and to, I don't know why you've got a problem with underpants, but shoes. You see, I've who's never buying buy underpants from a charity yeah. shop? I mean, I don't care how low you are on the socio-economic level. I know. You can get about 14 pairs for a quid in some places. I know. I don't know who's buying underpants. <laughs> I don't know who's buying your underpants. <laughs> I definitely don't know. I mean, if they were signed. Yeah. That, that is something, that is something I like doing though. When I've given to charity, mm. I like going past the shop and seeing if it made it in the window. Mm. Any success? Yeah, re recently, the one not far from here had me um, egg cups in the window. <laughs> so it's like, oh, look, there's. What, you've got a new set of egg cups, so you've got rid of your old ones? Yeah. Um, I don't think we've got any egg cups. Haven't you? Well, there's nothing wrong. Honestly, it's hardly been. I mean, it's made the window space. That's how good it was. It had hardly been used, that egg cup. Because mm. it was a doubler. And I think they were quite small for the egg size that I get. I think they were made more for the small egg. And I have the large egg. Right. So it was, it was never really Just used. Just like your underpants. <laughs> Letter to Hermione, David Bowie of Space Oddity album, XFM 104.9. See, do, 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 oh, I don't know where, I, I, I thought you'd sort of learned a little bit, Carl, what is a, an interesting fact and what might just be a mentalist online. Do you, do you know what I mean? Do you know what point we're making here? What, why the truth is so much more fat, even a little bit, even something that's just, uh, you know, mild, but is definitely the truth, is so much more interesting that, than just wish fulfilment of truth. To me, if it starts with there was this ghost, right, it's not interesting. You could say anything. There was this ghost that could turn custard into wine. It doesn't matter. There was this ghost that had nine heads. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. There was this <laughs> you know Carl's looking at you going, there's a ghost that can turn custard into wine? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter what you say after that, there's a ghost that can uh, uh, swallow alligators whole. The, the, the premise means it's not true to me. Do you know what I mean? It's like people say, you know what, uh, God, right, he's incredible, I gotta stop you there. It, uh, the fact that he can make the earth in seven days, well, you've lost me already. Do you know what I mean? Where if someone says something like, you know, a cockroach can live five days without a head, that's interesting. That's interesting. Right. Do you think when you die, they say, you're a ghost, this is gonna amaze you. <laughs> yeah. You can go and you can spook people out. Yeah. Do you like custard? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come over no, here. No. Well, if you don't, oh, you don't. <laughs> oh, oh. Do you like wine? Of course I do. <laughs> oh, you are gonna love it. Yeah? You're gonna love me. You're gonna, gonna love it. Yeah. I've lost all my loved ones. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do, do you see what I mean? It's, it's, it's what your sort of beliefs are based on. Mine are sort of on... I suppose logic and, and, and science and so I'm amazed by the world and and So the ice man. Why why does that amaze you? What's what's like ooh Well they 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 found us some uh, part of our preserved past. You know, it's interesting. I, I, you know, I, again, I'm amazed by anthropology and evolution. Yeah. Go it's on. just that 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 line on its own like that, you know, they found an ice man is great. But then it went on and on and it's going on about 
you know, they've had to get different people involved to find out how, how old it was. Because first of all, the story started off, right, <laughs> an old fellow on holiday somewhere, uh, where did they find it? In Sweden or something? And he was walking in the hills, and, He was uh, walking? In the hills. In hills? Was yeah. he a transvestite? In the mountains. Oh, right. In the hills. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's walking, walking about, and he sees this body in the, in the snow, and he thinks, oh. So he calls the, calls the police up, and they come and have a look, and he goes, oh yeah, it's probably a murder. So then, they di dig it up, and find out he's got hold of a spear in his hand. Right, and he's, and he's dressed like Fred Flintstone. Yeah. Right. And they realise it's probably not a recent murder. Right, his knuckles are drugging on the floor, <laughs> yeah. he's a Neanderthal man, they yeah. think, hang on, Carl Pilkington. <laughs> but, when they found out, hang on, it's an old thing. It's an old thing! Can it? If it was a murder recent, then you'd go, hang on, how did this happen, who does he belong to? Yeah. Well, the chances are, whoever murdered him is also dead. Five thousand years ago, probably, uh, yeah. So leave it. Just bury it. <laughs> 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 I don't think it's a murder investigation. No, but they are. It's not Quincy going, this is really, this was before my time. <laughs> it's no, not that, a murder that, investigation. Yeah, yeah just, just one thing bothers me, sir. Um, just one final thing. My wife loves you, <laughs> but, um, this guy. This that's, guy. That's how they were Why would he him? have a spear <laughs> yeah. and a leopard skin? I, I just can't, I can't get over this. What are you talking about? That's what I'm saying. What, what are you saying? What are you saying? Right, shut up everybody. What are you saying? You've got one chance now, you've got to ask me a question, and I will answer it the best way, but what are you saying? I'm what saying, is your question? Right, he probably spent a load of money trying That's not to a question. Out. That's not a question. Yeah, but let me tell you what I'm saying, right? They're probably spending a load of money finding out stuff about this fella who died. And even if, even if he wasn't murdered, he'd be dead by now anyway. So get over it. Right? <laughs> 3,000 years ago, he, he, he died, mm. right? So then they start messing about with it, saying, well, how did he die? Well, it, it doesn't matter. It was, it was ages ago. Then, they start digging his belly open, seeing, uh, the last meal that he ate. Yeah. Oh, he ate seeds and leaves. Well, no surprise, really. <laughs> he was now else around, again, spending more money. Someone's been paid money to sort that out. Then they bury him. And then said, hang on a minute, are you sure that he died by, like, a spear? Let's dig him up again. So they dig him up again and find some splinter Sorry, or something. Sorry, I don't believe they buried him. They did. Well, in some sort of fancy coffin so everyone can see him. But for me, that is more wasteful than sorting out something that's, you know, like someone who's ill. Sort, sort something out, you know, something. Yeah, they, 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 sorry, it's not either or. They don't, they didn't put a doctor out of surgery. <laughs> exactly. Like, it's not an old man in a bed in a yeah. corner or somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ted, well, what are you doing? Someone... I'm just, I'm just giving this bloke a, a stat clear. <laughs> no, look, we found an old fella in a skit. Okay, uh, okay, you yeah. take over. It's not either or, Carl. What are you talking about? It's scientific research. But don't you see why this is fascinating? It gives us an insight into how we lived 3,000, 5,000 years ago. That's an incredible historical document. The what seeds. if it was your equivalent? What if it was like the Carl of the time and there's people, uh, you know, ghosts now through that going, oh God, you don't believe, don't, I, I don't believe it, they don't dug up Carl. They think we're all like that. Oh no, don't, oh no, they're going into his brain now. They're looking at how his brain works. We're going to get such a bad rep. Oh well, dear. Well, each to their own, if you like it. I just thought it was a bit of a... a waste of money. Bit of, bit, a little bit of a waste. Yeah, okay. But, uh, there you go. Anyway, we've, uh, will we give out the answers to Rockbusters next? If we yeah. must. Yeah. He sometimes stuns me. Mm. Sometimes I, I'm taken aback, do you know what I mean? But what worries me, it, it, what worries me is if one day aliens do visit... <laughs> I'd love and that. And they come down, yeah. But what worries oh, me is they might bump in- What if they bump into you? What if they bump into you and they think that you represent mankind? And they oh. go up and they- they start another planet. They can act- they say, oh. we'll ask you three questions and if you answer them correctly, we will not blow up your planet. Yeah. We'd be doomed. Or, it depends. It depends what they ask you, don't they? What if they said- what if they said, right, Carl, what's the weirdest thing ever found in China? I say, every Chinese kid. And they go, okay, right. Okay, interesting. Too, all right. What um, don't you see anymore? What do you see an old book they're doing? You don't see an old fella eat eating a switch. Yeah, and they say, um, uh, what if they asked you, what's across the road from you when you're washing up? Uh, well, there's a few, three things. Do you just want one of them? No, yeah. I want all three. You want all three? There was a Chinese kid dancing about in his underpants. Yeah. There was a bouncer every yeah. night getting ready to go to work. And the third one, the old woman reading a book, the same book. And they go, night. right, your planet's safe. See, Gork, see. back in the ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They are a superior race. <laughs> Well, I just feel the listeners should be able to contribute. They do. 
Yeah. They phone and say, the show's rubbish, mm. move on, um, can, can we experiment on Carl? I'm yes. a doctor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I would like to tattoo on would Carl. Would like tattoo? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Carl, well, have you got any tattoos? Have you, have you ever thought about that? Any kind of piercings? Don't like the idea. Don't no. mess, don't mess with your body and that. Okay. He doesn't like the human body, he's scared of it. But I told you, don't know about me, uncle, mm, Tattoo Stan, we've talked about that, haven't we? Yeah, <laughs> Tattoo, tattoo Stan, Stan, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's got loads. And I, yeah. I think now he sort of, you know, looks in the mirror and thinks, oh, what have I done? Yeah. But then again, so do you. I was <laughs> telling, like, telling Ricky before about someone who had a tattoo. Uh, it's a bit horrible, really, isn't it? I don't know. I can't remember the t the skin thing. Oh God, yeah. You're not going to tell us it again. I'm, I'm hoping it's not true because it's from Carl, but it's pretty disgusting. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, fortunately, because there's no paranormal or animals <laughs> acting like humans involved, I think it might be true. It's a fellow who kept his dad's tattoo. Yeah, he just sort of when his dad passed away, he got the skin off and put it in a frame. Who'd you ask to do that? Oh, man alive. Uh, Ashes to Ashes, that's- Sorry, um, before we- Barrett, you don't- <laughs> Before we come in, I've got a Stanley do, knife. Do you do any other services? <laughs> like what, my son? I'll just- just pop- pop some of him in a- in a jar for me. I'm sorry? <laughs> Uh, how do you? I mean, that I is. I bought this clip frame from IKEA. Yeah, yeah. You just yeah. that between four ninety nine, four ninety nine. Yeah. Um, oh, that I, is I imagine right. your father is a man who's probably appalled by the idea of tattoos, earrings, things like that. I imagine he's quite an old school gent. He's, he's never sort of said anything, but uh, if you came back with an earring, what would you have said when you were a youngster? I never saw him that much as a kid, so I don't think he'd have noticed. My mum would have said, "What have you done that for?" Yeah. Our kid had a tattoo. And, uh, and, a, and an earring. Sorry, is this the one that took, uh, borrowed a tank from the army to go and get a packet of ads? Yeah. Well, there you go. We must tell that story again next week. For yeah. those that are fairly new listeners, that's got to seem tantalising. Yeah. Your brother once drove a tank down to the local shops to buy some cigarettes. Absolutely true. Yeah. It's an extraordinary story. But that's it. We don't it was that other auntie you told me about in the week. Not Auntie Nora, the one that farted for five minutes, but there's another auntie you talked about. How many aunties have you got? I haven't really got another auntie. I've got me, me brother. Yeah. Who I haven't seen in ages. Yeah. My sister I hadn't seen for about twelve years. Then I saw her again, and then she got fed up because I said, "Oh, you had a new kid, and you went with all the same. I've seen one. I've seen them all." Yeah. Why you saying that to your sister? Your sister, you haven't seen her for how long? I hadn't seen her for about twelve years, and then for some reason I met her in a car park in Wales. Right. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's incredible, isn't it? <laughs> for some reason. Yeah. And um, she got she got in the back of the car and she said, "Oh, I want to show you something, right?" And uh, she got this picture out and said, "Look at that." And it was one of my new nieces and nephews. It was her, her, her daughter or her son. Yeah, whatever. And, uh, she said, look at that. And I said, oh. And I sort of said, well, there's no point showing it me. All babies look the same. Don't there's we? no point in showing it me. It just takes two seconds of your life to go, oh, lovely. Yeah, right. That's all you have to do. If it was a first, yeah. I'd say, oh, I'd show a bit of interest, even though. Do you, think the, in do you think the novelty wore off for her with the second kid, third kid? <laughs> Six kid. <laughs> yeah, I think even she should be bored of looking at pictures of babies. Kind of a woman, is she? And can I get her phone number? <laughs> <laughs> right, is that it then? <gasps> Play a tune. Have we got- is this the- is this yeah, it? Have this we, is that, have we got to wrap it all yeah. up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Go well, on. I forgot to bring in a song for the ladies this week, so I thought I'd play a song for people who enjoy the work of Deep Purple. <laughs> <laughs> that run and run! <laughs> <laughs> Here's Deep Purple, see you next week. <laughs> Bye! I need direction. Teenage Fan Club on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Do keep your suggestions coming in for uh, roles that you'd like to see Carl playing in future editions of this quiz. This is the most popular comedy we've ever done. Has it got a name yet? Have we come up with a name? Uh, Holly Wouldn't. Okay, brilliant. Um, well, anyway, we had some suggestions. Um, <laughs> Neil Wilson in Bedford, he suggested he'd like to see you, Carl, playing the role of Clyde the Monkey in <laughs> yeah. Every Which Way But Lose. <laughs> That'd be great. Oh, and uh, also an excellent suggestion from Lee Gridley in Essex. The obvious role for you is, of course, Dustin Hoffman as Rain Man. I, I said that, didn't I? That's perfect. That'd be great. Yeah. Just imagine going, okay, you remember? Bet two for t yeah. good. Well, well, yeah. Well, you've lost again. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. I'm worried that you- I don't know, it's a bit of a stretch, Carl. Can you play someone who's that clever? <laughs> Give it a go. Yeah. How oh, I do Elephant Man. <laughs> okay. Why? What sort of ideas you got for Elephant Man? Well, I don't know whether I'd be him or, like, the Doctor. Mm. What would you say if you were the Doctor? Just like, uh, oh, how do you do that? You know what I mean? How do you do that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, can I- can I get it? I've seen your head. <laughs> <laughs> or he goes, 
I'm not an animal. And you go, wow. <laughs> it's really Judging vintage. by your head, you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Forrest yeah. Gump. Yeah, do that. Yeah. It's loads, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. We'll keep them going in. That's brilliant. So, uh... The competitions don't stop there, sadly. Yeah. No. Rockbusters. Oh, God. <laughs> right, how about, right, we've got this other, other thing, right, this other music thing. Yeah. How about we make that part of how it? How many competitions have you got? No, well, this is what I'm thinking, right, because we can, if, you, if you're not happy with Rockbusters, if we add a little bit to it, and they love the bit I've added, then we can slowly fade it out without them knowing. That's it. Do two of your rockbusters and th and one of these. Right. I think Come it's on the prizes, Carl. They're the prizes. Well, yeah, let's do the prizes. Let's quickly go through them then. Yeah. All right, what have we got here? Let's speed this up because I'm dropping off yeah, now. I think it, it's, like, it's either warm in here or, or this isn't the most scintillating conversation we've ever had. Okay, first thing, there's a CD here. It's uh, tracks that were sampled by <laughs> uh, various artists, including Jay-Z, Happy Mondays and so on. It's the original versions. That might mm. be quite good fun. Sure. I Love You. Let me see. It's a number of love songs. Yeah. You've got uh, Blue featuring Elton John on there. Yeah. Chicago. Yeah. Nat King Cole. Yeah. Great, so I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Retro Dance Masters. Oh, yeah. That's another CD. Dance tracks, yeah. obviously, on there. Oh, it's still knocking about. The Best Air Guitar Volume 2. Sure. Rubbish. Uh, this is quite good, though. It's Paul Whitehouse's uh, TV show Happiness, that's the first series on DVD. Uh, we've also got Stephen Polyakov's The Lost Prince, you can have that in your collection, probably never watch it, but it might look like you're slightly classy and arty. And so uh, the subtitles. <laughs> the best one hit wonders album in the world ever. You've got stuff on there like uh, Nana, 99 Red Balloons, yeah. and uh, M's Pop Music. So not oh, that yeah. bad a selection actually this week, he's cut out some of the chaff. Right. Yeah, okay. Sorry, right, here we right. go, Rockbusters. Rockbusters, first one, uh, we'll do two of these and I'll play something in a minute. Right, uh, first one. Um, the Australian picks two blokes. What? The Australian picks two blokes. The Australian picks two blokes. The initial? Yeah, the initial E, right? And the second one, that builder's a bit- I've got that already. It's annoying. <laughs> okay. That- that builder is a bit cute. He's a bit cute? Yeah. Alright. And that's B-T. B-T? B-T. That builder's a bit cute. Yeah. And the Australian picks two blokes, E. And then what I'm gonna do now is play some sound effects that make up a song, and you've got to guess what the song is. Go on then, right? just do it it's and on then the show. Here we go, here we go. <laughs> there you go. So what song's that? It's yeah. sort of an XFM okay, type well, song. Okay, that's great. Email so, so only. First, sorry, I should just clarify, the first two are uh, band names or artist names, but that's the title of the track that we want there. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. It's that's so right. confusing. No one's ever going to figure this out. They will, though. They will. They'll do it. Ricky we'll Gervais at XFM. Hey, listen, we've got the best fans in the world, Steve. <laughs> Remember that. Remember that. <laughs> Without them, we ain't nothing. Yeah. So good luck to you. <laughs> Should I pick a track, Steve? Uh, I'd love to. I want to wear some monkey magic. I want to wear some chimpanzee. That I want to wear some aping around. <laughs> we've got that still to come. Oh, I can't really. believe it. We've got Rockbusters. <laughs> that film sounds good, and we've got all oh, look at him up in Hollywood, <laughs> and we've got. Like, oh, monkey me, monkey you. We got Gibbon on the horn. <laughs> Jesse Nealon, this is a great track. Let's play Rockbusters. All right. Um, first one was um, the Australian picks two blokes. Uh, the initial was E. The answer there, Eminem. <laughs> M and M. <laughs> All right. The second one, um, that builder is a bit cute. The initials there were B T. That was Bonnie Tyler. And, <laughs> and then we introduced a new bit to the show. Um, that song sounds all right. These were the effects you heard. <laughs> and uh, that was Prodigy. Smack my bitch up. Who are you punching there? And could I just say, no animal was harmed in the taping of that effect. There you go. No. Right, so have you got a winner? Yes, uh, Rob Preston from Croydon, he has got all three correct, and he wins a that selection bag of, of shite. <laughs> exactly. So, um, yeah, so good luck, enjoy that, uh, Rob. Yeah, if you can. Yeah. Sell it. Record and tape exchange within <laughs> 40 minutes of receiving it, I imagine the one good album that he likes. <laughs> Bob's in on the tracks for all this bag of shite, please. <laughs> right, give me some monkey magic, Carl. Hang on, you better do the jingle, aren't you? Oh. Oh, chimpanzee that! Oh, Brilliant. you'll like this one. Um, what I've found is, uh, found out like a lot of monkeys' names, like that's how I found out about Oliver. Yeah. What do you mean no. you found out a lot of monkeys' names? Well, there's uh, a lot of monkeys out there, and you think they're just called monkey and what have you, but they're all given names, right? 
So this, this one that I found about, bit of a weird name anyway, it's actually called Crap, it's name, right? And- So it, they're, they're, they're not born with those names, it's not like their parents give them those names, you know, they're just- Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Well, this one, right? And um- It's called Crap? Yeah, I know. Right, but do you know what it's famous for? What crap? Yeah. No um, one. Is it involved with this show? <laughs> it's, um, the first monkey to have its name tattooed on its head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, again, I will say not by choice. There is no way that a chimp would go down to Camden Lock and go, uh, are you a registered tattooist? I am, yes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's the cleanest, yeah. Go, okay, um... Can I have a look through your book? Can I have a look through your book? Um, I'm not sure if quite gothic, but, um, uh, I'd, I'd like, you know... What's your name? Crap. Oh, I'm not sure I can do that because you're not drunk, are you? I have another drink. I have another drink. I've had some, I've had some, uh, umbongo and that's all. <laughs> uh, but no. What are you talking about? The first monkey to have its name tattooed on its head. <laughs> What are you talking about, There's Carl? gotta be more information. Don't tell me you're leaving it there. There's gotta be more information. That was it, and then I read it thinking, well that's weird because that means there's loads of monkeys with tattoos on their head, if that's the first one. No, it could be still the only one. The first and only. Yeah, but would they report that? Well, I, you know, what do you mean, would they report it? This isn't the Washington Post you're reading. <laughs> this is mentalists who do websites about themselves every day. Oh, I, yeah, I, 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 uh, uh, what? There's got to be a third Why is that, that news? Story. Why is that news? What, how did you come across that? Well, do you, you First nut monkey with tattoo head, W. I mean, what are you talking about? But why did it have its name tattooed on its head? I don't know. It didn't, it didn't say, it didn't say that. I, I mean, uh, yeah, I know, it's mad. But, <laughs> but it didn't say why. Was that enough for you, though? Did you feel satisfied having read that? Did you not have a- I mean, that, there's no way that that is in the Guinness Book of Records. There's no way uh, that that is, uh, excited in the Guinness Book of Records. I just read it as like, what a weird name for a monkey. And then, <laughs> ooh, you won't have that on your head. What and, would be a good name for a monkey? I don't know, uh, anything but that, really. Yeah. Uh. Dave. Ted. <laughs> but, what do you think of that then? Well, I don't know what to think about it, because I don't know what, I don't know what you're telling me. I don't know, I don't know that it's news, I don't know that it's true, I, I, I mean I don't know where to start with that. Is that all you found? You found a, something about a no, I'll tell you right, when I was searching for stuff on monkeys, right? Yeah. I was searching around like I always do, looking, finding information, right? Yeah. And um, found out, are you aware of the Iceman? The Iceman? Yeah. Go on. Right, and to me the monkey thing was more- What's the Iceman? Oh, uh, the man that was found in the ice. So you're aware the of Neanderthal man. Right, yeah. It's Ricky, do you know Not about the monkey, the Iceman? No, no, I know, but I just was looking at, like, info. Right. The 5,000 year old fella who was preserved in a, in a glacier. That one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Do you find that more fascinating than the monkey? Well, I, I know that it's true. Yeah, it's true, but do you find it more fascinating? Well, simply <laughs> because it's true I find it more fascinating. I can't act. On summer, if someone, uh, anything that's true is more fascinating. But, you see, what I get from the monkey thing, yeah. you go, oh, I wonder, wonder if it was happy about that, and... <laughs> but you accept it straight away, you accept that that is true and interesting, and I don't know what that is. I mean, to me it sounds like a bit of cruelty towards animals. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, uh, 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 I mean, if that's true, it's disgusting to tattoo uh, a monkey's head. It's disgusting. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's no way, that's what I'm saying, it doesn't do a- if a monkey, if they, if they reported that a monkey, um, went in and got a tattoo, <laughs> and chose it itself, and then was like, riding a Harley Davidson down Camden, <laughs> I'd go, that is incredible, but I'd really want to see it on the news, and it mustn't be anywhere near the 1st of April. You know what I mean? I think you've just blown next week's. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, a bit of a dilemma that, um, my auntie Nora had, she likes charity shops as well, mm. uh, she's got a neighbour, went out to Graceland's, big Elvis fan, came back, she said, how was, how was Graceland's, she said, oh, it was brilliant, we've got a gift for you, right, they get out this clock, like a, like a little sort of, it's like a Swiss, you know the Swiss sort of, um, looks cuckoo like a little clock. house, like yeah. a cuckoo clock. Mm. But on the hour, 
little Elvis comes out the top and goes, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> So she went, oh, cheers. She's not really into Elvis, she's more into Jim Reeves and yeah. Uh, yeah. Glenn Campbell and stuff. Yeah. But what can you say? She said, oh, thanks, mm. thanks mm. for that. She took it in the house. Maybe they could uh, get attachments. Maybe you get a little uh, Jim Reeves to pop on the spring, <laughs> and, it, 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 and it, that pops out, or whatever. You so know. anyway, it's in the house. She's thinking, I'm not going to put that up. It's not her sort of thing. So, uh, thinks, give it to charity. Of course. She goes down to the charity shop, gives them that, thinks nothing of it, goes off to the pub for an afternoon drink. Mm. Mm. Anyway, next day she's going out for an afternoon drink again, passes the charity shop, it's in the wind. Oof. Ooh. And the chances are her friends are going to pass by. That was a dilemma. Of course. She had to buy it back. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. At a hugely inflated price. Comet Relief here is a uh, sort of, um, it, it happens every other year, and you know, people often do things um, in their workplace or at school, they can dress up, they can raise money in different fun ways. And we were told in a school assembly, it was Comet Relief next Friday, right. everyone has to come along dressed up in fancy dress to school on that day. Has to? Yeah, they said they have to, have to dress up. Right? That's annoying, isn't it? So, I, of course, I'm looking forward to this, because, you know, I'm a sort of aspiring comedian and that. Get to dress up like a clown, right? Spent wow. quite a lot of time getting the old clown outfit together. What did that look like? The what shoes, obviously, like? I just wore my regular <laughs> shoes. <laughs> exactly, yeah. But I had the red nose, a wig. Wow. You know, the whole deal, bow, big bow tie that my mum made for me, like, you know. I thought this would be the best day ever, right? Get to school, I want you to picture this scene, right, during the assembly in my class of 30. School uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform. Lanky kid dressed as a clown. School uniform, school uniform, school uniform, school uniform. So obviously no one showed up. Dressed what, like an utter dick, except what, me and about two other dogs. What disappoints me is that for a man who was, um, a self-confessed, uh, uh, aspiring comedian, you chose the least funny thing in the world to dress as. Yeah. It, clowns are anti-comedy. They suck comedy out of the room. It's not. You're right, and this is from a man who wanted to dress as Hitler at the Golden Globes. <laughs> no, that's funny. He knows funny costumes when he thinks. <laughs> but you were saying about the guys who bother you in the street. Did I tell you that when I pretended to be foreign to try and get out of that? Did I tell you that story? Amazing. I've periodically used this method throughout my life, and not so long ago, a guy stopped me with one of those charity tunics, and I sprang into my old trick. I was like, sorry, I don't, um, uh, a, um, a, 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 an elderly Russian woman. <laughs> I don't know what voice that is, I yeah, don't know what accent It, it went from vaguely French yeah. to sort of Eastern European beggar. Yeah, I, I don't know what it was, and the guy, and I was like, I don't, uh, he was, well, let's just let me explain to you about it. I, sorry, I'm not from, um, and the guy, This world. Yeah. I am from <laughs> Planet Snark. <laughs> and the guy said, uh, are you Stephen Merchant? No. Swear Sorry. Not when you were famous. Oh, yeah. No, you didn't. Yeah, because I hadn't, it hadn't occurred to me. I just, it was like a lapse no. of concentration. God. It was almighty. a lapse of concentration because, um. And did your bow tie spin now? Did you square them all and ran away? That's what I did. Time. <laughs> <laughs> because, I, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you don't always remember that you've been on the team. It's not like I That's instantly remembered that. Amazing. So, but look, so he says, are you Steve Merchant? And I, and then you're at this position where you've got to go, either you've got to admit what you did, or you've got to carry on the lie. <laughs> and I chose the second one. <laughs> so I was kind of like, I don't, I don't know who that is. What? I don't know what you're... And he was like, oh, God. really? You look a lot like him. I was going, I've never heard, I don't. <laughs> In fact, you asked Stephen Merchant, freeze. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always getting stopped for... for I mean, there's so many charities now. It's not just starving people anymore, it's everything. Yeah. One little fault, they're out there with a clipboard. Yeah, a lot, of new, bank details. a lot of new diseases have cropped up. But that shouldn't be allowed. I think they should have, like, one year where they go, this year, uh, you know, hungry people. Right. Next year, people with a limp. Or... <laughs> Just like they do in, with the China thing, with the year of the cat, year of the rabbit, it's very clear. Yeah. It's that year. That's who we're helping this year. Right. If you've got that problem, it's your year, you're gonna have a good one. And who decides? Right. Uh, just have some meeting. Just have a meeting uh, with uh, the, what would be the, the charity. First year? So what would be the first year? This year? Right, well, we'd, we'd look at it and we'd go, right, what, what are we hearing a lot of problems about? And someone goes, so-and-so's hungry. <laughs> go, right, are we all in? Are we in to give this lot food? And we're not just gonna give so them food. So it's not everyone who's hungry, it's specific. 
people. So it's like hungry, starving people who are starving. If someone goes, oh, my kid's deaf. Well, maybe next year. Maybe next year. It's not your turn this time. We can't help everyone at once because right. that's life, isn't it? You've got to give and take in your own life. These things right. that I want, I can't have. I do without. Have something else. But that's there's more so important. many causes that. Right. But it that's could what I'm wait saying, 20 Steve. Years before okay. your charity I know, comes but in. what can you do then? Because we're not sorting it all out anyway. I'm paraplegic. Right. Oh, I need out really bad. So does everyone else. Well, why are you giving it to the hungry now? Because if that? we don't oh. help the hungry now, right? They they can't wait. You can wait. Right. Oh, oh God, I'm blind. Is this a different person? Though? Yeah, I'm blind. Right. Well, you're not hungry though, are you? Well, a bit peckish. Yeah. Well, where's the fridge? I can't find the fridge. Can you help me to the fridge? Yeah. Otherwise, I'll be hungry as well. I'm blind and hungry. I'm blind and hungry because I don't know where the fridge is. Who's like you in? <laughs> <laughs> but Carl, this this is just it's just a chaotic order. idea. It's, it's a chaotic not. because people who are hungry, there's there's always going to be people who are hungry. Yeah, but I sort the problem out. How do you sort it out? Because I'll go right. Not only are we just giving you food, right? We're giving you some seeds. We're giving you a pan. What we're you think you... they haven't Let thought of that? Let me hear the theory, please. Right. Sort it out. Don't just give food. That's going to run out. Right. Give them a proper. You see, the problem is these companies who jump on the back of all. Do you know when I was in the okay. jungle? When right, I was yeah. in the jungle, yeah. right, on that travel thing. Yeah. I was in that tribe, right. Now, some company had given that tribe a laptop. Mm. Because it makes them look good. They can send out a press release. Mm. Well done to so and so computers. Right. They supplied the tribe in, you know, out of Amazon with a computer. I saw it. They were using it as a breadboard <laughs> <laughs> because they don't know what it is. They've got no electric. It's useless to them. Right. And that's what charity does. Right. Companies use it to make them look good. When I was there and I really needed to go to the toilet, I was thinking, ah, oh, tribe. I wonder what their toilet facilities are like. Right. Thinking they might. It might be better than just doing it in a hole. Surely they've built a toilet. They're not stupid people. They kill animals. They know what they're doing. They know how to cook. Surely they've built some sort of unit. Turns out they don't. They still do it in a hole. <laughs> but some company had been there, some plumbing firm, and given them a toilet. Mm. Right? The bloke who, you know, the producer who was out there, he said, "Oh, you'll be happy. There's a toilet round the back there." I'm thinking, "Oh, brilliant." I go round there. It is a toilet, but it's not plumbed in. Sure. So it's just a vase with shit in it. <laughs> It doesn't work, and this is what we need to do. We need to get out there and say, this is how it works. Educate right. them. Okay, so let's do this then. Um, so I'm a starving African. Hello, Carl. C have you got any food? Got any, got any food? Got any sandwiches? Well, I'm I starving. have, but right. if I give you my sandwich, right. there's someone else behind you, right, and they'll okay. all come out. So what are you going to do then? What are you going to do? I'm going to help you. How? What are you going to do? I'm going to I'm going to make you think about how to make food. Oh, okay, right. Uh, have you ever then? grown anything before? No, no. Right, well, no. here's some seeds for oh, potatoes. Brilliant. Oh, thanks, Carl. See you later. Do I just put them in the ground, yeah? Put them in the ground and oh. water them. Oh, there's no water, you dopey cunt. There is some No, water. there's no water, you dopey cunt. That's why we're starving, you dopey cunt. Right, well, at that, that point, that's where I go, well, this is a lost cause, eh? Right. there's no point. Can I have your so sandwich then, after all? No, or you're what? not having it. You're right. not having it now. So, not only can I have a sandwich, you give me seeds with no water, you useless, bald headed fucking twonk. Right, but. All I've done there is made the mistake of the computer firm who's given a laptop to a tribe. Right. It's useless. Right. But there's got to be another way around this. Go on then. Either move. Right. Because every year they're going to be queuing up saying, I'm going to give me a sandwich. <laughs> no, you're not having another sandwich. Once again, it's an <coughs> utterly ill informed discussion. <coughs> I'm just saying there's no <gasps> point. Queuing up oh. every year. Oh. Do you want a sandwich? Here's oh. a sandwich. Oh. The next year, can oh. I have a sandwich? Where's your brother? He died. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's not oh, sorting anything. It's buying him an extra day, an extra month, or something. But it's Carl, pointless. The point is, like Ricky's just flagged up, is that some of these countries, <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> the died. conditions. He died. The conditions are not there to just be able to plant potato seeds. So what are they meant to do then? Do you think we should go out every every month, every year with sandwiches? Is that your answer, like some sort of buffet, an all-you-can-eat thing once a year? <laughs> oh, oh God! Oh 
You see, it is bad. I, you know, I don't oh. want to come across harsh. We, mm. th they've got nothing. We oh. waste stuff here. Waste annoys me just as much. Right. When I see sandwich shops chucking stuff out yeah. and bin bags binning it, yeah. when there's people out there who are hungry, it's mm. ridiculous. Yeah. But I don't, I don't understand. Right. It's a problem that isn't being so solved. Your, so your conclusion for these people, because there's no water where they are, right, is move. That that is your honest. They should well, move. Well, well, what's your solution? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know the ins and outs. I don't, I don't even uh, pretend to know. Um, but, but I tell you, it's not just, just it's sticking a. What's that saying? I don't know. It's sort of sticking a plaster over a hole or something, and the yeah. plaster comes off. It's a problem again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's just, that's it's, the saying. Yeah, it's the same. I think that was Mark Twain. <laughs> <laughs> Chilly weather. Why not put on a cardigan? <laughs> That was the cardigans. <laughs> and for what it's worth, a lovely tune there. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a joy. We should definitely talk like that more. <laughs> XFM 104.9, Billy Jamai, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkerton, all right? All right. Yeah? All right. Well, we've got a, a jam-packed show today. Go we've got, we got, oh, we've got so many fe- we've got more features than Carl's got on his face. <laughs> which, is, which is about the same as Morph. Yeah. Very few. It's just, it's just really a head, isn't it? A little... That's where I've seen him before. More. On Take Heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, we've got, uh, Rockbusters. That's, that's Have we? still no, going we strong. Have we? No, we know feelings on that. No, but, but he's, he's, he's said he's gonna, um, buck his ideas up. We've got, oh, chimpanzee that. Carl finds a, uh, an amusing, uh, monkey or ape related story. Um, we've got, uh, Khan in a film again. Right, excellent. Yeah, we've had a lot of great response from that, Carl, uh, on the internet. It was my favourite thing we done. People raving about that. Um, so and, what's, uh, uh, can we say what the film is? And week? excuse my French, we've got some bloody great music. <laughs> oh, pardonnez moi well, I don't know, I can't speak French. <laughs> well, it? I'll just give you a, a taste. We've got Oasis, Cardigans, you just heard there. We've got Lloyd Carl, we've got a bit of Pretenders coming up, Eminem, Feeder, Coldplay, all the greats. Can I play some Teenage Fan Club later? Yeah, 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 yeah. What should we have now? Oasis. Go on, then. Yeah. Brilliant. Oasis and Songbird. It's a nice little ditty. It's all right, yeah. It's of a Saturday. Yes, thank you. XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I, I think we should go straight into it, Carl. I think you sh we should, uh, do the competition. The, the, uh, there's Carl in the corner. It seems Whatever. a little premature, do you reckon? Yeah, I think do you so. Yeah, it's yeah, so it's good, we should, exactly. we should tease it out of well, them. Well, it's, it's a big, it's a big thing. It's just that I've got absolutely nothing to say. I've, Sure. So I haven't really... Well, I mean, like, like, often I know you all have spoken to Carl in the week. This week, for some reason, I've been speaking to him. Oh, right. I spoke briefly to him about Michael Jackson and the documentary. Yeah. Now, of course, that, I thought that was extraordinary. Amazing. And, uh, Amazing I asked Carl's piece opinion. of work. Yeah. And he didn't mention to me, uh, the fact that Michael Jackson likes to climb up in trees. No. He didn't mention anything about his bizarre relationship with children. He didn't mention anything about his obsessive billionaire spending sprees. Right. He didn't spe mention anything about the, uh, mannequins he has in his thing or the fact that he drives around his, his sort of seven hotel suites in Las Vegas in a little kind of old people's scooter. The first, the only thing that, of note for Carl was he said to me, did you notice how big his hands are? I'll tell you what though, I did. What? How are you looking? The man's got like a face that he's had reconstructed. Well, I can't see him say that, it's libelous. Yeah, no, but, no, um, he, hasn't, he hasn't. He's got he's an had, old he's had two, he's had two nice jobs. Yeah. And you're looking at his hands. But I think it's because you look at him and he looks a bit like, it's, it, there's a bit of androgyny there, but it's sort of like a, it is quite a, um, petite, sort of old lady's face in a way, but then you see these labourers' hands come out. That's always the way with a tranny, isn't it? You know what I mean? Well, you can't accuse him of being a tranny. No, he's not. No, I'm, no he's not what a tranny. What are you saying? No, no, he's, he's not. got enough issues, now you're accusing him of being a tranny. I like him. I thought he came out that brilliant. I, I, I thought it was really, I really felt sorry for him. Um, and, uh, no, I think he cleared up a few things uh, as far as I'm concerned. I thought it was a fascinating piece of work, but, um, uh, I did like the shopping spree. That was great. Extraordinary. Cause just going around just taste. pointing. I know it's, it was bad taste, wasn't it? It was like one of those bizarre shops. Yeah. You know what I mean, there's uh, anything, sort of a gift shop, but they're trying to make it look like men. But if, it, yeah, I mean, and if it he, sprayed gold. If he'd been living in a trailer park, he'd have been ordering, you know, one of those uh, porcelain dolls dressed like a Harley Davidson I know, bike yeah. rider, or uh, you know, an Elvis commemorative plate. It was the kind of but, billionaire equivalent of that. But the hands were a giveaway. It's the same as those sort of What's transvestites. Well, what? It's like you get the, the, what was it about his hands? Well, you, know, you know, things? when you get like a cab driver or something, right? And he he decides to uh, turn transvestite about sixty, and he goes on Kilroy. 
Do you know what I mean? He's got a twin set of pearls and he goes, I've never felt so comfortable. But his hands are still big, he's got a little wig and he's got the lipstick on and he's with his teenage kids who are going, kill me. Do you think but he's been having surgery on his hands to make them larger? Bigger, yeah. Is that why he was wearing that glove? He must be it. Exactly. <laughs> cause he's, yeah, but, but yeah. I, I think he wants to be a goalkeeper. Right. And they said, well, you, you can't, Michael, you've got a big hands. It would help him climb the trees. It's, it's right, yeah, yeah. And he can play tennis now without a racket. <laughs> yeah. So, so what uh, did you make of it, Carl? Were you intrigued? Um, the Michael Jackson thing. Oh. It's, uh, you know, it was alright. But, um, like that got a load of attention in the press. But the Trisha program got nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which, uh, I know, like, that? well, Steve called me up in the week, right? Uh, like 10 o'clock in the morning, I was at work. <coughs> and he goes, uh, you well, think so at ten o'clock. So think you've been uh, preparing yeah. this show. Most people go to work about eight or nine. Are you watching Trisha and that? I said, no, what is it? He goes, oh, you'll be loving it, right? Um. Freaks. Was it, f um, uh, help me, my mum's a freak? Mm, Siamese twins. Right. right. So I couldn't watch it, but he said, oh, it might be on again, because they repeat stuff on ITV2. Right. So I, I had my dinner late. <laughs> Right, mm. instead of having it at like one o'clock like I normally do, yeah. I had it at like two thirty. Yeah. Sat in the office, put the telly on, ITV two. Um, these Siamese twins. Did it blow your mind? It was amazing. You know, we we talk about a lot of things on the show quite a lot. The airy kids crop up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was lighting. It's been ten minutes and you yeah. haven't mentioned the airy kid. Right. And uh last week we were talking about Siamese twins, weren't yeah. we? So it was it was weird that this programme was on, but it was amazing. I mean, what, what I think, think you can't refer to them as Siamese twins. I think they're known as conjoined twins. Why? I think I think Siamese is maybe considered derogatory or as an old antiquated phrase. Yeah, right. I think it's because the first famous ones were actually from Siam. Right, right. But and, anyway. and, and that doesn't exist anymore. No, but it's so conjoined, Carl. Yeah. Get the phrase right. But you'd think that if that's happened to you, that wouldn't be that sort of offensive. The names that you must get called. Right. You think that's the least Siamese twins, I'd say, well, that's, yeah. Now, Listen were you stunned by where they were connected? <laughs> Just live with it, we'd say. Right. Because they were connected, of course, at, at the forehead. Oh, God. Sort of, uh, which was quite, quite extraordinary. God. What if one had bad breath? I, th that wasn't a, a question that Trisha asked. <laughs> 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 Annoyingly, because I know that much of the audience was thinking that. There was, was a few things that didn't crop up. <laughs> what, what? what questions would you have asked of them? Because what things did you feel weren't mentioned? Um, I'd love to just watch Carl watching well, amazing exactly. things. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's like like t early learning. Uh, thing. Mouth slightly open. Yeah, mouth slight open. Slight like dribble, <gasps> looking round to see if anyone else has seen Ooh. it. You know, I hate that. Like when a cat sees a bird land on the balcony, <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> it, 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 it yeah. can't believe it's luck. I'd probably say, how do you buy a like a birthday present? <laughs> <laughs> a surprise gift, yeah. Because everything's ruined. Sure. Right? Um, I'd probably ask. Uh, yeah. Well, did you not think it was interesting that one of them had a boyfriend? Well, that was a bit weird, wasn't it? Uh-huh. But, um, what was the other thing that I was thinking when I was watching it? I was thinking if one got into crime and that was sent to prison... Right. ...what would happen? <laughs> How would you handle that? <laughs> it's brilliant. It is brilliant. If a chimp could talk. And, uh, what was the other one? The other thing was, um, what did he talk about? Because it's not as if you can say, oh... Well, guess what I did today? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so... Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, brass in pocket, and if, uh, they're pretending to be good, they're doing a bloody good job of it. <laughs> I love them. That's Ricky Gervais on XFM, 104.9 with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Carl is still buzzing about these conjoined twins. Hey, it's just... One of them, of course, had to be, because one of them was sort of shorter than the other, and had to be sort of wheeled around on a kind of trolley thing oh, by, this, by the other- by This the other is Molly and Dolly, is it? No, they're not called- one's called Reba, and oh. I forget what the other one's called, Sheena, maybe, or something like that. Do you uh, remember, Carl? No, I wasn't that impressed with the names. It's just- <laughs> Yeah. So you immediately put them out of your mind. <laughs> <laughs> Those are rubbish names. I'm just- uh, forget, 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 Carl, forget, well, they, forget well, them. They're gone. Were they British or American? American. Yeah, American. Oh, because I've, I've, I've seen some American ones well, on Well, bizarrely, one of them was a- apparently a country music star. This is Molly and Dolly. Well, they're not called the Molly and Dolly. The one that joined at the Oi. The one that joined but they're not- I think you've made up the Molly and no, Dolly. No, it was on Jerry Springer. There's a little one that sits on a seat and the other one carries it round- uh, her round. Uh, and uh, <laughs> They're not called Molly and Dolly. <laughs> there was something like that. They're called- it, well, we know that one of them's called Reba and I forget the other one. And one of them was a country and western singer or something. Yeah, and one of- but she was saying, yeah, I've just, uh, made a movie. It's coming out shortly in theatres. <laughs> Is and your the sister other one in it? Said, yeah, and the other one said, oh, I'm not involved. <laughs> I did, uh, 
It's utterly bizarre because they they live they, they work so hard to live their lives separately. Yeah, they say uh, it's you all know, yeah, exactly. of course. So, yeah, you know they don't they try not to. So so she's talking about her music career and the other one's sort of not taking any kind of credit for it, which is nice. It's, it's weird though because when she was singing as well, the other one just stands there. She doesn't join in. She doesn't sort of dance. Offer backing or, vocals. Do you know what I mean? Make a group out of it. <laughs> yeah, a duo. Yeah, well. But it seems like we're sort of being horrible, but we're no, not. We're not. I mean, well, no, we're not. No, we're thing, laughing but... at Carl's amazement at, at this. There you go, feeder, just the way I'm feeling, XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. We've got a great show lined up this week, haven't we? Go on, what have you got planned? Uh, well, I've got songs from David Bowie, Thin Lizzy, Gene, ACDC, you heard feeder there, you got, oh, oh, oh Smiths, mm. all mm. that. we mm. got a great feature, a new feature. Um, we spoke to Khan the week, and we worked out a new feature where um, people were gonna give him sort of like problems to solve. There could be scenarios, there could be management scenarios at work, you know, problem solving things like that, organising things. He's a very good organiser. So I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what happened. He's dropping Do We Need Him because he's getting fed up with scientists. He thinks there's a conspiracy and they're getting together and they're never gonna lose an animal. <laughs> right. So he's just fed up with that. Uh, Rockbusters, we've got some great prizes. Uh, well, have you seen them yet? Nah. Be careful. They're not gonna be great, I are just they? peeked in and all I'm gonna say to you is, Fools and Horses Christmas special? <laughs> not the little one with the little car. With the little car, yeah. Brilliant. That is excellent. Car, what have you got to say for yourself? Hold on, it was a rollover, wasn't it? Cause you really mucked up yeah. Rockbusters last time. What was he doing? It was saying FP for the whole thing. No, FD you were saying and it was Frida Payne. Have you written the clues down this week? Cause that seems like an obvious way I, to improve I, I, it. Yeah, I'll write the clues down. A week down. before he couldn't remember what the answer was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but. You know, you learn by your mistakes and that. Mm. You don't. <laughs> well. So, so yeah. Shall I give you a little taster? But we were mm. having a, a pizza in a, in a pizza establishment. Uh, when was it? Wednesday or Thursday? Yeah. And uh, he was going, I'm a good organiser, I'm a good problem solver. Give me any, any scenario, right? Obviously he didn't say scenario. Um, and I went, okay then, so uh, you're the manager of this place and there's a couple there, only couple, they're about 60. They had a lovely meal. He went, yeah, right. I went, but the the gentleman, he's got a little bit of a heart condition, he takes a pill after his meal, as he should, after meals. <gasps> he's only taken Viagra. Oh. And now he's stuck in. Wedged in? Wedged in. It's gone. There. It's gone and it's stopping him getting out from the table. Yeah. So what would you do? He went, what? He's stuck in because of his dick. I went, yeah. He went, right. He said, I'd use the situation, I'd make cash. I said, you're not going anywhere, do you want a pudding? <laughs> <laughs> Entrepreneurial, <laughs> yeah. I like it, Carl. Anyway, oh. so that's that sorted, I've got the job on that. Next, I went, okay. Another, oh, you won't believe it, next day, there's a little problem in the toilets, two, two gay men were having sex and they got stuck in, in each, each other. other. Yeah, yeah. He went, right, I'd say, is it the same fella ye as yesterday with Viagra? If so, why was he let in again? He was on the door. <laughs> yeah. I went, it's not, it's too yeah. He goes, right. Does his wife know he's cheating on <laughs> Yeah. He went, right, I'd go down, I w I'd go, and then he went, Oh, I'd say this isn't a restaurant problem, call an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> Strictly speaking, not a restaurant problem, no. <laughs> but all right. Huh? Am I right? Well, I don't know. Would you give me the job if, if say, like you were the boss of that restaurant and you? Uh, do you know what I like about this? At no point did he say, Jamais, why are you being so mental? Yeah, yeah. Why would someone get stuck because they took Viagra by mistake and two people would get stuck in each but other? But you heard the stories from his past. <laughs> that is a perfectly legitimate situation <laughs> yeah, to find yourself yeah. in. If you grew yeah. up in his past. What would you do if there was two fellas with big heads and webbed feet and they had a horse in a? Well, what I do is, what would you do? What did you do when you when you first saw him? What, saw the, uh, the kids lads with the big heads and Yeah, that? yeah. Um, I We should very quickly remind people if they didn't listen to that particular show. Um, they were, they had webbed hands. Yeah. Did they, or webbed feet? Well, they had, they had webbed hands. Right. And big and heads. And enormous heads. But it wasn't related. But they weren't related I know, to they were no, completely no, 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 separate no, but people. I'm saying that the webbed hands isn't due to the fact they've got a big head. No, sure. It's two different things, we're just unlucky. Yeah. No, hold on, if they weren't related th and they both had webbed hands and big heads, I'm saying there was a condition that, had, that no. was related that had those two can... I don't think it was. So what do you think the chances of that are? They're not related and he goes, oh you've got a big head and webbed hands as well. Yeah, just a coincidence, isn't it? Yeah. I, d I honestly don't think it was related. Right. Because I've I've seen I've I've since seen the the same problem again on another kid with a big head. His hands look good. Right. So the, do you think the big head is just a separate issue? Yeah, it's a totally different illness. It's right. like having an headache and a cold at the same time. Right. It's, you're you know. not always connected. But the weird thing is, right, and looking looking around in the week at weird stuff on the uh, on the internet, mm. there's this woman who's got a big head. Oh yeah. And um, she was fed up with it because. When she was walking down the street, it was so big, she couldn't hold it up. 
<laughs> right. Right. She couldn't hold it up. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> okay, keep, shut up. So, she when, she, hold up. when she was walking, <laughs> she, her eyes were hurting because she had to sort of look up all the time because her head was that heavy. Her chin was sort of balanced on her chest. Right. right? And she'd have to peek up, yeah. So, uh, she goes to the doctors and this was after years and years and, uh, <laughs> said, you know, I thought I could put up with it but I can't. It's it's How big eyes. was her head? It's I, big, it, I don't know if it was like big because there wasn't a picture. I don't know if it was just big or a lot of bone. So it was heavy. <laughs> heavy. Right, like the elephant man, just so, outcrops. Yeah, right, so, yeah. uh, so the doctor said, yeah, um, we can sort that out. Mm -hmm. Um, but we'll have to take your head off. Right. Okay, okay so listen, listen keep to going. This. Listen, okay, keep going. Because no. I, again, I, what you don't seem to understand is I, I have the same reaction to you when I see it. Yeah, well, right? you're quizzical yourself. So, it's lots just... of it, they took her head off, um, chipped away a bit of the bone, mm -hmm. made her head lighter, put it back on. <laughs> Right, play the Smiths. He took a woman's head off. Yeah, this is ours. Play the Smiths. And if you'd like to ask Carl something, details coming up soon. Ask by the Smiths on XFM 104.9. So, uh, what's the email, Carl? If people want to ask you something, a problem, they've got a problem to solve. It can be anything. It could be a personal problem, it could be a scenario. It could be about, uh, it could be about war. It can be anything. But it or it could be more flippant, I suppose, and like yeah. that. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, but I prefer stuff that I could see. You can get your teeth into. And, and, and actually, you know, sort out. What, war, like war? War is too, it's a bit, bit big for me, that one. Do you think? I don't want to get into that. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? If Tony Blair came to you and he went, Carl, listen, I'm having a bit of trouble here. I, I don't know what to do. I've tried everything. I've tried spin. I've tried being tough. I've tried backing down. I've tried getting other countries involved. They don't want to know. What do I do? What do I do? Uh, you don't know. Tricky one. I don't it is get, tricky. I don't it is a tricky one. Yes. I don't worry about it. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Just get in the bath. Put a mattress on the on top of you. That's it. Sorry. What, why are you doing that? Ooh, slow down. Why are you doing that? That's what they say you do, isn't it? If it kicks off. If what uh, kicks off? If, if, there's, if there's a war and that, you, you get in the bath, put a mattress on top. Right. Did they do that in the Second World War for six years? Was that make, making bunk beds? That's what I read somewhere. Yeah. Get, is the bath full of water? Uh, no. no. No, no, no. No. Might be daft. Okay. <laughs> I, think I think they're an enamel bath then, though. I think they'd stop a bit of shrapnel. I think the plastic ones you get nowadays would probably melt on you. And the mattress where your dad has cut it in half, all the foam would come out and the springs would get you in the eye. Oh, talking about me dad. Steve, you'll love this, right? Go on. Um, my dad hates, uh, he hates being ripped off, right? Yes. Well, no, I can relate to that, that's important. Um, hates coming to London now, he always wants me to go and see them rather than come here because he just thinks London is like a big rip-off. Mm. Uh, last time he came he got annoyed because I bought him a scone and a cup of tea for like three of us and it was fourteen pounds and he just yeah. was livid. <laughs> and then, uh, we had an argument about that. And then we went to the Millennium Wheel and I said, do you fancy going on this? He said, oh, all right. And then he saw the price and it was something like 20 quid or something. And he said, 20 quid to go up in the air to look at stuff that's on the ground. He said, I might as well stay on the ground. Brilliant. Right? Thought, good point. His logic is impeccable. So anyway, this is going on. Anyway, he spoke to me the other day. I said, how are things? Are they all right? And that. He said, oh, being ripped off. I said, why? He said, he ordered, do you know the place where he got a new bed from because he cut the other one of course, in half, yeah. right? He, uh, he got this bed out of a catalogue. So, uh, so he sorted out a payment on the phone. He said, look, you're ripping me off a bit here on the interest thing, but, um, well, let's do a deal. We'll sort out a new monthly payment. That's different to the, what it says in the catalogue. And he said, yeah, we'll go along with that. Anyway, so he sorted that out. He was happy. The bed arrived. It's a nice bed. He said, that's great. So anyway, uh, he got the bill for it and it was the original price. Oh, I thought it might be the case, yeah. Right. So he called up and said, I'm not happy with this. He said, we, we said a deal and like, oh, no, I don't know what you're talking about. He said, right, don't send me your catalogues anymore. He said, I'm not, I'm not buying anything from you, you're a rip-off merchant. Uh -huh. Right. Um, so anyway, a few, few weeks go by, post comes, only another catalogue oh, in the post. he's livid. Right, so he was well annoyed. Yeah. So he looked on the back and it said on it, this catalogue will always be property of, you know, the company that, that does it. Um, if, w so you can't throw it away. If if we request to have it back, we've got the permission to, to get it back off you, right. right? So he thought, right, well, they're out of order. I told them not to send me one, and they have done, and they're saying I can't chuck it away. So he called them up, 
and said, uh, all right, Mr. Pilkington here, bought a bed off you, you conned me, and that. <laughs> but, you know, forget that. We've, yeah. we've dealt with that. You've sent me a catalogue, I told you not to. It says on the back here that this will always be yours, yeah? So, in a way, you're using my house as a warehouse. I'll be charging you 26 pence or something uh, a day. Brilliant. He said, you already owe me £6.28. <laughs> something like that. Genius. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> sorted it out. So, again, you know, it's- it So, hang on, but are they going along with this? I don't know what happened. He said they sounded annoyed and said they'd get back to him and they haven't, but he said, I'm not bothered. They can take as long as they want because the money just keeps going up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, what sort of profit has he made so far? Well, when I spoke to him in the week, it was like £6 odd. Yeah. That was, I think that was on Tuesday, so, so he's, 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 you know, he's just leaving. He's it's like an investment. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like an investment. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an antique. He's it's just, it. yeah, yeah. It's just going up every day, so, uh. Well, keep us posted on that. That's yeah, dynamite. I'd, I'd, one day we need to speak to your father. Yeah, I think so. So many questions I need think to be asked of him. But I might sit and give you a letter to take home. <laughs> yeah. Dear Mr. Pilkington. <laughs> your son, Carl. <laughs> New it's single from, uh, Nick Cave. I think I'm looking forward to it. Well, it's funny you should say that, right, because I went to a market at one point just to look at the uh, things that were for sale there. There's lots of eels and lots of fish and lots of other interesting items, right? So I'm looking at the market, I'm taking some photos, and I notice this, I hear this kind of murmur, right, that's going around the market, and then I start to see them, all the people in the market, sort of pointing, right, and staring and talking at something, right? So I'm looking around, trying to figure out what it is, right? And I realise they're looking and pointing at me. I genuinely swear to God, right? So they start, and then... Did they think one of the big eels had escaped? Well, they started laughing. Oh no. They started openly pointing and laughing. <laughs> One of them, right, started, like, I think he was a postman. He, he looked like he might be a Vietnamese postman. I don't know why that should make any difference, but he started doing a sort of lumbering, sort of Frankenstein walk. <laughs> And pointing at me, right? A load of, a whole section of them just started cackling with laughter. And then at one point, a woman in one of those sort of Vietnamese lampshade hats, right? She runs up behind me and she attaches to my back a sort of kick me thing that you would have detached to someone, some nerd at school's back, right? She actually puts something like that on my back. I don't realise initially. So they're just chortling. They are weeping by now. And I'm talking like the whole market is in hysterics. And old ladies are coming up to me and just, you know, comparing their heights and then giggling. And then I'm sort of trying to get this thing off my back so I look like a dog, you know, chasing his tail. <laughs> and, uh, and I, pe people, I just realised that this entire marketplace was just openly laughing at me. And what angered me, Rick, was that I've spent a lot of time in this country, in the UK, right, building up a career, right, so that people don't laugh at me, right? They respect right. me, they see me as yeah. a man of great accomplishments and achievements. Yeah. I go to another country where With I- With that hat. <laughs> exactly. Walking around with those glasses with a little, with a little um, money belt on, maybe yeah. sandals. Sandals with socks because I got a foot infection. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out that they're just laughing at me. They're just <laughs> openly mocking and laughing at me, right? So I just genuinely, I got upset and I got in a, in a... You uh, threw down a, your cagoule, left your clogs behind and got on the first plane back. I hopped in a rickshaw straight back to the hotel where they do not laugh at me openly. <laughs> Um, but anyway, to, just to return to the dong issue, right, this is what worried me, was that, uh, obviously you got a tip, so we had a driver for a few days, right, and you got to leave him a tip, and you, I never would feel a bit awkward, when do you give him the tip and everything, how does it work, and so I, I didn't know how much it should be, and I was thinking, well, you know, it's a poor country, I've had a driver for a couple of days, you know, I haven't paid for the driver, so I give him like, twenty dollars, right, which is like ten quid, you know, I think that seems like a good tip. I get in there, I read in the guidebook, I should have only given him two dollars. So? Again, 20. That's well, now right. I'm, but no, because A, you don't want to upset the precious equilibrium. You don't want to upset the financial equilibrium because he might have gone berserk. Yeah. I mean, 20, that's 20 dollars is a lot to him. He might have left his family, you know, bought a different, you know, corrugated iron shack somewhere what if else. Well, he turned up with a hat like yours and said, <laughs> Exactly, we're mates now, aren't we? We're mates now, let's go <laughs> yeah. back to England. Let's pick up some, uh, some ladies. So, um, so I, uh, I, uh, was a bit worried, so I, I, was thinking of asking for the money, you know, for some change, but I didn't think that was appropriate. So, um, but then I was worried because then I was thinking, what if all the other drivers within his organisation find out that I've given him like twenty dollars? They're all going to be expecting a big tip. Yeah. So that was a big worry. Um, but more than that, we'd also had a guide with us, so he was bound to find out how yeah. that how that thing is. Right now, I didn't have any dollars left, oh. and I thought, well, I've given that guy twenty. I got to give the guy who's been talking English to us, showing us around, helping us out. I got to give him 50. even more. Right, I ended up giving him a million dong. And how much is that? Sixty-three dollars. I tipped someone a million dollars. So he's a millionaire now. Yeah, I, t I made someone a millionaire through my generosity. Well, so well, so did I. He's sitting over there. <laughs> That's absolutely but right. He doesn't want to give anything back. So I know how you feel, mate. We're young, old man, Carl. Now you know traditionally at the zoo they have to um, 
dart a dangerous animal, a lion or a, a gorilla or, or whatever. What? They have to dart it. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. To uh, to um, take blood samples and check its health and stuff. Uh, so it's very stressful for the animal and quite dangerous to give it a, 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 an anaesthetic like that. So what they've started doing now, there's a bug, right, like a um, a type of um, beetle, uh, and uh, it's a blood sucker. It's a little vampire bug. Okay, it's about three centimeters long. What they do is they tie a piece of string around it. They let it go into the the cage on the chimp. It sucks the chimp's blood without the chimp even knowing. They pull it back, and they take the blood sample from it. They've taught it to do that. Well, they're not taught it to do anything. That's its nature. You put it near a, a, a warm-blooded mammal, it will suck its blood. So they've just tied a string to it so they can get it back. And how often does it have to do that a day? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I, why are these the important questions? <laughs> just because. Just Isn't because that incredible that they've they've got they've got this amazing symbiotic relationship with a bug? Because that's Is it what the same it, one. Safety is eight chimps. Oh, jeez. Carl, listen to me. No, let him. I want to ask I'm just saying, questions. if there's eight chimps in there. Yeah. Uh, one beetle. Yeah. By about number five, that's going to be sick of eating. Well, then they probably have different beetles and they let it. And. Carl, I don't know why this is the. It the, just. I'll tell you why it annoys the me. Avenue because of it annoys him. The other concern is uh, that beetle, it might be enjoying, you know, getting the blood and what have you. What happens if, if one of them's got, got AIDS? What one of the one of the chimps? That's where it came from. So safety. Well, then they then they know and they say, oh, this chimp's got AIDS. Let's. And what about the beetle? What you're saying? You're worried that the beetle will contract AIDS? Well, I, I don't know if that's how it works. But all I'm saying is, you get a dirty chimp in there. <laughs> um, it's got it's got a touch of that, and 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 the and the the beetle gets it. And all I'm saying is, it seems a bit unfair. It's what are you worried about the beetle working hard? It's eating what it's like. Is, this is the same as getting in foreigners to make cheap trainers to me. They, you know, let the beetle do what it wants. I mean, be how long do they live? I read the other day about some elephant beetle. They get about four months. Right. What do you think of this, right? This well, elephant beetle in the paper the other day. Yeah. About the size of a gerbil. Right. Massive. Um, odd looking thing. Mm. The bigger, the uglier it is. Why well, are you looking at me? No. <laughs> In a way, that is the way it works, isn't it? I think I think size size is a big deal, isn't it? In a way, because this is interesting. Well, we better we better we better being smaller, aren't we? Well, it depends. What do you mean? Well, no. If you're afloat in the Atlantic Ocean and it's four degrees centigrade, it'd be better to be fat. Um, I didn't really mean like that. I just no. meant in terms of like Steve. I've mentioned he's taller than us. Yeah, he's always ill. Well, that's not even uh, this height. I just think bigger people. It's like that Zhang Lung or whatever, the world's tallest man. He's always sneezing and that. He's always got something up with him because he's not meant to be that big. Small fellas, you never see a midget in a doctor's waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> they, they never get, they never get ill, do they? You never see one getting run over because they're too small, so you don't hit them. So it's, it's. I think size. If you're too big, <laughs> you never see a midget in a doctor's waiting room. So, so the well, thing, maybe they're there. No, they're not. They're not. So what I'm saying to you is this beetle that's massive, size of a gerbil. Yeah, it's but it's still, but, but, but a gerbil's small. What do you mean? No, this is a big one. This beetle is massive. It lives four months. Lives four months, been found in a banana crate, right? Right. It's over here. They're upset for it because it's been in this banana crate for it could be like three months. Um, and the whole purpose of the elephant beetle is to have it away. That's all it wants in its life. It's only got four months. And it loves having it away with another beetle, <laughs> and it hasn't had it. So they they found it in this crate, and it looked distraught. They said it was showing all signs of like desperately wanting to have it away. It was well, when you can wank yourself to death with six legs, you, you leave anything alone for three months in a dark crate, just eating a load of bananas. Yeah, eating bananas and whacking away. Well, anyway, six uh, times at the same exactly the same moment. His feet, his feet go. Apparently, I bet it does. Um, what do you mean his feet go? That's a sign. When they got it out, they they were um, they they got the experts in. They said, "What what is this? We've got a beetle here, the size of a gerbil." They said, "We'll come round." They had a look. <laughs> <laughs> I say, "Well, how big's the gerbil?" That's just scientists HQ. Is there? Yeah, yeah. You can come round. <laughs> right, right. You'll need a gerbil-sized box to bring that round in. <laughs> come round. Uh, ring uh, operator. Uh, can I have uh, people in charge of giant gerbil beetles? Uh, I'll put you through. Uh, hello? 
Jay will beat all people. Um, I think I've got one. Come round. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, his feet were going. What, what do, do you mean, mean his feet, feet were going? going? Do you mean it was dancing like Lionel Blair or it had bunions? I haven't seen one, but... <laughs> There's a surprise. I, I just read that, the, that they were saying, yeah, yeah, we know what's the problem here. Look at its legs go. And, it, and they go up and down a lot, and it means that <laughs> it wants, it wants like a, a partner. It's dying for it. And they were saying they only live four months, and it looks about three and a half months old. This one. <laughs> How can they tell that? But the problem. The problem is they right. haven't got any of these beetles here. Right. So they've had to instead of uh, flying it back out. Yeah. They've gone over there to try and find one to bring it back, because of the stress and that that it's had, and it's older. Couldn't you put a gerbil in a beetle outfit? <laughs> Hang on a minute. I don't mean. I don't mean a little wig holding a guitar. Well, I don't know the full story in that. I just know that they found this beetle. It just sounds unlikely that people would be <laughs> con this concerned about I one beetle, <laughs> and it's only got half a month left. It's got yeah. two weeks left. It's got to have some sex. We have got to give this beetle some sex because, god damn it, it's a beetle. What was found on a boat with some yeah, bananas? I don't it deserves know why, sex before it dies. I don't know why he cares more than a blood sucking beetle than a chimpanzee. I just suddenly. can't believe people are flying why out to Japan or wherever they come from. Why do you care from? so much about beetles all of? A sudden. Only because they were mentioned, and I just thought, uh, you know, whilst we're on the Beatle tip, let's, you know, let's discuss them. Absolutely. Stone Rose on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilgrim for the last time. Indeed. I'm afraid. Yes. So, um, you know, we're gonna have a little bit of a chat. We're sewing up some things with Carl. Indeed. We're giving away that that prize, that BAFTA bag, and you know, playing some great music. And we're just—I mean, we're, I'm bringing in my favourite tunes. I'm bringing the Smiths, Radiohead, Cat Stevens, David Bowie, Neil Young, the classics. Steve's doing the same. Indeed. Um, well, Carl, the last time for, uh, yeah, I've, apparently, um, someone's got it a bit wrong. We're not actually away for six weeks. We're away for about. So, we'll be back in, uh, August, won't we? What the hell? Yeah. No, don't swear. Yeah, that's outrageous. On the last show, you have to say that. Already brought the tone down. Yeah. Cheapened it. And I think it's blasphemous as well. Yeah, no, it's not. No hell isn't, is it? Isn't it? No, I don't think that's not blasphemy, is it? Taking hell's name in vain? Yeah. Yeah, but what was it you were saying the other week about the Queen Mum used to have the right mouth on her? What? I don't think we said that on air, Carl. What? No, no but last week you, yeah. you were saying about ba bad language and I was saying, oh, it, you know, there'll come a time when bad language isn't, you know, doesn't matter anymore. You can F and Jeff and stuff. Oh, I know what he's talking about, Steve. Really? Right, let me explain to you, the listener at home. Um, Carl was worried about swearing and as a joke, off air, it was last week, we were saying that um, the qu uh, in the 1940s and 50s, the Queen Mum used to say things like, and we were quoting things she'd said, yeah. like, I'm saying, oh but putting F's and C's in there, and you believed us. What, so this whole week you've believed that we somehow, somehow had knowledge that, that the, the Queen, Queen Mum used to, to swear say, like a trooper? We were doing fake quotes from her in her voice, but putting in F's and C's, and you believed us. I mean, I didn't even think, I thought you were going along with a joke, but it obviously made a impact. Carl, oh, we've said this, you've got to question and query everything. You can't take things at face value, certainly not if they come out of the mouths of Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, sorry about that, Carl, it was a little, a little trick. Uh, is there any other things now that as is you look back over the time we've been thinking about that I can tell you now that was a lie? Anything you've maybe queried or questioned, you, you know, you thought, oh, that doesn't seem right, that maybe Ricky's told you? Something might come to me okay. later on, but... Okay. Well, what about Carl? I mean, it's, we we love you, right, obviously, we know that. We've, we've, got, we've got great affection for you. We look forward to this. I'm gonna miss you, really, but... And I'll tell you what, you've got a heart of gold. Now, wait till you see what the record is, Steve, you'll see what I've done. He's a heart of gold? Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. <laughs> All right? That's why he's a bronze award winner at the Sonys. I don't get up for bronze. I don't get out of bed for bronze. No, that's a waste of our time. Pilkerson over there on XFM 104.9, winner of a bronze award at the Sony, Sony Radio Awards. The Radio Oscars, so Phil Jupiter said. That's what he called them on Liquid I'll, News. I'll tell you this, Rick, I'm not used to being on a table with losers at an awards ceremony. No, I, I don't, I, this, I, I'm glad, I didn't want to come in to do the final show. No. You know, no. I went straight over and sat with Pete and Jeff, didn't I? Yeah. <laughs> I went over Radio the, uh, 4, I went over with Paul Gambagini. I went over to BBC World Service. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's a lot funkier. Yeah. Cooler. Won an award. Yeah, well, won they, an award. they swept the boards. Yeah. 
I don't. Bronze is nowhere. What was the mood? Uh, what was silver's, the mood here? Silver's. What was the mood here? The mood. Because uh, the day after. Because people. Were, I mean, I, let me tell you that I think XLM deserved an award, and I thought it was it was criminal actually. But what I did like about quite it, that we certainly had the room because Pete and Jeff said good luck to us and Christian. That was really nice. And then someone else mentioned it. Ja James Nesbitt. James Nesbitt yeah. said uh, the uh, XFM and stuff. So yeah, it Paul, certainly Paul had the. Paul said something about it. Yeah. Did so he? It, Paul certainly, yeah. it certainly had the room. And for a local, you've got to realise it's a local radio station. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's it, you, you can't compete really with Radio Two and Radio Four. And but what was the mood uh, the day after here um, at XFM? It was all right. I mean, I think we expected a few more, but, but you shouldn't take this thing seriously anyway. No, but what I didn't, yeah, but what I didn't never realize, take awards seriously. But what I didn't realize is you have to pay thousands of pounds just to nominate, just you're to joking. get, just to get into the running for an award. So you've already, you know, they've squandered thousands of pounds. No, just it's not thousands. It is. is it? Well, it, it mounts up because you pay for it to enter. And right. then the table. You've got to buy like mini discs and that to send your stuff in on. Which sure. Ends up with Sony mini discs. Mm. Oh, I see what you're saying, I'm not, Carl. I'm not saying anything. No. Um, and also then you've got to pay for the table. Right. And, and the food and the drink. I mean, it's a few grand. I swore on live television as well that night. Yeah. But I've never done that before. I mean, I've never, I've sworn before, but, but never accidentally. And we, we were being interviewed for, um, and Christian was sort of like quite, you know, being a bit boisterous and he must have brought out the worst of me and I actually just accidentally said the F word and I apologised straight away. I didn't want to embarrass Phil Jupus. <laughs> He was well, doing a good job. Like himself, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I was thinking about yesterday and you're saying a bronze isn't worth having, right? Yeah. But, say so like... <laughs> We're only joking. No, no, none of them are worth having, but they're very nice. No, very nice no, to no win, bronze is pointless. <laughs> But you say that, because, like, <laughs> br bronze is, like, coming last, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Can you tell me the name of the person who won the marathon this year? No. Yeah, but that's because we're not sporty. Well, I'm sure there's lots that can. But yeah. then, the guy who came last, who was in the swimsuit, <laughs> people it, remember him. And no, I don't last. remember his name either. No, what's his name? No, no, but he was six days late. I mean, he was really Yeah, but what's his name, then? Uh, you see, no one's remembering either. No, but if someone said who won the marathon, I'd go, I don't know, but there was that guy in the swimsuit. Well, I'd say, I don't know, it was a woman. Yeah. She had, she had shorts on and trainers. I'm just trying to make My point is, what they will remember <laughs> is that we were losers. That's what they remember. <laughs> they may not remember our names. Yeah. They're just point and shout losers. We're all winners, aren't we? We're all winners, really. For taking part, sure. Well, yeah. And it's all subjective as well, isn't it? Go on. I mean, I'm not going to moan about awards because you've won a lot of them. It's like saying they don't mean Jack. But yeah. at the end of the day, right, there's some shows that won awards and you go, yeah, that, that's, you know, that's worth an award. I, got, I, th I think you've got to treat it, I mean, some awards actually boost your profile or career or your cachet or everything like that. Some it's just a nice night out when it's nice to win, but I don't think you should really take any award that seriously. What worries me though, Rick, as I mentioned on the night, is that I, when I was at school, was, I mean, I, you look at me now, you probably think he's an athletic kind of guy, he's a sporty dude, you know, but at school, bizarrely, that was not the case. No, what were you, I a bit of a lanky bean <laughs> <with the laughs> It turns out. Yeah. joking. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. So, uh, but, and yet I got a silver, uh, in the high jump. Yeah. And I've done better in the high jump, right? Did no training whatsoever, did no yeah. practice, just turned up. You were two and a half foot taller than every other well, person in your th class. Yeah, but wait a minute, people think that if you're tall, that makes you easier, it makes it easier for you to do the high jump. Surely not, because I've got all that leg to get over the pole. That don't, makes it harder, harder for me, surely. Don't talk rubbish. What are you talking about? Well, of course the taller you are, the more chance you got on the high jump. Well, explain that to me. Really oh, what, uh, are you, okay then. So, is it harder for a six foot man to step over a matchbox or a baby midget? A baby midget? <laughs> that is <laughs> tiny, Rick. Hang on. <laughs> Here's something I've learned, remember? Go Going on. Back to like show four or whatever. Go on. What show is it? four? The flea can jump over the London Eye? No! No, it yeah. can jump the equivalent of if it was a six foot man. It can jump about six inches high. A flea cannot jump over the London Eye. Y yes, it can. Yeah, it can. And <laughs> T tell tell your kids that. Carl. Oh. But remember. Oh, a flea can jump over the London Eye. And an ant can lift <laughs> three Volvos. <laughs> but, you're, <laughs> but you're talking about fitness people and that. Remember when we were in the pub, right? Yeah. And um, your mate Johnny was in there. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. And he was talking about that guy who got done, right? Because he entered a wheelchair race. Yeah. And, he sh and there was nothing wrong with him. His legs were all right. Yeah. yeah. Now, he got done. Because he shouldn't have been involved in it. Yeah. But don't you think that really, he's really good for doing that? Because he's not normally in a wheelchair. Sure. So he's not used to how they move about. Yeah. His arms aren't as strong as the other fellas who are always in the yeah. wheelchair. Sure. He had his mate pushing him. That was Surely. the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was motorised. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'd give him a gold plus. Just, just. 
you know, you're taking a bloke who's not used to doing something, he does it the first time and beats the people who are at it. Well, about that woman, play. though, that was disqualified in the shooting, because she was in a wheelchair and she was just in the normal, uh, able-bodied Olympics, it was just a normal shoot, ended by it, but she wasn't allowed to rest her elbow on the arm of her chair. Because I was saying she's advantage. She was in a wheelchair and she's shooting, but she was getting unfair advantage. And I said, you you cannot put your elbow on the arm of your Sneaky, wheelchair. aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> no, they are. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. Do you want to play a t Some of them aren't even disabled, it turns out. <laughs> Hold on, though. We're talking about athletes, aren't we? What record should we play next? I'd love to hear uh, that, that single that was out a couple athlete. of months back by athlete. athlete. Let's have Athlete. athlete. Man alive. <laughs> West Side by Athlete, a track that I know you and I have enjoyed. Yeah, it's one of our favourite new tracks of the year, that one. Yeah, absolutely. Very good. More more of our favourite tracks to come on XFM 104.9. You know me, I'm Ricky Jabez, and you. Steve Merchant. And, uh, Carl Perkinson. Sure, go on. Uh, you know, as much as you the high jump. The yeah. high jump. Uh, do you know the reason I didn't get the gold? It's quite, it's faintly embarrassing because the guy was, it was just neck and neck, me and another guy. In fact, he was slightly shorter than I was. And I was using the traditional Fosby flop. Is it the Fosby flop? Fosby flop. Fosby flop. And, um, and he was using a method which I can only describe as the Superman where he was running at the bar <laughs> and diving head first over it. I've never seen this technique before. It's illegal. That's, that's incredible. Is it not yeah. allowed? The Fosby flop only works because his shoulder and, uh, are going over before his head. Right. That's that's they got around the wall. You weren't allowed to right. dive over because it was obviously no one monitoring that. Yeah. No Just one the game knows. teachers having a quick fag. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what was his name again? The the, the yeah. The fag. <laughs> uh, I think his name was Mr. Woodbine. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> but uh, he um. Anyway, so he's using this method, right, and, and it gets neck and neck, and uh, I don't know how many chances you get to knock down the bar, but anyway, it got to the point where basically I had to get over the bar or I was going to come second. Sure. And I decided at that point to use his method, because <laughs> he'd seem to be doing so well with it, I thought, well, I'll try that then, that looks oh, easy. Oh, dear. And ran at the bar, launched, didn't actually get my feet off the ground, just hit the bar like I was someone finishing a, a race, you know. Did the you line. have- It was so pathetic, it just got just everywhere. I just want to get this picture of, of you at the age of what, 15, 16? Yeah. Yeah. Six foot five already, probably? Yeah, probably, yeah, uh, yeah. Probably what, about nine stone? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Did you have your glasses on? <laughs> of course I did. Th you must have looked pretty and probably, sexy. Probably a small bum fluff tash. Yeah. That's the uh, forthcoming single from Nick Cave from his album Nocturama. That's called Bring It On. That's great. I, I must admit, I was a latecomer to Nick Cave. He's I was, extraordinary, uh, yeah. I, I mean, years into his solo stuff before, you know, I decided that he was brilliant. Mm, yeah, he's fantastic. Yeah, he's, he's fantastic. Um, I had some exciting news this week, Carl. You'll be pleased to find out. Um, I, I, I'm worried that you might get a little bit jealous because it's obviously going to impact on your world quite strongly. Because I know you think you like things to be quite, the, quite you know, samey. You like the status quo to be maintained. You like the fact that in the past, you know, we've had some crosswords. You know, because you, I remember. What did you think of me when I first walked in? When I first came in on the yeah, first well, day. Of I don't know why you're making a big deal. Do you want to bring? It? Do you want to I'm just being honest, honest though. I'm just well, being honest about a lot of people who see you for the first time sort of go, "Well, he's a bit weird." <laughs> Ooh, ooh, I love that Steve that you brought it up, and then you're again. But I'm sure that wasn't what he said before. No, did he, he said before. I, yeah, well, well he's I, a bit weird. Yeah, well, I, he looked at you, and uh, I knew I could see by the look in his face. You know when uh, when you know you your kid, and your kid's sort of scared of something, and they go, "Why is your kid?" Goes, "Oh, he doesn't like pigeons or spiders." Right. It was like that when I saw Carl, and I brought you in, and I went, "What do you think of that, Carl?" I could see the look in his face that he d he was disturbed. Sure. And then as he said. You get used to it, don't you? Yeah, you get used to it. And you, and you have changed a little bit. Your hair's a bit smarter now, and you've got some nicer glasses and that, I think. <laughs> or I might have just got used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Don't bring it up, Steve. Don't well, look at me like that. So you say that you think some other people in the office thought the same? Do you know that for sure? Carl. Did you discuss it? Carl. Yeah, I think I think they do, yeah. Okay, leave it there, then. But not just in the office. As you watch <laughs> through the building. <laughs> oh, it's, it's worse than you ever I'm thought! Well, no, it's not worse than I ever thought, because as you well know, Ricky DeVries, <laughs> yeah. uh, what did I do on, uh, Thursday morning? Oh, is this the thing, uh, for those, uh, that perhaps are, are not of the female persuasion listening, there's a magazine, apparently it sells quite well, it's one of the sort of female, you know, kind of, uh, issues magazines, I think it's called Company Magazine, you know, it's like your sort of, I guess it's a bit like your Moore or your Vanity Fair or yeah. whatever. Anyway, they run every year the 50 most eligible bachelors in Great Britain section. Ding dong, hello. Who's in there this year? In the f in the 50, in the top 50 of the entire country. And then they vote, they vote and they put them in order and see who is the most eligible bachelor. But that's of, that's 50 people, right? Most, I mean, the, I, it always annoys me slightly because bachelor, it, it, it kind of seems like a more sophisticated word for loser. 
Yeah, no. Which always sort of unnerves me. And also, they try and do a different 50 every year, so they're getting pretty desperate to get different ones. No, no, no. no, 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 Because also, a lot of people who are sort of like successful, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, are married, so there's very little to... No, 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 there's a huge... I don't know if this is international, it could even be international, I'm not sure, actually, so I could be up there with the likes of Justin Timberlake, etc. So, uh, Fred Durst. Yeah. That sort of person, you know. So anyway, this is what's exciting, right, although I'm slightly frustrated because they were telling me that last year, all right, uh, they get, because what happens is the all, the readers of the magazine, they vote for who they think is number one most eligible bachelor, right? Last year, the, uh, the prize was a two-week trip in the Bahamas, okay? This year, I'm rather annoyed because all I'm going to win is a moped. That's whoa, the whoa, prize whoa, this year. Whoa, That's whoa, the whoa, prize this year, a moped. Whoa, 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 backtrack. What? Sorry? Last year was a two-week trip to Bahamas and this year Just what? Just a moped. I'm all, all I'm going to get is all a moped. All you're going to win is a moped. Yeah, I'm you're so... Not, g- you've got no chance. You've got enough. no chance. Who else is in it? Who else is in it? Well, I mean, I don't know lots and lots of people you never heard of. There was, I know, Duncan from Blue. Dean, and so, no. it, so you're second to him at least no. already. I imagine you're you're gonna come behind the other forty nine. No, 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 so, uh, no, 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 because you know, there are people voting for me. They yeah, get to vote for me. Yeah, Steve. They see I was, my, see my photo, uh, they can vote for me. Yeah, according to he, I was twenty second most sexy man in the world. I better take that helmet back. I would. I C D C. Brilliant. You took me all night long on XFM 104.9. Well, this show is a rockin'. It is. It is. Melissa Bay, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I came up with a new, uh, um, strand for Carl as well. He likes, he's always got, you know, we've done, uh, I don't think there's a week gone where we haven't mentioned an airy kid. A hairy like, child, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, uh, some related to a monkey and that. And I thought you could do a regular thing where he's got to come up with a story about a, an ape or a, a, a monkey, and it's called Chimpanzee That. <laughs> of course. Of I, course. Have, I have got one, but I can't remember it at the moment, so I'll just have to It'll think come to you whenever that. you join the yeah. show. Well, listen, while you're thinking about that, while you're stewing on that, here's a, a problem that someone's emailed in. <laughs> We're taking uh, emails today. If you've got a problem, a concern, um, or, you know, just a general query that you think Carl could answer for you, it could be about anything. It could be about some of the big kind of philosophical questions. Yeah. Um, it could be uh, you know, something to do with war or famine, anything like that. Or it could just be a personal dilemma, you know, something that's happening locally. Anyway, this seems one that I think you probably have, you and your father have probably come across this sort of dilemma in the past. Mm-hmm. And I'd be interested to know what your take is on it. Uh, let me see, this is from Lee Matthews by the look of it. He says, he lives in a suburban area where the local teenagers uh, also live on the same road and they're running riot. They're smashing wing mirrors off the cars, they're crashing into parked cars on their skateboards, and they're just generally making hay- mayhem, you know, night and day. Uh, what can you do to stop this going on? Uh, the parents of the kids don't seem to give a damn. Anyone who complains to them, they just say, I'll piss off. You know, the police are useless because they never catch them in the actual act of violence, which is what they got to do to, uh, apparently convict them. So, uh, they, they don't know who to turn to, really. It's rather like when a, a little old lady went and got the A-team, you know. It's, a, it's a, you know, and he was dressed as an elderly Chinaman. Exactly. She knew, she knew who he was. Colonel Decker didn't have a clue. Yeah. See, it's weird, because now, now it has got out of hand. Do sure. you know what I mean? Like, years ago when I was growing up on the estate, um, yeah, you had problems, but not like you have now. Do you no. know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, the summers were nicer as well, weren't they? Well, <laughs> it did seem that way, didn't it? Yeah. Right, and... Police are getting short or anything. But you right? yourself kind of admitted in the past that you were something of a tearaway, didn't you? You didn't do anything yeah, like never, these kids I here, I mean, the but... thing is, I was, I was scared that if I got caught doing it, my dad would go mad. Yes. And I remember smashing a car window by accident and legging it in the lounge. And sort of pretending to go asleep on the settee. <laughs> Genius. And I heard a knock at the door. He chloroformed himself. <laughs> just to be unconscious when his dad came home. And there was a knock on the door, and I thought, <laughs> oh god, this is the fellow who saw me. I was chucking a stone in the air, seeing how I could throw it. <laughs> of course and you he, were. He came Did it keep landing on your head? <laughs> <laughs> that would explain a lot. And, uh, he, he came down. Chucking a uh, stone in the air, love it. <laughs> see how far I it's throw brilliant. It. So, you know, uh, I wasn't bothering anyone. Did you but, invent that game? Right, <laughs> did so you get anyway. a stone for your birthday? <laughs> <laughs> go and play with your stone. <laughs> he gave one to Suzanne. Carl, go and play with your stone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing is, right, and it came down at a fun, funny angle, and it ate, of course the, it, did. it ate the back of this, uh, car, and the, and the back window is the most expensive because it has that heating thing in it, yeah, in case yeah. you've got a frosty window. Yeah. So I thought, oh god. <laughs> so I legged it in, got on a settee, went to sleep, knocked out the door. <laughs> Genius. It's <laughs> a brilliant plan. It's a brilliant <laughs> plan. <laughs> I couldn't be guilty, I'm asleep. So, so, I love the idea. So uh, the thing is, our lounge used to sort of, you could, you could see in from the door, right? So this family, who, uh, <laughs> I saw me do it, let, saw me asleep on the settee, and my mum said, go and get the door, 
and I sort of went, oh, as if I'd been asleep. Yeah. I went to the door, like, rubbing the eyes, and, uh, the fella said, what did you run off for? I saw you. I was like, oh, no. And I didn't see me dad, I went out, it was when he was working, sort of, evenings. So I went out so I didn't have to see me dad. And then the next day I came, fr I came home from school, and my dad said, 45 quid. Oof. That's all he said. That's all he, he looked said. at me. And then you fell asleep and he went, wake up, wake up, you know what I said, no, <laughs> yeah. 45 quid, no, the thing Carl, he, right. he, he didn't have to do 45 anything. pounds, Carl, now I know you were saving up for a brick, <laughs> but you can't have it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But do you know what I mean? It's like, I knew I did wrong, uh, and I was scared that my dad was gonna belt me. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, oh, well, you know, I'll be more careful next but time. But that was that. clearly good parenting on the part of your father, because these young tykes, that clearly they don't have the, uh, what the, do you the, do? the, the father's support. I don't even I, I don't know if, if I If you were living in that street, very quickly, what would you do? What, what, would, you, what would your approach be? If you were living in his street? <laughs> what if, what if they'd come over and they'd, they'd just vandalised all your pebbles, right, yeah. that you've been saving over the years and just threw your gravel away? What would yeah. you do if they just... I'd probably clout one of them. So you'd use violence? I think it's the only way sometimes. Sometimes <laughs> the only way. And I, don't, I don't mean, you know, really bad, but I'd, I'd show them that I'm not putting up with this. Right. And th then the problem is you've got their family coming round and they're probably quite Go to sleep. Yeah. If you hit a kid and the dad comes down, just go to <laughs> yeah. sleep. Yeah. Just to... <laughs> so, yeah, equally, um, if you're doing a bigger crime, you know, yeah. a bank job yeah. or a murder. Remember to take the stocking off your head, because they yeah. wake you up and go, why have you got a stocking on your head? Yeah. Just go, oh, I had a weird dream. It won't work. It's like with, with our kid, right? He was, um, I told Ricky about this the other day in the, uh, in the pub. But he's- Is this your brother? He, he never, yeah. Cause he, he was a terrorist, wasn't he? Well yeah, a little bit, but it he was more- He did drive a tank down the, the high street once, didn't he? Yeah, that's when he was in the army. <laughs> yeah. But, but, uh, Another story. But, but this time, I remember, um, <laughs> my mum and dad were going out, right, for the evening. And, um, I must have been about, I don't know, five, so our mark was like, I don't know, probably 18, yeah. something like that, 17, 16, 17, 18. So my mum and dad go out, and our mark says to me, right, uh, here's a deal, do your little deal. I'm gonna have a load of, uh, women round. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, deal is, I'll let you have your tractor in the house. Wow, he had a tank, you had a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, yeah, but his brother didn't have the rocks that Carl had. No, no. So he needed the so tractor to pull his on. toys along. What kind along. of a man was he? He brought a bunch of women round. So, yeah, there was loads of, but do you know when you're a kid, you don't think, ooh, I know what they're up to. You're not bothered, are you? Do you know what I mean? You, as long as I've got my tractor, I'm happy. Yeah. So I was, I was- well, still, He actually hasn't changed a bit. But how many women did he have? Was it just him and like a bunch of women? Yeah. Was it like, what, what's his name? What's his name? Look, like Nedwell from Confessions. Yeah, yeah, Confessions yeah. of an older well, brother. Just came around and he he liked orgy. his women. He, uh, seriously, right, my mum and dad had to move because they got sick of women coming around saying, I've got a kid and it's your marks. They had to move because it got that bad. Do you know, did you hear, when you were playing on your tractor and there was women running back and forth in underwear, did you ever hear this noise? <laughs> Did yeah. you ever hear that? Or a kind of wow, 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 and just see your brother's arse disappearing down yeah, the exactly. thing, being chased by a butcher? Did you? Ever it's, <laughs> it's not important. Is, it? <laughs> is that what it's going to be like? Do you think when I'm voted number one most eligible bachelor in Great Britain? <laughs> yeah, and you're coming on your moped. <laughs> I mean, no. How am I going to get a tractor? <laughs> Testing. This is a special transmission. A special one-off show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And the little bald mank twat that is the shaven monkey known as Carl Pilkington. Right. Now, Rick, just a quick question, because if people have just stumbled across this perhaps on the uh, internet or on their uh, TV channel, they're probably going to be a little bit alarmed by what you've said there. You've come straight in with little bald mank twat, and a lot of people don't know who that little bald mank twat is, so maybe you should clarify. Well, um, I was, I'm, I, I, I'm Ricky Gervais, you probably know me from such shows as The Office and Extras, cameos in the odd film. Um, my, uh, long-term partner, not in that way, Stephen Merchant. <laughs> not in that way. Uh, Stephen Merchant, yes, I was involved with some of those projects, uh, but I've not been in a film. And, uh, we met Carl when we went back to XFM as Conquering Heroes. We were, we were let go when, uh, XFM changed hands, um, and then, uh, we did The Office, and then we came back, and we were big shots. No longer did we need to run the desk or press any buttons, um, so we were assigned, um, how can I put this, uh, like a, a stupid lackey. Yes, yes, um, proper, st I mean, probably the person who was lowest on the rung. 
I'd have thought so. Station. They said, oh, g give it to me. No one wants to work the Saturdays. The caretaker didn't work Saturdays, so they gave <laughs> yeah. us Carl. And we met Carl, and um, I was first struck by the roundness of his head, I'll mm. be honest. I thought, this is a bald man, um, a little round-headed, bald freak of a man. He opened his mouth, he spoke funny. Um, well, actually, he spoke without opening his mouth. That was the second thing that struck me. <laughs> he just had this slack-jawed gimpness about him. Words came out. Um, they I, think, were, I think they got the idea now, anyway. Was what? <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel that that was a balanced uh, explanation of your meeting with us, or would you like to offer any extra detail there, Carl? Um, well, with every meeting, there's a, there's a different story, isn't there? Um, the way you sort of looked at me and thought, he's weird. I saw Steve, it was like a triangle. <laughs> Ricky was looking at me, I was looking at you, uh, thinking that's weird. Uh, it and seems yeah, that's, that's un that's just that I'm the, w I, you know, why don't you have any go at Ricky for being fat and Just because, old? no, I'm just saying on the first meeting, right. it's like a museum, isn't it? Everybody rushes to the weird stuff first. <laughs> Uh, I love the fact that you're putting yourself firmly in that category <laughs> as well, though. Oh, I love that. That, that. That's great. Like someone from Reservoir Dogs. Everyone but, looking at someone else. But you don't feel that way about me anymore. No, I've got used to it now. That's, that's what <laughs> I'm no, saying. No, I'm saying you, you, that whatever your accusations of weirdness were, they all were unfounded. It moves, it moves on, doesn't it? It's like, like anything. You get, you get used to, to a look, don't you? Um, <laughs> I, I watch a lot of programmes on stuff that people have up with them and... And you only watch programmes about people that got something wrong with them. That is what you do. If, if ever you say, did you see that thing last night, it's going to be something like the, 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 the kid who was born with too many legs, yeah. or the, the, the baby with an arse for a head. It's yeah. always going to be stuff like that. It's like there was a programme on a bit back about a fella who had a, had a funny head and what have you, and he lived in a small village, and nobody double-taked anymore because you get used to it, don't what, you? What was up with his head? Just had like a, it was sort of like the new elephant man. It sort of had gone for that look. <laughs> he gone and, uh, for that look. And, well, uh, what does he do in the morning? Just eat a bun, sort no, of shave. It's, it's, it's just that's what, all I'm saying is people in his village. It wasn't a big village. People were used to it, and they no longer stared. And that's what I'm saying with you. And, but it's uh, interesting that because you you say you've acclimatised <laughs> to my so-called weirdness. I don't know what weirdness that is. I've, I've still not grasped that. But Ricky it's continues. The eyes. To, what? And it's just the eyes. <laughs> Well, why are you listening? Why are you I've not had a go at you and you see the <laughs> round head like a f***ing <laughs> orange. Which is the thing which perpetually entertains Ricky. Ricky is never acclimatised to you. Is that fair, Rick? Yeah, I love it. I just, I can't get enough of him. Because I see different things. Every time I look at Carl, sometimes I see like a completely sort of like spherical object. Right, like a, uh, hon honestly, like some sort of pumpkin uh, <laughs> on, on, you know, uh, Halloween. And then I see him, I see... Flat, straight well, with on. With a pumpkin, Rick. Right. With, with a, with a jack-o'-lantern outside someone's house, right? There is a certain light behind the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Not with Carl. And then sometimes he looks like a plate. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, like a, a, a clay plate that a child has made. When they've, they've made a face on the plate using yeah. their, their food. Or a biscuit. Like one of those biscuits, <laughs> novelty biscuits you can <laughs> sure, buy on your birthday. ice with a little smile into my Yeah. Um, but that's not, that's not the, um... I think that's not the biggest thing about Carl. Carl it isn't his um, physicality, it isn't it the roundness of his head, it isn't the gimpness of his slack jawed um, face. Um, it's not even his, his hairy body and sort of like chimp like gait. It is. <laughs> Although his, those are all key features. These are all key features, yeah. but it's his incredible mind. And I think uh, maybe over the next um, two hours or so, um, if you haven't heard of Carl, uh, then I think you're in retreat. If you have heard of Carl, then you're already being um, treated, I think. Uh, by the fact that he is, is present on this special broadcast. Rick, can I suggest that we uh, take a pause there, play some music, come back and we'll talk some more. Oh, this isn't just about car, we're playing some great tunes. Arctic Monkeys, Fluorescent Adolescent, Talking of Monkeys, we're here with Carl Pilkington. <laughs> um, well, I say we, uh, I'm Ricky Gervais, with me, Stephen Merchant. Hello. Um, doing a special uh, one-off broadcast. Now, it's, it's, it's special in the sense that, um, I don't know why it's special. I started that sentence. I had no, <laughs> you had no I, I really, I, I had no backup. It's not particularly special. We've done this thousands of times. Um, well, it's special in the sense you got the old team back together. Exactly. It's special in the sense that it is a one-off. Yeah. That's why it's a special one-off. It's special in the sense that it is a one-off. I know it's special for me because I'm giving up um, a time, about three or four hours of my time for no money and no personal gain. 
So well, a special you say here, that. Now, now, Sammy Jacob, right, is, is the guy that, um, founded XFM and gave me and Steve our break. Yep. In entertainment or, or whatever, comedy. Um, I remember also on the second day, he said, when you two <laughs> going to do some work before I fire. Yes. Which was, uh... And yeah. I vowed that no one would ever say that again. <laughs> yeah. And, um, um, so we, uh, he called me out of the blue and said, um, you know, we're launching Enemy Radio. Uh, that's a good project, you know. I'm a fan of the genre. Um, right, will you do a special show? I, right, I called, I called Steve. Steve went, wah, uh, I called Carl and he went, definitely not. Um, and so I had to persuade these two miserable bastards to do this show. Carl, why didn't you want to do this? As a favour, I said to Carl, let's do it, let's do one. There's two reasons I want to do this. One, we'd stop the podcast. Yeah. Carl, we, we, we charged for the podcast because you'd left work and, you know, we did very, very well with that and I thought I want to give something back to the fans, okay? That's yeah. one thing, okay? Yeah. Right? Um, two, I want to do Sammy a favour. Why not? Okay? Oh, well, that's fair. That's, that's your, your yeah. opinion. Yeah, but, 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 but you, yes. But what you can't do, when you're doing someone a favour, you can't go, yeah, Steve and Carl will feel the same about it. Yeah, of course I'll do it, Sammy. Well, of course well, Carl will do you a favour, the man you've never met and you've never done a favour for yourself. Well, of course he'll do it. Well, hold on. Steve didn't want to do it either. He was busy. He works on six music, so he was worried about that. He shouldn't well, really be doing I it. I shouldn't really be doing this. And I'll tell you this, yeah. if you do love great new music <laughs> and lively chat, then six music Sunday afternoons is a great place to be with the I, Steve Merchant Show. I agree. There's enough for everyone to go round. Yeah. Enjoy that. Enjoy this. Yeah. But Steve does it a favour to me. I said, Steve, I do it. all right, mate, you've done me enough favours. Yeah. Yes, I will. Okay? You didn't fall for that. I said, as a favour to me. No, he didn't. I even started an internet campaign to put in the poster up saying, Carl, do some work, you little yeah. lazy bastard. After a month, he was begging me to stop it. I he wasn't was begging you, it was just a bit stupid. You were really annoyed. Yeah, what I annoyed. like, though, it's interesting, because you are, you're a busy man, Rick, yeah. and you're, I know you've been heavily involved with lots of projects. How you found time, because you don't like writing and doing any form of administration no. at any time. How you found time to write a daily blog is quite remarkable. Well, I knew it was irritating. <laughs> right. It was, uh, it, it captured the imagination of, um, you know, people all over the world. I wanted him to do this podcast, um, and here we are. What changed your mind, Carl? Um, well, you kept going on about it. Yeah. And then I thought... You saw friendship, friendship was an important thing. Um, yeah, a little bit of that. Now I've got, I've got, uh, I've got to tell Steve something on air that Steve doesn't know about. Me and Steve are doing this for free, as a favour. I'm doing it as a favour to Sammy. Steve did it as a favour for me, that's what friends are for. Uh. Carl was negotiating himself some money. Yeah, well this, this... Who the hell have you negotiated money from? Well, Sammy, I didn't know him. I, 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 I owe this man nothing. We're, I'm not we're doing the... anything for free, I've got bills to pay, we've all got bills to pay, right? Oh. You've got other work that brings you money in. Uh, let me just stop because... I'm sick of it. Wait though, because this is interesting, because as you say, Rick, you're doing this as a favour to Sammy, he gave you your big break. Now, yeah. Rick, you gave me my big break, yeah. right? I didn't know Sammy, Ricky gave me a break, I'm oh. doing this as a favour to Ricky. Oh, oh, God. Who the hell oh. gave Carl Pilkins oh. a big break? Oh! Who? Oh! Who would have... There's one man in this room who wouldn't even have an agent, would oh. even have a need for an agent, if it oh. weren't for Ricky, Mr. Ricky Gervais. But hang on a minute, it's not me. No, I'm, just, one, I'm, I'm already thanking you, but nice it's one, free, Steve. It's free show, so you on miserable, ungrateful little mank twat. Yeah, it's real. I hope you feel really bad. I don't feel bad. Me and Steve are doing it out of the kindness of our heart. Yeah, free. You're you're uh, money grabbing again. That also on the internet. How mean he is. I'm not how mean. You are mean, Carl. Because you know we did those paid podcasts, and all I wanted to do was some free ones. You wouldn't do it because we've not... done it now. I'm just saying you've got to get to a point when you go. I enjoyed that. Yeah, the podcasts were all right. Cut them off. You don't keep the story going. With but the I'll Bible, they didn't go, let's do another volume, people seem to like this story. Yes, they did. What? The New Testament. The Old Testament was a yeah, massive right. They did it once then, they did like a special for the fans. But all I'm saying sequel. is- Sequel, one they, sequel. But they didn't, they didn't keep going on. And we did three lots of the podcast. Yeah. It's more than enough for anyone. But I just wanted to give, you know, the people on the internet yeah. something back. Yeah, well we've given them enough. Well, Look at the people on the internet, always moaning. What? Who are most? Just moan. <laughs> Who do? People do. Sick of it. We should... me Graham. They said, they said I'm not even real. They said he's, he's an actor. He's called Graham. That annoyed me. That's the thing that annoyed me the most. Graham. Of all the names. It's just, if I don't, if I'm not me, what am I? That's the thing that annoyed me most. <laughs> if I'm am... not me, what am I? Well, it, it would annoy me if someone was accusing me of something. I mean, that's the thing. No, it annoyed you because they were stating a falsehood. Yeah, that's what annoys me. That's, that's what did me add in. Let's, uh, play a record and be back with Gra uh, Carl <laughs> after this. 
okay. Listening. In this book. Okay. Listen, right? In this book, little tips and stuff. It's one here about if your dog keeps nicking a remote control. Sure. The way to get it off it, ring the doorbell. Right, so you gotta get off your chair, <laughs> go and ring the doorbell, so the dog goes, what's that? And it dro- <laughs> it, it, jo- it drops the remote control, goes running to the door, yeah. you- you run back and pick it up. I love the idea of Carl doing that, and then the doorbell goes, and Carl drops it and goes, and it's the dog pressing the doorbell, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and it sits back down, and Carl going, oh no, not again. <laughs> I, I mean, I really do want- can't I just have this? You excited by that, are you? It's brilliant. What about this one, though, that you mentioned? This is, uh, a book which has got all those, um, urban legends and stories that you've read on the internet and it tells you whether they're real or not. This has got the one in there. I know you're very excited about the one with the woman who stuck her head in the microwave. Yeah. Eh? Hey? All right. It's not all right. So basically that she's saying here that whenever Ricky says, oh, it's not true, you can dispute, dispute that with your, your book. Yeah. yeah. What do you think then, Carl? Do I have a think about all these gifts? And There's then so much stuff, back? isn't there? Should we play a record and then come back? <sighs> Can't have you found something you like in there? You're so undecided, Carl. I really like this book. Go on, what is it? What have you else you found? What tip? Uh, God, there's loads of stuff in there. Yeah. Um, let's just, let's just pick one at random. Don't be too tidy. Leave some areas for hopeful, helpful garden animals to hide in. So when you're cleaning your garden and that, you know, it might look a bit of a mess, but think about the, the animals that are walking about at night in the uh -huh. dark and stuff. Yeah. Just little things you don't think about. Yeah, because they're pointless. Little, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. then, well, let's play a record. Oh, there's so many to decide on. Yeah. Alright, what are we playing, Steve? This is something, um, from a little compilation that came free with a magazine called Comes With A Smile. It's a good little magazine. And this is, uh, by Matt Pond, PA. It's called Night's End. It's not, I suppose it's a little bit of New Country, which we don't play often, but, uh, there's some nice tracks no, floating about, nice. and that's, uh, Matt nice. Pond, PA, Night's End. Well, like, End. I'm getting very... Sad. Now, ten minutes to go, and so much to cram in. Now, thing is, Carl's fallen in love with that book, but I feel a bit bad letting a friend sort of win when all these lovely people, these regular listeners, so I don't think you can have that. But I'll tell you what, I, I'll get, I'll, no, no, I'll borrow that or I'll buy it for you. So you can have that anyway. What, what have That's you That's safe, you're going home with that. What know, have you avoid washing up by boiling a bag of food. <laughs> <laughs> see, I can see why you'd love that. <laughs> exactly. Is there anything else, what, uh, uh, what, what other things have you caught your eye, though? Put that uh, book down. Uh, go on, go on. Um, well, well, one of our regular listeners who actually wants the bag and wants to be part of your life, come right. on. Well, Richard emailed in, right? And yeah. he's got a book, which is similar to the one I like there. Yeah. Which has got like 180 stories in it. Um, so, I mean, most of them are like true, I think. Do you know, do you know I was telling you that story about the woman who put her, her head in the oven <laughs> to, to dry, to dry her hair? Yeah. Cause she liked the way- and she boiled her brain. Yeah, she stuck it in the microwave. Avo avoid washing your hair by boiling the brain bags. <laughs> so she put her head in the microwave? Yeah. And boiled her brains? Yeah. And boiled her brains. Sure. She thought she'd get the same result as she did from the oven, but it all went wrong and that. And what do you mean? She used to dry hair in the oven? And she just like went modern? Apparently it's like what punks used to do. You can get, you get a different sort of heat off an oven than you do off a hair dryer, right? Sure. So, um, she thought, well, I'll do it in half the time, use a microwave. Sure. She- Busy, she was busy, she was late. I don't understand how you can get your head in a microwave. It only works when the door closes. Yeah, but you jam the little thing, don't you? Well, don't say that. Don't say that. Don't tell- I don't think it's possible, but don't- Of course it is. Yeah, well, well anyway, don't. But he's, do that. he remembers that story and said, I've got a book full of stuff like that. And, um, he sort of sums up a little story that's- that's in the book about this girl who, uh, she had long hair, right? And, uh, she used to always mess around with it. And, um, she's sucking on it. Do you know, like, how girls- girls do with the- with the long hair, they sort of yeah, mess yeah. around with it and stuff. Yeah. And she's sucking on it all the time. And she was doing this from the age of, like, ten. Mm. And then, I don't know, she's probably about thirty-odd. And, uh, she's doing this all the time. Guessing. And, uh, she goes, oh, God, my belly's hurting today, mum. And she goes, oh, what's wrong with you? I said, I don't know. You're thirty. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so she goes to the doctors, and the doctors do an x-ray, and nothing's coming up, and it's like, I don't know what's wrong with you, you know, you're just being a bit moany about nothing. She's like, no, honestly. <laughs> She's a very intolerant doctor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she said, this is- Piss <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> this is- this is uh. really hurting, I don't know what's up with it. So anyway, they- they found out some sort of system of, uh, looking at what- what was going on. Yeah. And apparently- X-rays. No, it wasn't x-ray, because x-ray didn't show it up. Okay. It was something else. So, uh, anyway. It's only gone and turned into, like, she's been sucking her hair for so many years sure. that little bits have come off. Sure. She's got a giant air ball in her belly. 
Wow. Right? Yeah. Which was like huge, the size of a rat or something like that, right? The size of a... <laughs> it's so interesting what he chose. Yeah. The no, size right. of a rat. No, no, no. Well, the funny thing is, when, when they eventually got it out, yeah. the, the mum was like, you know, oh god, it was terrible. And that's what she actually said. It looked like a dead rat. Oh. Right. And it was in her belly and that's like what was causing all the pain. Sure. And apparently your, your belly acids don't, um, uh. don't, don't kill hairs because you're so fine it can't handle it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, right. So I you can, you can go for that book, are you? That's the one I want, Who's yeah. the winner then? Who's the winner of the, the lovely BAFTA What's bag? What's his name there? Richard Scholar, is that something? Yeah, Richard, uh, yeah, Scholar or Scowler yeah. or something else. So he's the winner. So check it out. You're gonna get that book coming to you. I'll get, I'll borrow this book but, for but you. I need oh. an email within like five working days to sort of So what's your email? It's carl.pilkington at yeah. xfm.co.uk. Okay, lovely. I want an email from this guy oh. and I won't be sending the bag out until I receive the goods. Okay, <laughs> right, good. Enough. Well, we've only got a few minutes. I want to play Swade and I want to end with the Smith track, so let's, let's play this. What is it? Swade, stay together. Lovely track. My favourite tra Swade track of all time there. Well, we're, 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 oh, that's nearly it, Carl. Right, what's your last room 101? Oh, God. It was, uh, holidays. Holidays. Well, you want to put holidays in room 101? People who are sort of annoying on holiday. Oh, yeah. Do you know when you go away? Oh, yeah. It's sort of touched on this before. Is it? Is this going to be the Scouse guy? Yeah. Go on. Oh, it's so long, though. I mean, it was holiday when we went to Tunisia. <laughs> and the scouts were pissed you off, surprise, surprise. Yeah. Yeah. But the annoying thing was, you know, when you go on, on, uh, it was a cheap holiday and, like, the lesson here is, you know, if you want a good holiday, you gotta, like, spend some money. Yeah. And we didn't on this one, we spent about, I don't know, 400 quid for two of us for, like, a month or something ridiculous. And we got there and, you know, you, you get to the hotel and you go, we have made a mistake. <laughs> you know, it's a ropey hotel. Um, you know, you can tell, like, the blinds and stuff as you walk in, they're all dirty and stuff, and Well, let's make the most of it, you know, let's not, let's not get down about it, it's, it's a holiday, it's sure. for a rest. And <laughs> you try and make the most of it, and we had to meet, you know, like, you have one of those things where you get to your destination and the rep says, right, you know, go and unpack your bags and that, go and sort yourself out in the room, and, uh, tomorrow morning we'll meet up at ten o'clock and I'll go through, you know, the, the best sort of place to go for camel rides and, uh, you know, the best deals <laughs> I can get you. That sort of thing. Can anyone here walk like an Egyptian? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, she says, uh, right, tomorrow morning meet ten o'clock in the discotheque. So, we get up and we have breakfast and it wasn't a good breakfast, uh, the kitchen was, like, Bit, bit horrible, the food wasn't good, and it was run by sort of midgets. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it was run? Not there's anything wrong with that. There was little fellas running around, and the annoying thing was, one of them sort of started to fancy my girlfriend. <laughs> 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 How did he manifest his, his affection no, for No, you're not saying there's anything wrong with midgets, though, are you? are just no, saying no, it was no, strange. There was yeah, but even midgets shouldn't be claiming on, on Carl. <laughs> no, I know, I know, no. But it's also that thing of, the, you know, they've got little fingers, and... I don't and it's oh sort God, of ruined. I'm so sorry. No, 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 I'm not. It's, it is a bit of a phobia of mine. Okay. Do you know what I mean? They are nice people and that. Sure. Um, oh God. But the annoying thing is. So what was he doing then? How did he? I don't understand how he was chatting up your girlfriend. Was he crawling under the table so you couldn't see? <laughs> he just kept <laughs> whispering, <laughs> whispering to her from underneath there. <laughs> Stop it. Just you know. Wait, I don't want to get a complaint on our last show. Oh, There's not many oh. midgets. What's going to happen? Can oh. we just finish this and start up again in a couple of months? Oh, yeah. So if you want to more, know more about the midget theme <laughs> restaurant, <laughs> then just, just, just we'll talk you in, we talk you in three months. Yeah. It's just, oh. uh, it's just, no, it's that's just fair nice. enough, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah no, right, sorry Carl. about that's this. Your Listen, um, uh, we'll see you in about, a really, um, it's been a pleasure, truly, and thank you for I've everyone that wrote I've got you a letters. Presents. Have you really? Yeah, I've got you both a present. Right. Oh. I've got Ricky, um, do you know how like we've done fables and yeah. stuff? Yeah. Right. Yeah. This is like Mr. Ben. Oh. This is brilliant. Yeah. Right? And it's like little fables that Mr. Ben goes on. Oh, fantastic. So I want <laughs> you to t learn something from that for when you come back. Okay, brilliant. That's I, lovely, I tell Carl. one of the stories I read this morning. It's brilliant. In fact, <laughs> when you've done with it, yeah. give it me. Yeah. Because I, I haven't finished reading that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. And for Steve, <laughs> a little, uh, 
Oh, chat-up lines. A little book of chat up lines. That's fantastic. That's great car. Thank. Um, well, we're t- we're t- see you um in three months. But currently, man and Carl cherish Carl Pilkington. He sits in a little room by himself. So keep him in touch, and we'll see you in um August. I'm, I'm going to leave you with some of the um we all we all love. This is uh, there is a light that goes out by the Smiths. Very apt, I think. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Yeah, if I'd lost my knob, I'd go, oh, I'm not gonna have all that stuff. Just, just whack a pair of tits on me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'd think, oh, I'll have a, just forget it. But, but why not just put it where it should be straight away instead of messing about? Where should it be straight away? <laughs> you know. On you the know. forehead. <laughs> uh, listen, let's, are we doing a competition? <laughs> let's play a tune. Let's, let's come just, on, let's just... Carl, you can't be bothered. Right, right okay, we're rainbow, gonna strap this yeah. and you're gonna work Mondays again. <laughs> Since you've been gone. By Rainbow on XFM 104.9. Well, it's what uh, the, the uh, Londoners have been waiting for. It's Rockbusters, isn't it, Carl? Well, <sighs> it's, it's not. It's not Rockbusters. It's it's something we've done. It's a bit like Rockbusters, but it's been tweaked. <laughs> right? Brilliant. So remember that it's done with sound effects and that. Oh God! Oh, really? What do you mean? All right, come on. Right, remember this one. We d- we tried it before. Oh, no, wait a minute. There'll be headphones on, right? Oh, wait a minute. And this is one you've done in the past. This is we not might. the competition. This is not the competition, but I said, like, what what song is this? Right. <laughs> Smack my bitch up, yeah. Okay. Brilliant. Brilliant. Smack my bitch up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, so it's kind of that, but, but rather than just doing songs, it's that film or song sounds good. You know when you do these things, you can't do them in the week. You've got to do them either Saturdays or Mondays. Yeah, I do, yeah. So, well, I'm gonna check well, on that because well, that really annoys me. Because it, it's, it's been done, so it doesn't really. You don't have to worry about it when, it's, no, when but, it gets done. That do you? Because it's done. So. Well, yeah, but I don't. You're taking time out of things you should do. Be doing at work. You're yeah, already yeah. weaseling way out. XFM's going down the tube, mm. and you're taking the piss left, right, and centre. Mm. Right. So, so is is this week's little grab that film or song sounds good? So, what is it? Come here. <laughs> 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 I'm well happy now I've had that. (laughs) (laughs) What? What It's a film or a song title, is it? No, it's it's a film or a song. What do you mean? Forget that. It's a film. (laughs) 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 What are you talking about? (laughs) That must have taken you three minutes. I I didn't do it on a Tuesday though, because that's cutting into precious time. (laughs) Have you seen how long a trial takes him? About 30 minutes. Sorry, uh, let me just- let's just concentrate for a second. Okay. Right, this is a film, This is, is a film title. The title of a film. Yeah. Play it again. Come here. <laughs> ah, I'm well happy now I've had that. <clears throat> right? Uh, oh, dearie me. Dearie me. Three, Three months they've waited for that. Three months for that. <laughs> Shite. Do you want to say what the prices are? Oh, I can do. I'd say there's good news and there's bad. I don't know, I think maybe this is what people think of Carl's quizzes. This is the respect they show us. Because you know that um, the various companies, they'll send you product which you can include in competitions. It's a yeah. promotional tool. Yeah. They've sent us um, I'm Alan Partridge, Series 2, yeah. and Forty Towers, the complete series. Brilliant. On VHS. <sighs> I mean, who's got a video player anymore, Carl? It's for losers and the working classes. Yeah, for up north. I still sell them up north, I think. Thankfully. In, mar- in market stores. <laughs> it's been redeemed. It's, I mean, I, I wonder how, old, how we got hold of that. Yeah. Yeah, the Office series 2 on DVD, that was, that was a nightmare, getting hold of that one. The best, um, album in the world ever, it's got stuff on there, Super Furry Animals is on there, Supergrass, Gold Frap. And uh, also the best of the Boomtown Rats, which is not bad, and um, a couple of Teachers DVDs. So some good stuff there amongst the, uh, the VHSs. And you can win all of those treats by identifying this film. Oh, God. Come here. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, I'm well happy now I've had that. (laughs) (laughs) Email only, we don't want to actually speak to you. (laughs) Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. I'm sorry if that's brought you down, it's made Um, us feel bad. Can I just say something? What's the phone number, Carl? Uh, 08700 800 1234. Eight hundred. One, two, three, four. Call up for no reason because I want Carl to answer the phone. He hates doing it. So call up and talk to Carl. Ask him anything you want. Just talk to him. Okay? Right, answer the phone. They're going mad. Drills. Big Sir on XFM 104.9. He's so annoyed that he had to answer all those calls. <laughs> Why did you like it? 
I just, we're wasting time, aren't we? <laughs> that's your listenership. No, no, they no. want to speak to you. No, that's nice and everything that people call up. Yeah. But we should be concentrating on what we're doing. Yeah. Well, I'm do, but I do this show to annoy you. I don't do it for the money or the kudos or the awards. <laughs> So you know I mean, I do it so you have to be here and do what I say for two hours because you're getting away with murder here in the week. I don't like seeing that. I don't like injustice in the world. I try and fight it wherever I can. <laughs> so I do it to <laughs> annoy. It's good of you, Rick. Thanks yeah. for doing that, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's and interesting it... though that you, you it's pa you're passionate about fighting injustice, but you focus <laughs> specifically on Carl at XFM, <laughs> one yeah. of the world's lesser crimes. <laughs> Being a little yeah. bald mank twat. Exactly. I know. Yeah, but it, nonetheless, it is a crime. Look at him, look, he's got his head down like one of those, you know one of those chimps that have like lost their mate in London Zoo? <laughs> he just sits there like, you know, a, a broken animal. Carl, what are you thinking? Where are you on the happiness scale now of one to ten? Carl? On about a three. <laughs> Go on, Steve, what are you gonna do? Well, we were talking earlier about stuff that happens while happened? we've been away. Um, we, we, um, shed, we don't talk about I haven't been this upset shed. since, uh, yeah. Skunk and Hansi broke um, up. Yeah, I know. Cheryl Tweedy. Um, Tweedster. we've done that, we've done the Tweedster. Uh, um... Well, of course, the war. Is that all I've done and dusted now? I think now? it's pretty much over. I think we've, um, we've sorted that out. Okay, good. What annoys me is people going about having to go Tony Blair and Bush right for, like, bomb, you know, bombing stuff and all that. But my point is this, right? Those bombs have all been bought and paid for. Yeah. You, the taxpayer, if they're, uh, yeah, yours, they're and I'm, and I'm not for. a scientist, but I think bombs go off. <laughs> I think so. And if you don't use them, you lose them. <laughs> so let's use them. <laughs> exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's like, like tinned food. It lasts like, for like, a yeah, while, but eventually yeah, it's let's off. Do, it's like anything. Oh, we better eat that. We're, 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 no, don't open the fresh stuff. Don't build the fresh ones. Let's use the old ones. Exactly. So, Because they're know, just stockpiling there and they cost we, us millions. I know, we want to see if they work as well. What? Oh, do, no, we never tried that one. Use them. <laughs> use them on just, you know. Oh, exactly. Carl, who would you bomb if you could? Uh, I wouldn't. No? What do you mean? Well, what, imagine you could bomb a country. You're not actually <laughs> going to bomb them, but you're just going to frighten them. Just going to put the frighteners on frighten them. Frighten them, yeah. You're just going to go, I'm going to bomb you, and then I'll And they'll go running uh, yeah. behind and under tin shelters and that. Yeah. R Ricky's house? No, come on. What Ricky's country? No, what country? I, I wouldn't. I'd, honestly, no one sort of makes me fed up or anything. No one makes you fed up. Not not enough that I want to bomb a place. Well, you're not actually gonna bomb. You're I just putting involved. the fighters. I just say, like, did someone else do it? Sure. <laughs> that is difficult, isn't it? What about you, Rick? <laughs> oh, I got a list here. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know who I'd uh, who I'd threaten? Go on, the Swiss. Oh, they've had it easy. They've always they? had it easy. They've always they've, chicken. They, it's the equivalent of having Mondays off. Exactly. Like, oh, we don't want to fight. Exactly. You can, you can both walk through it. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're a carpet. Exactly. While yeah. we're busy sorting out fascism. Yeah. You know, or Osama bin Laden. They're, they're just in, chilling out. They're holding ours and Hitler's coat. <laughs> exactly. Do you know exactly. what I mean? Little weed. Yeah. Have both turned on them. Yeah. And I'll tell you who else. This will just frighten them up. Just what? shake up a bit. Um, Iceland. They've had it easy. Because they have stayed out of everything. They have not been involved in anything, as far as I can tell. But you don't have to bomb them, do Eskimos, you? Eskimos, they've never been involved in anything. I know, but don't bomb them, just pour hot water on their <laughs> Exactly. Just send a plane over with warm yeah. water. <laughs> yeah. With a big flask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, just to shake things up a bit, just to keep oh, no, them on yeah. their toes, that's all it is. Why would you live there? If you could choose, I have no idea. If you're an Eskimo and you're born, and, Wah, little baby, you grow up and you go, what? I'm, I'm, sorry, I'm eating ice and fish for yeah. the rest of my life. Well, fair you're enough. You're having a laugh. Fair enough, like years and years ago, but now, presumably, they, they're off, they're aware of the proper house and the, the fact you can live in, say, Somerset or the south of France. I know, but it's like, haven't they learned? It's sort of like, well, they haven't even got, they're not even on as good a thing as the North American Indians. Now they're sort of pissed up. <laughs> they got smoking fags. They live in lovely little cages. They, they're all brought to their little village. They're having a whale of a time. They don't have to go hunting anymore. Yeah. And they're not killing buffalo. Exactly. And the same with the es Eskimos. Let's get them some beer and fags down there. Knock the igloos down. Build them some lovely little well, semis or like. Or um, just a little kind of trailer or a caravanette or something like that. It's <laughs> yeah. gotta be better. It's gotta be preferable. <laughs> I know. Some of them have got TV. He's built in, Rick. I know. What well, showers? Watch? Yeah, they've got cable and stuff, have they? Yeah. Or was there it? one sort of Icelandic well, you'd channel? Get satellite or whatever, wouldn't you? Magnus really? Magnuson. Yeah, exactly. Probably doing. There's loads of Mastermind reruns. Yeah. <laughs> and Pingu. <laughs> <laughs> Just on a yeah. loop. That's porn over there, yeah, though. Exactly. Oh, brilliant. No, well, that's, oh. Like, that's like a hardcore documentary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is uh, Racist FM 104.9. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, who would you like to see bombed or not bombed? <laughs> <laughs> Not bombed, but just put the fighters on. <laughs> yeah, it would Email Ricky Dr. Vase, Jake's a phone. Any nation or anything. Carl, thoughts? Play a song? You're not working for your money. You're not having Monday off. 
we gotta do some at Monday. Let's plan some at Monday. Just to get him in here. You've got to, two hours for eight hours off. You don't do an eight hour day anyway. Rick, how but much is he getting paid? He's, get, uh, he's getting money for this. He's, he's, I think his wages went up last time. So he's getting paid to be here, extracurricular, extra work, right? So it's moonlighting, and they're giving him a day off. Yeah. And he's contributing mm, nothing. Nothing. So. Huh? What, Carl? You say something, mate? So. Huh? What's going on? What? Going on with yourself. Well, say something back and earn your well, money. Let's, let's just play a song. We've done a bit, done a bit of stuff there. You idiot. <laughs> Don't say we, mate. I've not heard anything from you. We've heard your point. Tell you another problem that I've worked out. It might mean? might make a slight difference on fat people. Don't put a light in a fridge because that's just that's just that night when they get peckish. They can see everything that's in there. Don't put the light there. You don't need a light in a fridge. There's no lights in other cupboards. Yet where there's food, it's like fat is getting up at four in the morning. What can it have? What's that at the back? Get rid of the light. They eat less. That might there might be some logic in that. That's interesting. Well, what's it there for? Tell me what that light is there for. They say turn off your standby light, yet you've got a light in your fridge. Well, no, it is showing you where tomorrow is. Yeah, but it's turned off when you shut the. You don't, the light's not on when the door's not open. Yes, but a fat person has always got the fridge door open. <laughs> 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 so what are you saying in a way is that the free market, capitalism being what it is, which has allowed companies, food manufacturers, to make them more full of more salt, more fat, and in order to well, attract you, in order to make more profits, is actually resulting in obesity. I was in a cafe, right? Um, I normally like to go in there, and I might have beans on toast, mm. uh, cheese on top. Of tea. I might have a bit of cheese. Yeah, cheddar on top. Uh, only if they offer. I sometimes sort of think I shouldn't have it, so mm. I'll only have it if they say you want cheese. Oh, okay. And then it's down to their problem. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's kind of like they made me have that. Yeah. So anyway, I'm sat in there. This little fella, I'd say he was from like Africa or something. Yeah. Uh, came in, had a little top hat on, <laughs> suitcase, <laughs> and red jeans. Dead happy he was. Uh, I think he just turned up to London, it's his first day out, and he's probably thinking, I can't believe me, look, look at the choice here. Anyway, <laughs> the difference was... Or conjecture, yeah. Is or it, yeah, yeah, go The on. difference was, he went in and he said, have you got any porridge? He asked for two bowls, for the price of one. It was a little bit of a... A kerfuffle. Yeah, a little bit, because he couldn't understand why. You've got loads of porridge, uh, give me two portions. But the, what, what, what I found interesting is, he didn't want to go for the donut. Or the pastry, because in his country they don't they don't have it. Mm. So food where he's from is for what food is for, isn't it? Giving you energy. Yeah. Here it's not about that, is it? No. You go. Oh, I'd love a little uh, muffin. So I just found I just found it interesting. That's all my point is that he could have anything. He's come over here. He's in London. Yeah. Got loads of stuff on offer. Yeah. Yet he still wants his porridge. Do you think uh, that? Well, firstly, do you think perhaps he had travelled from the past <laughs> <laughs> in some kind of time machine? <laughs> but secondly, do you think that now that he'll have a, he'll, he'll have a, his first taste of a donut, or any, or a pan of chocolat, do you think he'll get the taste of it next time you see him? Well, maybe that's that's yeah, how it let, works, isn't it? I mean, out. why do I like? Hey, well, next time, and there go. Hello, usual. No, shaft de porridge. I want a donut. That's that's what happens, isn't it? It's all about a mixture. You need a mixture in your body. You need to have. Like I've told, said to you before, I get an urge for things that I don't even know about. Do you know what I mean? What, like what? Anything. The one that always surprises me are plums. <laughs> <laughs> because I shouldn't get an urge for plums. I don't like them enough, but if I pass them in a the supermarket, I go, I want them for a bit. Yeah, that, I think you need that. And I go mad, I'll eat a full packet in a day. I'll eat like six and get bellyache and that, and I know I shouldn't overdo it with them. But it's just like, my body... He's is, like a creature, isn't he? My body just calls out for stuff. It doesn't, Carl. No, he feels that way because I wouldn't normally buy him. My favourite fruit, I, I like an apple, love a banana. Mm. I've got into um, blackberries. Yeah. <laughs> Quite expensive, but a bit of a treat. I think there's plenty of fruit out there. Bananas, apples, oranges. We've got plenty of fruit. They can't get rid of fruit quick enough. There's loads of stuff with fruit in now. Shower gel with kiwi in it. <laughs> <laughs> telling you, they can't get rid of it because it's too much. So they just go, what can we do with all this stuff? We'll stick it in there. Orange juice. I, t I had orange juice sort of cordial. Yeah. It tastes a bit weird, isn't it? Orange? Sneaked a bit of pineapple in. <laughs> orange and pineapple. They can't get rid of the stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of the satsuma. Easy to peel. What I don't like is the big oranges you have to peel them, um, you get it on your, you I know. I the ones I eat when I'm in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> just, just so you just dunk it. under the water afterwards that's and you're clean again. If I'm going to have a bath, yeah. then, then that's what you do. You so it's two it. treats, it's an orange and a bath. 
I mean, that's amazing. That's an amazing thing to look forward to. Don't you think you've blown that for when you're old, when you're 74? And I go, I'll tell you what, Carl, lovely treats, a bath and an orange. Done it! I did it when I was 36! So, uh, have you heard Desert Island Discs? Yeah. Good, let's do that. Right, um, forget the eight records, we well, can't play them anyway. We can't play them anyway. I know, but for people in other countries, they may not be familiar with those island discs. Oh, it's a, it's a, a programme, it's a, a real national institution here. They, they get, you know, prime ministers and leaders of men and really eminent people to go on. And you talk about your life and you choose your eight favourite um, tunes. You take a, a luxury item and um, you're allowed to take any book. I did it. Um, and I, I took a book, I think a tabletop book of art. Why would you take that? Oh, oh so much. You can't take anything that's useful. It's just, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a luxury item. You can't. I took a vat of Novocaine. I thought if I get toothache, I'm sipping on that till I die. If I'm stuck here with nothing to do, I've got eight records. I'm going to be sick of them. That's the thing. I'm looking at art. I'm le at least I'm looking at something, you know. What book would you take, Carl? Well, I wouldn't take an art book anyway, I know that. Right, okay, because so come on in, get one sick book. Of it. You're gonna get sick of it. Right, one book. You can't get sick of art, either. You okay. can. You can. You can have a brilliant <sighs> picture on your wall, but eventually, remember what I've said to you, mm. your eyes get bored of anything. <laughs> I don't remember him saying that. I think I blanked out. I think he came in one ear straight out the other. Well, that's why relationships break up, <sighs> isn't it? because the, the eyes get sick of looking at that other person, and you go, my eyes want to change. That's what it's all about. <laughs> my eyes want to change. Okay, come Sorry, on, love. Fucking hell, choose a book to I'd take. I'd probably take a dictionary or something like oh, that. Oh, that's ridiculous. Why? Why would you take a dictionary? Just because I'm not that good with words. But who, what do you want words for? You're not talking to anyone anymore. You don't have to worry about the vocabulary. You have to worry about... Oh, But there'll Beatles be a lot of and... talking to yourself, probably. It'd be nice to sort of... Oh, so you're going to bring yourself up on your grammar, are they? You're talking <laughs> to yourself and you go, Oh, Carl, you're an idiot. You don't say it like that. That's well, if you've got to talk to yourself, it'd be nice to have Why are you someone... talking to yourself, you maniac? Because there's no-one else about. Yeah, but you don't open your mouth and actually verbally talk in order to talk... But also, what does it matter if you've got a dictionary or not? Who's arguing with who? Because sometimes I feel frustrated when I don't, I can't get my point across. But it's just you! Exactly, you already that's know your more point. annoying. So, so you're getting annoyed now. You're annoyed with me because I can't explain what I mean. Yeah. I don't want to be annoying myself. <laughs> Why would you be annoying yourself? But you already understand your point. You don't need to vocalise no, it. sometimes I think through what I'm saying. Yeah. And I think, does that make sense? And sometimes I'll go, no, it doesn't. And I'll go, why is that? And then you, you're working it out in your head. Now, if I've got a better vocab, I'll have a good little chat. With yourself! If you're not keeping yourself interested in anything, your brain's gonna turn to mush. Now, I'm- I'm- I know how you feel. I'm teaching my brain stuff, keeping it active. Mm. The only thing you've got on that island mm. is your imagination mm. and your thoughts. Now, if you can make those imaginations and thoughts better, which you do with language, you're gonna have a better time, aren't you? Look, well, no, if you've had the thought, you've had the thought. You don't go, hold on. I'd have a thought here, but I can't think of the word. You don't think in language in that same way, do you, really? You think more conceptually. When someone came up, I, oh, guess what? I've just found the cure for... Oh, I can't think of the word. Forget what? It, I I've just worked out the cure for... Eh? I can't think of the word. Let's look it up. What is it? Cancer. No, but just to think... Language is a powerful thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um. No, oh, he's run out of words. You see, this is what I'm saying. It's sometimes difficult for me to get my point across with what I mean. Yeah, but that's fair enough if you're communicating, say, in this environment. And it's, dare I say it, perhaps a shame that you didn't read a dictionary before we started doing the broadcasting. But anyway, you've waited here on a desert island with no well, one fucker uh, around. Well, no, no. Well, I, I think uh, by then, well, by the time you get shipwrecked, there will probably be a few more entries to the dictionary. Um, grippage. Foodage. Rumminging. <laughs> replenishing. But, but, so what? All words are made up. Orange. One day, someone went, what? Oh, he's got a head, that's, that's, he's got a head like he's something. Got a head head he's got a head like a fucking what? I don't even know what. He, he's got a head like a fucking what? And the other thing is, say if I am captured. By who? who? What? By that's who? By a boat, that's passing. Why are you captured? captured? You mean saved? All right, saved then, yeah. Okay. If I'm sa there you go again, you see. I went for captured instead of saved. <laughs> You're captured you're by some pirates. you're not talking to anyone, Carl, in your head. It didn't matter. You knew what you meant. When you sat there on that desert island, you thought, oh, if I'm captured by a boat. They didn't come over and go, hi, Carl, we've come to save you. You wouldn't go, well, no, I don't want to save him, I want capturing. I go, right, sorry, wait for the next boat. 
It didn't matter. You knew what you meant. You'd go, how? And you'd get do on the you, boat. Do you think in, in words that you don't use? You've only got yourself a company. Yes, but you if don't... you bore yourself, what's the point? <laughs> What is the point, seriously? But how are you going to... What, so you think you're going to read that dictionary and you're going to be better company? Because you're going to be impressing yourself with longer words. You're going to go... If a boat passes and they go, there's a fella over there on that island, let's go and get him. Now, the way I am at the moment, they'd go, you all right? And I'd go, you are? And they go, oh, don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Where? Imagine that! Whereas if oh. I sort of say something with a big word that I can't think of right now, they'll go, oh, who's that? He sounds like he knows his... Yoo-hoo! Anti-disestandarutarianism! <laughs> get him on this boat now! <laughs> we must have that wit! <laughs> All right, you, you get... <laughs> Come through! But then I'm on the news and they go, oh, Carl, what was it like on the island? And I can start saying stuff. I it can't... was scrambarious! <laughs> No, but then I think it makes it more interesting, whereas at, the, at this moment in time, I'd struggle telling them I what think it's like. I like the idea of you trying to educate I love yourself. The idea. Do it now! Because there's so many other books. If I'm stuck with one... Okay, the dictionary. You've got a dictionary. What's your luxury item? What's your luxury item? Quick. Let's get off this island. Come on. What did you take for your luxury? A vat of Novocaine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some Revels. A big sort of bag. A big bag of Revels. A big bag of Revels. Just for variety. Well, there's no variety particularly in Rebels, they're You're all joking, chocolate, aren't, aren't they? No, all different. You've got orange ones, you've got coffee, caramel, Malteser. I mean, taking Novocaine isn't great, is it? If you don't get toothache, you'll be going, why don't they bring Rebels? <laughs> <laughs> Times like these, Foo Fighters next FM 104.9. Carl, right. let's build up to monkey news. Do you want to give the, uh, the competition answer and winner? Yeah, uh, we did the bit on, on The Shining, me acting out in that. Yeah. And the question was, the kid in the film The Shining, yeah. he, uh, <laughs> after, like, the devil had got in him and that, <laughs> uh, This isn't written out, is it? You're just winging this, aren't you? No, but I remember it. I well, remember you haven't seen it. the film, though, have you? No, but when I was whizzing through to get the clips to make that thing, right. I saw it and thought, hang on a minute, I'll watch this bit. And yeah. that's why I want to take it home yeah. tonight and watch you're excited, it. Yeah. I meant more how you're presenting the competition. It's just like Jonathan Ross on film 2003. Well, I'm just just saying, right? So the kid's there in the bedroom, and yeah. he's uh, he's got his mum's lipstick. Yeah. And he's uh, he's saying. It doesn't it run a, a mobile deed? No. Nope. And he no. said uh, it, it, he wrote down red rum. Yeah. On the back of the door. Uh huh. And his mum wakes up and thinks, "What's he doing?" Yeah. She looks at him. and She goes, "Oh," and then she looks in the mirror. And sees red rum in the mirror. Right. Which he is thinks sort of he's offering racing tips. Yeah. Says murder in the oh, mirror. Clever. Oh, clever. So, uh, Kelly in Hounslow got that right. So, Excellent. after I've watched the film, I'll be whizzing that over ah, to Hounslow. Brilliant. I, I, I mean, the one thing I do like about um, this show, uh, for all its faults, is the honesty. Yeah. I mean, that can be good and bad. <laughs> I mean, it's. I mean, some people would think it's it's sloppy, arrogance, laziness. You know, they'd be right. Yeah. <laughs> But um, I, I like I like to think it's honesty. It's like a peek into the to the mind and workings of Carl Pilkington. He just said to me because he was shaking because he, he said to me and the, I, I quote he said oh he just uh, whittering to himself I must remember to eat <laughs> next time Suzanne's away. I know I know I, I like must to remember to eat next time Suzanne's away. No, but you did. I mean, I wonder if I lived on my own if I'd still be about. <laughs> Because I just neglect myself. Yeah. So, I mean, for all I've eaten. A lot morning, of self abuse. Is that I what you're had, saying? I had lasagna last night that I messed up, right? Why did you mess it up? Cooked it for too long. It was like a brick. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, and she called up and said, Have you eaten? I went, Yeah. She went, Was it nice what you have? I said, Lasagna. Was it nice? I thought, I don't want her to worry, because she's probably been out and had a good meal with all the work people. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to say, Well, I'm, you know, and she went, okay, bye, bye. And I go, that car, yeah, yeah, I bet he cooked it like a brick. <laughs> yeah. I bet he yeah. threw it away. Anyway, <laughs> gin and tonic. <laughs> yeah. And I had uh, scotch pancakes for breakfast. That is all I've had. So I'm starving, I'm shaky. Plus, I've got that restless leg syndrome still going on, <laughs> which I can't get rid of. What's restless leg syndrome? I find, uh, if I go to bed, right, my body's tired, but my legs aren't. <laughs> 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 Are you like Michael Flatley? <laughs> you have to get up and do a bit of tap dancing. Do they, do they just keep going even just when keep, you're asleep? Keep moving about, so I have to get up and stretch them or something. Or I've worked out that if if I put a pillar on like the bedpost down at the other end, yeah. if I have my legs higher than my heart, it calms it down a bit. Is this why Suzanne works away so often? <laughs> I don't. I don't. It's weird. <laughs> to get a decent night's sleep. I put it down to Smarties and that. It's like a sugar thing. 
But, yeah. um. Stop eating them. Apparently Bob Morton has got it as well. No, he's got arthritis. Was he? You told yeah. me the week that you mastered uh, moonwalking. Yeah. Yeah, I can do that. Is that I'll one of the things you did, like, in the middle it, of the it night? Can, it's, it's, it's still moon sleepwalking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he just did, gets out, he finds himself walking backwards and yeah. wakes up and goes, oh god, I'm brilliant. <laughs> I'm brilliant at this. Right, so, so, listen, what we're doing now, are we doing, uh, are we getting a debate going about... Actually, right? Go on. We're struggling, go on. No, no. You can help me out here, Carl, you've got an idea. I can see it in your eyes, he's got a brilliant idea. Wait for it, go on. No, no. It's something, when I was looking on the web, found yeah. something out. Go on. Um, it's a story about yeah. a woman who had a baby, <laughs> who had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what? A, a, a woman yeah. who had a baby who was having a baby. <laughs> <laughs> it was no, it was no clearer what? when you repeated it. No! Go! I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do for the common good, right? Pursue this line of inquiry, right? Because I don't know where it's going. Or play a record. I, I'm actually torn. I don't know what to do. No, I remember seeing it and thinking I've got to tell Ricky about that. It's brilliant. What? Uh, should we, what should we do? Should we, should we go with it? It's, uh, I mean, it's like, it's entering into the abyss. It's opening Pandora's box. <laughs> it's, it's peaking by, it's going down to the cellar. I've got a couple of questions, though. Go on, then. Well, come down there with me. Okay, <laughs> come down right, in the cellar with me. Okay, right, Carl. What, what, what? First of all, it was on the way. What, what, what do you mean? The, the baby was what? Had another? But was it? She didn't give birth. They didn't. The doctor didn't find that one of those set of Chinese dolls up her. Russian Russian dolls, whatever that's, they're called. That's, that's what I pictured it like. Those those dolls where you take the head off and there's another one in there that all look the same. But no, the story was <laughs> there's a woman. Who's no, don't just say it again. That's a headline. That's not a story. There was a woman who had a baby who had a baby. <laughs> yeah. That's not a story. That, um, imagine handing that in as a, th as a thesis to loads of the BMA. Hey, are that? There you go. And, uh, yeah. Read that. That's a, said, that's a children's rhyme. Yeah. There was a woman who had a baby who had a baby. What do you mean? So the ba she had a baby, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, that bit's fine. We're yeah, okay with that. That's normal. That's normal. A, a totally woman had a child. Yeah, totally normal. She gave birth. Fine. Yeah. Next. Well, I, I, I don't know that much more, apart from the fact that the baby's, like, roaming about, <laughs> and then, uh, twelve, like, twelve months later, she's like, oh. Interesting. So the gestation period of the, that baby was actually three months more than an adult. Yeah. Excellent. It's weird, though, isn't it? So was the headline, my baby's twelve months pregnant? <laughs> what are you talking about, twelve months later, it had a, what are you talking about? Forget it. it. No, you haven't, you haven't even finished the story. That you said, and twelve months later, you didn't even finish the sentence. So what do you mean? No, I didn't. I didn't read any more into it because I just saw you that didn't and I thought, read it. What? That's, "That's weird." And then I just was thinking, "Oh, like imagine the kid at school at parents' evening." <laughs> <laughs> Go on. And it's like, well, your kid's pretty good. Now, now let's have a look at your work, sort of thing. <laughs> Don't you think that'd be weird? <laughs> but what? Did the child have a baby? Yeah. Of course it didn't! Play record! We shouldn't have gone down in the cellar. <laughs> we should have I just can't. left the cellar door closed. I, I never learned. That's the zombies and a song called Time of the Season. I've enjoyed that. What do you think of zombies, Carl? It's alright, yeah. No, not the, not the group, but the, oh, the, the living dead. Don't worry about them. No? Why? Not about, are they? It doesn't happen. <laughs> you don't right, believe listen, in that? Listen, right? You don't believe in zombies? So, I but was But you do believe online. a baby had a baby? Yeah. On you go, on you go. Are you still saying that didn't happen? Yes. Right, well I'll find the thing again and I'll print it off and well, then you'll read I'm it. Well, all I'm saying is there's more information that we need. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it always annoys me that when I do get the information you'll go, yeah, but it's name Sally, you didn't say that, and make out- No. Uh, as if- No, 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 no don't, don't, make, don't do. make it look like w we're over inquisitive or over cynical. You come out with the- the most abominable things man has ever uttered, <laughs> and you expect us to accept them. Usually headlines, usually uh, illogical, not just probably wrong. So, fleas are born pregnant. <laughs> are they? Interesting. Yeah. Right. Okay. See? On we go. So See, that's true, and you're not impressed, because it doesn't involve a little werewolf child, or half man, half shark. You, you just not, it's not good enough for you. No, but what I, what I, if I read the first line of something and it's not, not that interesting, I go, next, right, and I move <laughs> on. Now, when I saw a woman had a baby and it had a baby, but I But you go, still Ooh. didn't read on. No, but 
I, all right, I didn't read on, but it got me thinking. Like I said, it's, you, you wonder about the parents' evening. I was thinking about, <laughs> you know, is it a good thing? <laughs> because you're gonna spend more time with the kid. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of mums who have to go to work and that. She's gonna be a great mum. Grew up with her, literally. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so She's I, gonna I'm be a great mum! I, I just wonder if, I know it sounds weird, but if was it's- it, Was it, was it the, 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 you know the baby that woman had? Was that a girl or a boy? No, it would've been a girl, wouldn't it? Of course it, it would. It'd be mental, wouldn't it, if it wasn't? Right. It'd've been a weird story, wouldn't it? So anyway, that reminded me because we were talking about other amazing stuff that Ricky told me to find out about. Steve, are you aware of bonobos? We mentioned them earlier, I'm not particularly familiar with bonobos. Right. It sounds like a cream cake. No, they were, they were, um, a, a, a sort of a, a chimpanzee, but more advanced than the, the, the traditional chimpanzee. They, they live, uh, uh, in one sort of particular area. And, um, you know, it's the sort of closest animal to the missing link. They're very intelligent. They take on a lot of social aspects of, um, human. They have sex for, um, pleasure mm -hmm. and no other. Steve's looking uh, annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> He's done, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, what did you find no, out about Apparently, him? I found out it's 98% not human, this kind of thing. It's nearly human, but it's not. We share 98% of DNA yeah, with it. Yeah, 98%. Yep. <laughs> it's a higher percentage um, than you. <laughs> <laughs> they have sex for pleasure. <laughs> they do look a bit like him, though. They've got a little round head, haven't they? But, and they um, sort of, they're much more upright than the, you know, they've got a more well, flexible. I, I sort of get bored with animals that are, like, classed as being intelligent, right? So when you told me- <laughs> <laughs> I get bored of them. Cause yeah. they're not doing enough, they're not exactly. playing no, no. Nintendo. Do you know, do you know like that people always rave on about dolphins, saying, yeah. oh they're really bright and that. Yeah. You know, um, I was having an argument with Suzanne about it and she goes, oh yeah, dolphins are really intelligent. And I said, but what? What have they done? So <laughs> she said, <laughs> well, they, they use them in wars, they strap bombs to the back to go out to boats. Yeah. So then blow up the boats. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. They're trained, yeah. Well that isn't that bright. If it was really bright, it'd go, I'm not doing that. Well, no, they leave them. They don't blow themselves up. They, and anyway. Hey, 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 Carl. Hey, Carl. It's, you know, Carl, Carl's got a theory that Chinese people don't age well. This man was a, he was a, a, a Chinaman, <laughs> right? And he was 120 or something. Yeah. Mm. Did you see a picture of him? Yeah, he's, he's still alive. alive. No, he's not. No, he's, no, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's he's dead. Dead. Yeah, died at 120, so. He said 120 or something, but makes you wonder. Go what on. makes you wonder? Well, because they don't age well. <laughs> I think he's using that. <laughs> what he's probably about, what? about so 37. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Honestly, we walk down the street, right, and we see a, 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 an elderly Chinese person, yeah. right, and um, <laughs> can't I go, oh, I just think he is. Yeah. Like, it, it's not. <laughs> I don't understand. This, this notion that Chinese people don't age yeah. well, I don't know what, that... where this is coming oh. from. No, I, I mean, I'm not having a go. No, right. I, don't, I, don't, I never want anyone to think I'm, I'm like having a go at them. But no. they are really good looking and they're healthy in that. <laughs> till they're about. <laughs> I, I, I've never seen one, right? Can, can you? I'm can you? Now. Can you tell me if you've seen a Chinese person no. who's about thirty? Well, it's always it's either twenty <laughs> or fifty. There's no middle ground. <laughs> This is two hours of absolute drivel but from sorry, the brain of Carl Pilkington. Let me just check something. So uh, the guy, the Chinese gentleman who died recently was 130. Mm, your well. theory is, <laughs> so, your theory is that he's maybe in his late 30s, early 40s. Yeah. This is an elaborate conspiracy on his part because obviously whenever they talk about the oldest people in the world, it is always a Chinese person. Yeah. Invariably. They, they do, yeah. I mean, they mm. seem to win that again. every year. Go on. So your theory is that in those small battle the villages oh, in China- Ross McWhorter comes to a little yeah, village- Yeah, they go, the and guys go, on the he way. He goes, ah, well, until recently, the oldest person in the world, uh, how old are you? And they're so embarrassed, because they think they look about unfriendly, they go, uh, 120, they go, really? Go, yeah, can I have his birth certificate now? In fact, I think this Chinese bloke didn't, he, it wasn't verified by the conspiracy theorists because he didn't have his papers. Didn't have his papers, no. So. Is this the same one or a different fella? I think Try it might it be on. the same guy, I'm not sure. <laughs> Try it on. <laughs> <laughs> so there's, an in, there's a huge conspiracy amongst these Chinese villages that every when time- When you get uh, to about 50, say you're 70. Because no one will believe us. Well, if you can confirm or deny that, then uh, then please email in ricky.gervais at xfm. This you, is the racist Joe on XFM 104.9. Call in if you're anything less than a little mank. Outcast, hey ya, on XFM 104.9. With me, Ricky Gervais, you, Stephen Merchant, GQ presenters of the year. Radio personalities of the year. It's official. We're uh, the best radio personalities of the year. I've, I've, um, 
that we got that award sent to us, didn't we? And we yes. did a little thing. But it was only our two names on it. It so had your name, Rick, definitely. I remember that. It had my and name. And your name. Didn't see Carl Pilkington's name anyway. No. Anywhere. And yet he's the one with the day off and the money and he's the, the, the con in the MD and making him cry at home. Let me just mate. remind- Go can on. I just check that Go again? He, so he's made a fool out of the MD. He's made a fool out of the And all the major- all Basically this, all the capital all shit shareholders. About, oh, I'm not sure if I'm coming back or not. I want a, okay, I want a day off then. Which is the same day off as his girlfriend gets off. So he's just like walking around, I don't know, Hyde Park. Yeah. feeding ducks when yeah. he should be working out what can he can do instead of rock busters, which is basically blockbusters <laughs> with a word changed. <laughs> Christ's sake. <laughs> right, little if that's If that's annoyed you, I'll tell what? you what is really weighing me up. Go on. The last week or so, this postal strike. <laughs> I tell you, Rick, I, I have got no sympathy for him. I'd be a scab. I'd be walking through there and I'd be- <laughs> No, and I'd be giving him the finger. I'd go, you can intimidate my family, I don't care. I don't care because the post has got to get through. Because yeah. I'll tell you what, um, it's, it's, it's not the fact that, uh, you know, the unions, they could organise a strike, I'm behind that, fair enough, but not when it's mm. these wildcats. They're just out there, they're just taking days off willy-nilly, they're not, they're, they're well. sealing up the post boxes, it's going crazy. Maybe Carl could deliver a few records well, Monday. Well, I know, so I know could... Carl must be livid, because he's probably his copies of the New Scientist <laughs> and the Literary <laughs> Review haven't turned up, so he's, he's in a terrible way. And, uh, I got important documents that are supposed to be coming to yeah. me, there's nothing, there's no, yeah. there's hiding the hair of it. And I was cooking last night, and I, it got me panicked, because I was thinking about, if this just is going to spread now amongst other organisations and other yeah. groups, and do you know what? <laughs> like it's a partly, cancer. It was partly because I was cooking. Yeah. But do you know, I suddenly become terrified that they might go on strike. Go on. The guys in charge of the potatoes. Oh, Every, I'll tell you I mean, what, anyone involved with potatoes? I had so the, much the mash farmers. last night. I had so much sausage mash. Well, I, I, second helpings that I had to sit on the edge of a seat so my stomach could hang down. It's I love spuds, spuds and bread. I could not do without but spuds I feel, and bread. I feel like maybe I could make my own bread. Spuds. I wouldn't know where to start with a spud. Yeah. And it's like, you, they're amazing, you can boil them, you can broil them. Yeah. I don't know what broiling is, but I. I, it's, I suspect Doesn't, it's tasty. I don't think it's as good as, I mean, obviously the chipped potato is- For is the working classes, favorite. the oh, chip. It was always on, the chip fat fire was always on in my household. The ceiling, the, uh, you know, the, the death trap fire, um, what's it, polystyrene ceiling <laughs> <Yeah>. was yellow. <laughs> exactly. Come yeah. Wednesday in our house. Yeah. And, uh, it, yeah, it always had chips. Because all, I, all I remember hearing, if, if I think back to my childhood, all I remember was, um, got to stop and get some potatoes, or phone your dad, tell him to get some potatoes. Well, that was, that was your job, wasn't it? Carl? Yeah, potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it's, like, I mean, it genuinely, it does concern me because what it's- What did you have to do? Didn't you have to, what, did you have to fill a diary out for your well, teacher? Way, do you know when you're at school, I don't know if, if you do the same thing, but you, you get like a little red book, right? And every night, I think it was a way of the teachers sort of keeping an eye on you. So if you went out robbing, if you wrote it in your diary, they'd go what you're playing at. Sure. Right? So you'd have to write down what you did every night. Yeah. But I didn't get up to that much at that point. Sure. I, I used to just go on my errands. Yeah. And it was my job to like- I haven't had errands for since no, the 70s. Nice just got just on, I went to Uphas, right, the little local supermarket. Yeah. And I got- uh, What's it called? Euthan- Euthanasia? <laughs> what? I did- Uphas. 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 Yeah. Right? H U G H U phase. Oh, Hugh oh, phase his name. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I just had to get. Right, yeah. I just had to get like a bag of potatoes. Of course you did. Yeah. And a loaf. Staple. So yeah. uh, I used to put that in my diary every day, and it got to a point when like even the teachers were like, just just make something up. Yeah. <laughs> Stop, stop putting the same thing in. I sure, I'll start joyriding or something. Live. I'm, I remember wh uh, when Jane was little. She was at school. I think it was about ten or something. That do a project uh, over the week, and they were given a big list, of, like a, a list of a hundred animals mm. that they had to tick when they saw one that week. And the teacher knew she cheated because she ticked beaver. <laughs> so she was trying to win and get as she knew. Unless it was Susie Dibblethwaite's beaver. <laughs> oh, I know the school had slut. One. I don't she know. Did have maybe. One I don't know, but um, yeah. So uh, uh, I'm just. I was say, I just it feels like it feels like the potato people have got me over a barrel. You know, I mean, they could hike the prices up. I still have to buy the potatoes. I got nothing else. I got off that. You know, you got your fancy pastas for the uh, for the upper classes, but for the working classes, it's chips or uh, or mash, isn't it really? Yeah, no, I wouldn't worry. I don't think people who do potatoes are going to go on strike. I don't think so. Because we just go and pick them ourselves, don't we? Or grow them ourselves. Sure, sure. Is, is the, what would be the most pointless strike? What would be the strike that we went so? Do you know what I mean? I'll tell you what, I'll tell you one strike that would, we'd go so. Um, those guys who do sketches in Covent Garden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Yeah, take your picture, uh, or they, 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 they do a caricature of you. The strike, yeah. imagine the strike! You go out and you go, well I want one with a big nose and a big yeah. chin. I want an amusing caricature of me and my sister. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh dear. But I need, I, can't, I need a sketch, I need a pencil drawing of Leonardo DiCaprio. Looking like a monkey. <laughs> I mean, how are we gonna get this? This is unbelievable. Yeah, I'll so tell you. I'll tell you also the strikes that have no effect. What? Those um, people in um, in nightclub toilets, who just you know kind of there. They got the uh, 
the Lynx deodorant sprays. Oh, no, no, quite controversial at the moment with the, the Tweedy case. <laughs> oh, the Cheryl Tweedy case. Do you know what I mean? Sure, I got so, some thoughts on that actually. Like what? Well, well, maybe we play a record. I'll share my thoughts on. Well, thought on um, Tweedster coming up. Um, some Steve Merchant thoughts on the Cheryl uh, Tweedy case. What's happening? One hundred four point nine. Some REM, Rick. Yeah, What's yeah, the yeah, frequency, yeah, Kenneth? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, What's the frequency, Kenneth? I'll tell you, it's one hundred four point nine XFM. I'm Richard Mays with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. Carl the user Pilkington. <laughs> Just takes, takes, takes. Takes, takes, takes. Destroyed a man. Go <laughs> <laughs> to you, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you should talk like that more. It's cool and sexy. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I make it clear now, I do not condone in any way, shape or form what Cheryl Tweedy did. But I have to say, they wind me up. By they, you mean... Toilet attendants. Yes, no. yes, 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 yes. Right, yeah. Not, not, um, uh, pop idol winners. That's what I thought you meant, yeah. Yeah. So, um, go on. But, cos I'll tell you what it is, you go into a club <laughs> or, uh, pubs or big friendly pubs, you go yeah. in there and there's the toilet attendant in there, he's got his little display of, um, you know, aftershaves, sprays, yeah. some sweets maybe, blue straws, whatever it might be. Yeah, maybe, blue, a blue straws, uh, maybe a lollipop. Maybe a lollipop. And, all right, I don't know if they're in, I assume they're not employed by the club. I'm assuming the club's got, they, they got, we've got the DJ, we've got the bar staff, wait a minute, we need a guy do to they, irritate do, the When the manager walks in, do they hide? Well, this is it, I don't know if it's a guy who's just like- <laughs> Is it like busking? Yeah, he snuck in. Like, yeah, okay. He came in when it was free during happy hour, he's got a little bag, a carrier bag, <laughs> yeah. he snuck in the, in the toilet. But the uh, thing is, it's the fact that, uh, toilet attendants, fair enough, I mean, it, I'm happy if a toilet attendant sneaks in under cover of darkness, cleans it for me and then shoots off, but it's when I have to see them there. I, I feel know. guilty because I'm like, I've got a, it's like, I maybe wash my hands, I'll forget he's there, he'll hand me a paper towel, suddenly I've got to tip him, like but a quid it or something. But it annoys me because they're there, I wash my hands at all, I don't usually wash my hands, I, I, wash I, my I, hands. I, I sometimes don't even bother getting my knob out, oh. I do it by stand and change my trousers <laughs> when I get home. <laughs> exactly. So it annoys me, I have to do, go through this charade of getting it out, <laughs> slashing <laughs> out of it, shaking it dry, and then washing my hands. See, just if he did any of those elements, what, I'd tip it him a quid, yeah. Pop it out, pop it out. But yeah. not to hand me a paper towel and get it myself. Um, I thought we could play, uh, Room 101. Room 101, of course, is, uh, taken from, uh, George Orwell's 1984. Mm -hmm. Room of all your fears and terrors. And... So, uh... Is there a copyright issue here? Uh, steal this idea? Well, yeah, uh, well, let's play Room 102. Clever. This is the room next door to Room 101, which is worse, in my opinion. So, Carl, these are things that really annoy you. Uh... Slugs. Was in there? Slugs. So, um, then, then, then there's, uh, you have to put a case forward and me and Steve decide whether slugs go in or whether they, they stay out, whether they've got a purpose. Why? It's, it's just because I'm having a problem with slugs at the moment. There's a lot of slugs coming in the house. Why? I don't know. I just, they can get where, like, water can't, you know what I mean? Because they, they're boneless, aren't they? So well, any little gap. So is water boneless? There's not many bones in water. No, no, that's what I said. Why, why banish them all to room 102, slugs? Because they're harmless, aren't they? All I know is they're clogging up my piping. <laughs> I had to go out and buy a plunger. I hadn't seen them since, like, comics when I was a kid. And I suddenly thought I need one of them things that I always saw in comics. I, I never thought I'd need one of them in my life. I've got slugs in my pipes. <laughs> <laughs> so I went out, three quid it was. I had no idea what the going rate is for a plunger. Gave it a bit of a plunge. Uh, and I think it was slugs, like, all, like, bits of black stuff came up. I think it was slugs in there, like, what, broken up what, slugs. Well, ha hang on, hang on, hang on, it could've just be black gunk, couldn't no, it? No, no, it looked very sluggish. <laughs> Cos, remember, I've had a problem with them anyway, I'll go to the toilet or whatever, look round, there's a slug climbing up the wall out of the shower basin thing. Are you sure it's a slug? Yeah, definitely, definitely slugs, I have to keep chucking them out, cos I don't like killing anything. Right. I, I didn't want to kill the slugs with slug pellets, I bought some copper ribbon. Right, they don't like going over that, they don't do they? Like that. They're they get a little, little bit of charge, yeah. But, now that should be a warning, but instead they're diverting. They've done a diversion, they've gone up the wall and across. <laughs> now it's like, that's a warning. That's like having a no trespassing sign. Yeah. And they're just going, bollocks to that. <laughs> <laughs> and they're getting in, and it's annoying me. And now you get to a point where you do say, well, if they carry on like this, I'll have to kill them because they're not, how, how much, how They're much, not playing by the rules. I don't know what they're doing, I don't know what the purpose is. They just sit there still, I don't see him doing anything. I was lo looking at one close up. Well, what do you want to do? Be reading like. Rusa. What do you want a slug to do? In the same way you see a bee collecting pollen, good, it's doing its little work. But they're dead. Ants carrying big leaves or whatever. But, but the slug's just sat in the They're all the doing kitchen. the same thing, they're all doing the same thing. That slug is out, 
It's eating. That it's is finding not, food. There's no food. There's no food in our kitchen for a slug. Believe me. There's not enough there for me sometimes. But never mind a slug. It's, there's nothing for it. Definitely not in the shower. What's he doing? <laughs> so, I told you ages ago about how the, they cause more problems than good. They eat, they eat cabbage. Right. Um, when they shouldn't be. Um, they get in letterboxes and nick stamps. They don't nick stamps. They eat the stamps. They like the glue on it. Right. But right. Is this a big problem, though? Is there an epidemic of slugs eating stamps? But I think it is, and that's why they're so slow. I think they're sweating glue. They're, right? sweating they're eating all them, and, and, and that's, that's why they're sticking to stuff. Have you ever picked up a slug? Well sticky, they give off this glue. It's like the, all the glue they've eaten off stamps. They panic, and when they sweat, they sweat glue. Sweat! <laughs> Think of a drug! A slug! <laughs> what do you mean they sweat glue? If You're if, making up nature. It makes sense. <laughs> that is this is just a nonsense theory. It's just what I've noticed on them. Right, Rick, do you allow slugs in room 102? Well, I just want, I think we should, you know, you know, if, if they're going to be gone forever, then we should, we should put a case forward. They're amazing creatures. What do they do for the world? Their food. It's not good enough, that. It's not good enough. What do you mean? But that's well, that's the ultimate sacrifice. Surely them being food. Just right? having problems with them at the moment. I spent three quid on a plunger, and I don't like the idea that every time I get up in the night to go into the toilet, wherever I've got to put the light on because I might have a bit of sluggage between my toes. Sluggage, <laughs> a little bit of sluggage between my toes. Right. Okay. Well, so we need to move on. So you are not putting them in. I'm not putting slugs in. All right. Slugs have not gone in, Carl. I'm afraid. What's your next one? Okay. Number two. Um. People who don't want to do what what the brains would be better at doing. Right, okay, no, I'll, I'll get around that sentence. Now, tell me again. Brains that don't want to do what their owners are good at. Ah, so now it's the brain's fault. Can you just expand on that point, please, KP? Do you know, like, pe people decide what they want to do. Right. Don't they? For a living. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they're not good enough. Right. You mean they have a dream and they can't fulfil it because they haven't got the, the, the skill or...? Yeah, but that doesn't mean they're not good for anything. No. no. It's just that they haven't unlocked the thing that they're good at. They want to go well, at of course. It. So, but, I mean, so it's, that's a, there's much bigger issues there that, um, uh, the poor working class people don't get the same opportunities. When, when you're worrying about whether you're going to live through the next few days, you don't start thinking, I wonder if I can play the cello. Can I so, refer you back though, Rick? You've made an interesting point there, but I fear that's not exactly what Carl was saying. I don't on. think that his point was quite uh, that profound. Yeah, that's kind of what I meant. Yeah, I don't know. There was something to do with the brain not allowing its owner. Yeah, because that's the bit that annoys me. Fair enough if a brain hasn't decided what it wants to do, because you right. What is this? Let it, let it oh, finish. God, this thing it about finish. the brain. Shut up. Because it, it. it hasn't found its destiny type thing. A brain but a phone, it's when someone is good at something, and they know the brain was good at something, but then they don't want to do it, and they want to go off and do something else. Now, they say in this country, the problem is we haven't got enough tradesmen. Right. We don't have enough plumbers. Right. There's enough plumbers' brains. I don't know what the fuck that means. Shut up. Let what him are you please, talking shut about? Up. Let him please finish. Because this brains, is like, this is like brains, brains and pillows Brains again. have not changed over the years. The brain is exactly the same. But it's the owner of the brain that's in charge. The brain could be going, I want to go for a walk. But if your body's too lazy to get up and go and see the stuff, the brain isn't going to get what it wants. It doesn't make what? sense, Carl. Right, you are your brain. All right, let's go to the extreme. People with no legs who want to be swimmers. Don't be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God! Oh, God! I'm so annoyed. Oh. Is this a big problem? It's it's madness, isn't it? It's mad that the brain wants to do that so much. The brain's in the wrong in the wrong body almost. Yet, yeah. are you with me? No. A plumber, a plumber, a plumber who can plumb is annoying when he jacks it in as a living because there's other brains who can't do plumbing. They don't, don't get their head round it. Means I don't know what you're putting in room 102 because you're saying these. It's like this brain's wandering around Who's looking for a body, and it goes, "Oh, I'll choose that body." Hang on, this body doesn't even want to do some plumbing. It's, it's a just, matter of taste. It's just a matter of taste. It's, I'm not putting the brain, and it's just people. Um, if I had a really good skill, I'd hope that that I'd use it. Who so it? people who don't fulfil their own potential, is that a better point? Yeah, that's what I meant. Who am I talking to now, Carl or his brain? We're both listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I will put in people who don't fulfil their full potential. Slugs are safe. What's your next thing to try and get in room 102? 
It's a tricky one, this. Go on. It's, it's people who, um, who think that humans are special. Do you know what I mean? But you think that. No, I don't. I don't think humans are special. I but think what, some of us are. Look at it like this. You say, I think, we think we're important because yeah. we just do. Well, I don't, but some do. And they're the ones who want to get rid of. <laughs> Another argument with himself. Now, we think we're special. There might be something else going on that's more important. We're in this universe, aren't we? Yeah. They try to make a new universe. What do you mean? There's a machine somewhere. What? A big bang. They're making a big bang again. Right, well that, you've got that completely wrong, but sure. They're not trying to create a new world. They're trying to recreate the conditions that happened at the beginning of the Big Bang. All right, so they, but the it's world completely came, different. But the world came from the Big Bang. If they're trying to recreate the conditions so they can test and they can experiment to see Dangerous. the conditions before... So that why are they true. doing that? Who's allowed that? <laughs> this is what annoys me, it's because humans think they're special. Oh, who made the Big Bang? Oh, I'd like my name on that. I want to <laughs> claim it. Why do people always want to better someone else? It's happened, let them have it. Okay, right, okay, Carl, you're in charge of the world now. You are this, you're, you're all powerful. You're like a god, okay? You can do anything. You go, you call all the scientists, and they go, what do you want of us? Oh, oh, orange headed one. What the fuck do you want of us? Right? What do you want them to do? Go. What do you say? Uh. Well, I want, I want to come in and... How long have they been working on the Big Bang idea? Forget it, it just, you've got every science... No, but I don't just want to come in and, and poo-poo that, because they're going to... They're, poo-poo. They've, they've done a lot of research well, on Well, hold it. on, you, you wanted to stop a minute ago. Yeah, I know, but you don't just come in, guns are blazing. I'd say, I'd say, hello, You can everyone. do anything you want. Oh, go on, go on, Hello, then. everyone. Hello, Carl, leader. Right, uh, listen. Um, this Big Bang thing you've been doing... Yeah, well, uh, that's just only a few of us. That's, like, less than a millionth of a percent of us. We're all here. Yeah. yeah. I've dropped AIDS research. I've dropped cancer research. All right, well, why have you dropped that? Oh, well, Who's told you to do that? Well, no, we just, well, we knocked off. They said you wanted to tell us something. We're all here. Every scientist in the world well, is listen, here. What research are you doing? Oh, well, I'm looking at um, uh, what happens if you give Feminax to an owl. What happens? Well, I'm halfway through it. You, I got called away. Look, I'm really busy. What do you want me to work on? Who, Who said, said they're doing, doing cancer? cancer? Hey. Go back. Go back, go back to work. Cheers. Right. <laughs> okay. The rest of us I've doing got... stuff that you think we're fanning around with. What do you want us Listen, to do? Well, I can't do it all what today. What about me? I was doing AIDS. Hang on a minute. I was doing AIDS. You just wait a minute. Right. Okay. Why does cancer get to go back? Are you saying that cancer's a bigger problem than AIDS? You I'm go back to work. So I'm AIDS go back. I'm doing. Oh, I'm doing restless legs. Right. Can everybody but the Big Bang people leave? <laughs> This is uh, Carl uh, in in the classic The Shining. And what's the question? Well, we might ask that afterwards. Okay then. Still, uh, still trying to write the uh, the book then. No. Yes. Good. Funny, someone uh, told me the other day. Weird thing about a typewriter. The top row of letters, the longest word you can write, is typewriter. Oh, I'll just show you. Just oh, that's weird, isn't it? It's just the typewriter being you're not you're not in the mood. Are you just gonna you're in one of those grouchy moods again that you get into when you're writing. I'm not being grouchy. I just want to finish my work. Yeah, it's just she's being a bit funny, a bit offhand in that. <coughs> Let me explain something to you. No. Whenever you come in here and interrupt me, you're breaking my concentration. You're distracting me. And it will then take me time to get back to where I was. Understand? Yeah, but I, I just was coming in to try and cheer you up. You know, if you... I mean, I, I'm full of ideas as well. You know, if you're having a problem coming up with stuff, I've got loads of stuff, loads of ideas you could write about. The other day I read about this airy Chinese kid. What do you want me to do about it? No, it's just that it, it could make a, a good book. Do you know what I mean? Sort of following round. Uh, I'd swell. Well, I, I'd buy it. You know. But if you don't want to know, won't have to... Don't bother doing it. But, do you know what I mean? It just 
airy Chinese kid. It's, it's weird because they're not normally that airy over there. Yeah, this kid caked in it. But if you don't care... I wouldn't touch one hair on his goddamn little head. You don't have to touch any hair on his head. Like I say, he's covered. Leave the head alone if you want. Touch his hands. He's, he's totally covered in it, but... It, it, I love the little son of a bitch. Oh, well, don't go that far. You haven't met him, but I can sort it <laughs> I'd out. I'd do anything for him. I don't think you'd expect that much. Just take him to the barbers three or four times a week. You know, he's a good, good little kid. In fact, I'll do it. I think I'll write a book on him. Yeah? How do you think you can handle that? Yeah. You're not too busy, are you? Well, I, yeah, I'm pretty busy. I've got to sort out some, uh, some monkey facts for the show this Saturday, but I, I reckon I can still... Why don't you start right now and get out of here? All right. I will. If you're going to be like that. Couldn't borrow a pen, could I? See you later. There you go. Hunting. Haunting stuff there. Carl Pilkerton in The Shining. You know in the film Jack Nicholson goes crazy because the suggestion is he's maybe possessed by demons that maybe uh, are in the in the hotel. But you know if I was stranded in a desolate hotel removed from all human contact with Carl, I'd go mental with an axe <laughs> without being possessed by demons. <laughs> That's more <laughs> chilling to me, trying to get some work done and you keep wandering in. I'm trying to get Carl to spend a couple of days in the caravan with me. <laughs> just for the head of it. And he, he was, he won't. I've offered him money, won't I? I, I think it'd be a great laugh, wouldn't it, Carl? Oh yeah, great. That would be terrifying. No, I want to film it. I just want to film you. it. Like a little video diary. There's Carl there, he's just waking up. Well, just if I was trying to do that, that would be like being- I may as well be with Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees. <laughs> that's- that's more scary. The thing the is, two of you. Ricky doesn't mess you about as much as he messes me about. No, you see, you've given him an inch. You've given him an inch and he's taken a yard. 12.30 you got in today. In the 30 minutes between 12.30 and 1, the old bin lid on the head, if you wanted <laughs> to do that again. Yep. Uh, <laughs> squeezing my head, think he had a go at, and a karate chop on the back of the neck. Yeah. All in 30 minutes. Yeah. Who else can say that? <laughs> Who else can say that? Who else can say that? What do you mean? Uh, uh, anyway, have we got a question then? Yeah, to win a copy of, I'm so embarrassed to say it, The Shining <laughs> on, VHS. on VHS is worth five ninety nine, <laughs> and it will have already been watched by Carl Pimpton, probably not even rewound. Yeah, to not win rewound that. And a, a little bit of tripe and cow eels where <laughs> it just yeah. slipped into his dinner. <laughs> <laughs> a farm cake yeah. outside. As he was reading the back of the box trying to figure out what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> the ingredients. Um, <laughs> to what about this, right? To whip. Got oh, <laughs> here's a question. I've got a question. <laughs> no, go on. No, what, no, I want to hear Carl's first. Okay. No, it's about <coughs> the film. Um, because when I was whizzing through it, I saw something and thought, oh, that's good. Um, the kid who's in it, um, he was writing something on the back of a door with lipstick. <laughs> what was it? Well, that's a tricky question. I can't remember. Nor can I. Right. So the kid in it was writing Is something on the back of the door. Is that going to be too hard for anyone? Let's see if- I mean I wouldn't be surprised if there's somebody- Right. Th the phones are going so it might be- Yeah but this is email, isn't it? Alright, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Oh. What was being scrawled on the back of a door by the little kid in The Shining? To be honest, if you know that it means you've probably already got it and you've watched it about eight times. Yeah. Fair enough though. Alright. Uh, Bob Dylan. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna make me lonesome when you go on XFM. Sorry, they're arguing. Steve and Carl but are arguing. But he just goes, you've got to keep about, it slick. You know, can I just tell him what you're arguing about? The, think of this, right? This is the argument. They're arguing whose fault it is why this show is rubbish. Think of that! What? What? That's a perfect- that, I think that's a valid criticism. At least we're discussing it. You're just accepting that that's the case. <laughs> you're not even trying to change it. <laughs> we're- uh, we're ashamed of it. <laughs> yeah. We have to I go should there. be, I should be, but, uh, I, I quite like it. In fact, I remember- remember when we went out about two weeks ago and <laughs> said so we've, we've got to, you know, make it tighter and that, make it good. <laughs> um, went out for something to eat. You- you were happy sat at the table talking about squids and having to, you know, <laughs> go off with one if you wanted to have a kid. I brought up the topic, right, what we're gonna do about the show, suddenly you've gotta go. It's like, ah, oh, I think I've- I've made plans. So me and Steve sat there- Can I just stuff. do- no, the <laughs> <laughs> See, I do the- I, I- I do- I do acknowledge, um, uh, quite- quite shamefully that this is more 
enjoyable for me to do than for you to listen to. But it's like, it's like two hours sort of playtime for me. It's like, um, you know, the study period when you're meant to read a book, but you actually can't afford to run around and draw pictures. I think like this, even though I'm getting paid for this and I'm meant to be working, it's nice. It's cool, isn't it? <laughs> not, not for the listener. But, but for the, me. But the problem is, the only way we can improve this show, Carl, to be honest, the only way we can make this good is if the three of us resign. Yeah. And they <laughs> replace it with someone else. Yeah, but Carl, you, you're getting flustered and you're getting stressed because you're, tr you know, I don't know what I was saying. Answer the phone. You were letting them ring. You're still letting it ring. You're still letting people phone. You go, oh, look, leave that. And uh, people have phoned in, good enough to phone in to ask for something for free. <laughs> I think you should at least answer the phone and say, it's not worth it. The prizes are rubbish. Well, whilst I'm doing all the other stuff, maybe you can do that. No way. Right then. No but to be way. fair, Rick, I'm not, I'm not accusing you of being lazy. No. But you're sat on a chair and yet you're almost vertical. <laughs> I don't know how you've done it. It's like you're almost asleep, <laughs> but you're sat on an upright chair. I don't know how you've actually angled yourself I'm gonna way. have a bad back when I'm, oh, in old age. I'm just gonna be bent double. Alright, so come on I now. What? Pretend we're starting now. Okay. We've just started the show yeah, now. Yeah, it's two o'clock. It's right. XFM. Um, it's the Ricky Gervais show with Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington, or our show. It's our show. From now on, I'm, I'm, I'm at least <laughs> cutting up the blame as well. Um, XFM 104.9, what do you want to know? Funny thing happened to me on the, on the way here. <laughs> okay. Um, actually it was, uh, about Wednesday or Thursday, I was walking along, I was walking along the Charing Cross Road, I was on my way here actually to meet Carl for a drink, and um, this little fella came up to me, I think it was, uh, an overseas student, he's sort of like a student type but he had an accent, and uh, he came up to me and went, excuse me, are you the uh, one from the office? And I went, um, yeah, yeah, he went, um, would you sign a script book of the office for me? I went, uh, yep, yeah, by all means, yeah. He went, can you come to the bookshop? <laughs> <laughs> and I went, what, what, you haven't got it on you? He went, no, but if you come, I will buy one for you to sign. And I went, I can't really. He went, <laughs> were you gonna pass one? I went, I'm not, no, I'm, I can't. He went, and he went, as he went, Oh, I was just, I was just in Waterstones earlier and I didn't, I didn't, oh, I went, oh, sorry, he went, you could just, I went, I can't, he went, okay. I went, I'll, I'll sign something else, have you got something else I can sign? He went, of course. <laughs> and I signed a pamphlet or a brochure or something for him. But I love the idea, imagine me going with him, I'm queuing up, and I'm in the queue, he's going, uh, you can't, going, yeah, fine, can you just hurry up? And he gets there and there's, Switch doesn't work and he goes, can you lend me ten pounds? <laughs> yeah. I mean, imagine that. I'm a little bit annoyed you didn't go with him, frankly, because that would have been a sale of our book and I get a little cut from that. Well, behind him was Salman Rushdie. <laughs> going, right. can, can we hurry up? Because yeah. I've read, I shouldn't be out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm getting a lot of funny looks. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I really, you know, I don't, I don't feel comfortable. But it, I thought it was very odd the other day. We were walking along, and Ricky often gets bothered for an autograph. And um, some Japanese people who I think were tourists, kind oh, of, this they, was they, funny. they appeared from behind the corner. And I thought this is odd. That, you know, they seemed like tourists, but they're obviously going to ask for an autograph. <laughs> and they just handed him a camera and said, "Excuse me, would you take a photo of us?" I was, I and they was didn't cracking up. Him. They didn't recognise him. I was laughing. I was thinking, right. Oh, so okay. now Ricky stood in the street. People are recognising him as he's taking a photo of three <laughs> complete Japanese, Japanese strangers. <laughs> and I imagine them getting home and so it's saying, and here's the one we had taken by Ricky Gervais. Taken with Ricky Gervais? No, taken by Ricky Gervais. From the office. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that brilliant? Uh, would you come to uh, the bookshop with me? The life of a minor celebrity. Not really. Talk then, someone should talk. It's obviously uh, already, already a shambles. Can you believe that? I, I, I'm amazed that we're back on the air and it's already a shambles. What are you doing? What? What are you talking about? I'm talking, the, no one was speaking, the record was ending, the, no one was speaking, it was just Kate. Well, I might shoot off. <laughs> Already, I might shoot off. It's Bit like we, nothing's changed. Boys are back in town on XFM 104.9. We're back then, aren't we, Carl? Mm. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Stephen Merchant and Carl Pilkington. I'm not coming back, I'm definitely not coming back. Oh, 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 care, care someone, care that I'm not coming back. Rick, I seem to remember the end of, yeah, the end of the last time we were on, what yeah. was that, three months ago? Yeah, three months Carl ago. Carl said he's never gonna do the show again, yeah. there was nothing that was gonna bring him back, yeah. he didn't enjoy it, wasn't gonna do it. All the rules, right? Really? Yes, um, I've, I've known him coming back for so about two months, you know, cause he's got our agent now, representing him. Oh, <laughs> I, I thought he was a fool, really. Why? Well, what, what's yeah. he done for me? 
What's well, he done for us? No, I know, but I mean, he's, he's your agent, so, uh, and he's sort of calling Graham. And it was all a con, so Carl could get Mondays off. Poor Graham, the station's struggling enough as it is. Yeah. It's like running around like a headless chicken. Yeah. No one's listening, no one's listening. That's why I don't bother talking with a record then, because it, there's, no, it's, there's no loss sure. to London. <laughs> sure. Right? It's, it's, it's pointless, this show. We don't do it for the money, we don't do it for the kudos. I don't know why we do it. No. Is there anything on telly at this time? I could have had a lie in. I know. But, um, it's all a ruse to get Mondays off. He's got Mondays off now, because he has to do the show, two hours, two right, hours. and he's still getting paid. And it's all a con, because he knows that he's holding him over a barrel, and he's- it, it's like, oh, we've got to keep Carl happy. Mm. Right? I, I had- I had Mondays and Tuesdays off before Duncan got involved. <laughs> 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 no, do you know what I mean, though? And it's like, poor Graham, who's the MD, the, uh, in charge of the thing, probably pulling his hair out, worrying about the station, right? You know, it's a sinking ship. And then Carl comes and well, I, I, you know, I'll do it, but I want Mandas off. And they, uh, he's probably sitting home now. His family, he's probably ridiculed by yeah. his Well, wife. his kids almost certainly would have lost all respect for him. He's, he's been fooled mates. by Carl Pilkington. He calls his mates and goes, oh, I'm, I'm busy, Graham. I don't, yeah. you know, I just can't think. Uh, it's just- It's, it's embarrassing. Just, but it's- do you know what I mean? And you think it's funny, and you think you've got one over him, he's going, oh, Mondays off for two enough. hours. Yeah, you do, yeah, you do, you think like, And now you're not embarrassed, we've said it on air. But uh -huh. you're only- you're only- you're only conning yourself in the long run. Because, do you know what I mean? It, it, it's- I hate that sort of, the world owes me a living, how much can I get- what can I get out of the world? What are you gonna give back to the world, Carl? What are you doing now then? Are you gonna prepare Mondays? No, I told you what I have you prepared for this show now? You've had three months to prepare. Yeah. What have you- what have you got? What have you got for us? Okay, what's happened in the last three months? Uh, what? In this place or just my life? Well, what have you got for us? We three months, we're cloning about, you get Mondays off, you're getting paid for it, you've got a cushy deal, you're having a laugh, you're taking the piss out of the management, right? So, what have you got for us? Give it to us. We've- we- I've kind of, uh, updated Rockbusters a bit. <laughs> right? Brilliant. Yeah. Right? So, and uh, you said don't mess with it, if something's good, don't mess with it. What do you mean it wasn't good? <laughs> it was never good! It was never good, no, of course we had good. to fix it. It was fun to do, it was a laugh. I mean, much m I imagine it was much more fun for me than the 450 <laughs> listeners. <laughs> I like, you know what I mean? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed squeezing your head and dressing you up. No, but that's just it. When I had a meeting with, with Graham, right, I said, look, I'm not being funny. I don't want to do it anymore. Yeah. I've had enough of it. Yeah. And he was like, oh, what's up with you? you? You sounds like you have a right good laugh. I said, yeah, but that's, that's, you know, that's all good acting and stuff. I said, it's hell in there. <laughs> Um, I said, like I, he's talking about Vietnam. Yeah. I <laughs> said, <laughs> having, having my head squoes, right? <laughs> what? Squoes? Squoes is still not a word. We've been away three months, it's still not a word. Right? Yeah. I said, he's putting a dustbin lid on my head. Yeah. <laughs> you told this to the end, he's, he's hitting me with a tray. Yeah. Uh, he's chucking toilet paper at me. Yeah. And he said, yeah, but that's all over two years. I said, no, that was the same day. <laughs> <laughs> So. Okay then, what has changed in three months? Exc they're listening, they've been listening for six minutes now, come on, give us something. Bit of Nickelback. What's, <laughs> no, what's happened in three you days? Play a record well, what, what, three what, months? What, in my life or yeah. in here, nothing's yeah. happened there, nothing's changed there. Right. But, I don't know, what, well, uh, do you know, do you know last time we were on? Yeah. Right? And, uh, I was telling you about the woman over the road, where well, I live. The one that walked around naked? There's a woman who walks about the flat oh, naked, This right? is when, uh, Carl was watching a woman naked, then she looked at- so, saw him looking, so what he did, this is the genius he did to get out of this, he pulled his pants down so he was naked too. <laughs> his girlfriend comes in and goes, Carl, what are you doing? He went, I can't tell you now, but don't look out the window. <laughs> yeah, go on, sorry. That woman, she's, uh, she's bought some blinds. <laughs> Nickelback, someday on XFM 104.9. How old's the bloke from Nickelback? He looks know. about 40. He reminds me of, um, uh, you know when a kid's made up a fate to look like a lion? <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, like, the Wizard of Oz lion. Yeah. But, you know, good tune. Not I've got to be controversial, I think rock rules the world again, Steve. Well, I would hope so, mate. I Do you know so. what I mean? Are we gonna hear some rock later in the show? We're gonna hear lots of rock. Excellent. In fact, I might even play a little bit of Rainbow. Blimey. Just to, you know, we've got the darkness, but sure. I want to remind them where it all came from. Yeah. You've heard the Liz. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna hear the bow. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that. Um, no, just high five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Carl. Yeah, keep it real. Here we are then. Oh, incidentally, before we uh, carry on. on, I just thought, um, it's weird. I was reading some of the fan emails and stuff we've got, and one of the things a lot of people like, it actually it divides the listeners, is your laugh. 
It's interesting. Some people love it. They find it infectious. They yeah. find it adorable. I mean, close up in a small space like a kitchen Terrifying. or something. It's annoying. Like Horrific. Carl was annoyed because I squeaked in his ear earlier, didn't I? Sure. Why did I laugh? He was on the toilet. I think I squeezed his head again, didn't I? And he said, "No, it's not one o'clock." He doesn't yet. like the squeezing. The squeezing head. But, yeah. Um, but He's it's the squeezing one. The funny thing is, right? We we're out a few weeks ago with with a mate of mine, mm. right? And uh, he went to sque squeeze me head, mm -hmm. right? Give, give it a squeeze. Sure. And, uh, I was like, don't do that, you know, you know I don't like it, right? And Ricky said to me, mate, yeah, he doesn't like having his head swells. As if it's like Marmite. As if, <laughs> as if some people love it. Yeah, yeah. And some people hate it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, anyway, yeah. there's, but there's, the, there was a little taster of the laugh. That was more <laughs> the kind of deep throaty laugh, the belly yeah. laugh, but there's that kind of high peach squeak that you do Well, I've got to get air out quickly. Exactly. Because I'm going to burst. Sometimes I laugh so much that my liver and all my life, they try and get out to it. So I have to get out really fast, like a, like a siren. Right. Do you know what I mean? Is that, <laughs> is that how you explain the fact that you're, you're quite fat? Though? Yeah, it's That's actually, laugh. that's just laughing, waiting <laughs> to come out. Every yeah. time you laugh, you, you become a svelte young thing, like <laughs> yeah. Brett Anderson. Oh, dear. Well, anyway, it reminded me of the, uh, the game that you, you and I used to play in our very early days of XFM, when it was literally... Make Ricky Gervais laugh. Make Ricky Gervais laugh, which Love was a it. great game, I think. I remember the first one. It was that fella drinking a pint of beer. Yeah. I remember yeah. the very first time, it yeah. never, I tell you what, it's you not great- You know what great. though, Ant and Deck do it now. They really? do- they actually- it's very similar to Make Ricky Laugh, it's called Make Ant Laugh. <laughs> Interesting. So- So many of our great ideas have been, uh, have been stolen. Yeah. Or stoled. Stoled, yeah. And anyway, I just- I was looking through the paper in the week and there was Go a picture on. which, um, <laughs> Which I think might- it might be a Ricky Gervais- <laughs> make Ricky Gervais laugh, I don't know. And again, obviously it doesn't really work for the listeners at home, but I'll try right. and do my best to describe it. Can it's we stop saying my name, cos it's like a Dave Gorman project? Can we just stop- let's- I- it's getting- it- you know, say a word often enough, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Let's stop saying Ricky Gervais. Well, what we're gonna refer to you as. <laughs> Alright, well, Make Fatty Laugh <laughs> is, um, <laughs> is a new- <laughs> A new game. I'm trying to get one of those squeaks of a laugh. I'm okay. concerned because well, I know. I, I, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not a monkey. I'm not <laughs> sure, a performing, you're not a performing monkey. Well, no. Okay. I know that. Right. But anyway, let me um. just briefly summarise the story <laughs> okay. for those at home. Okay. The uh, the headline was Mum 48, <laughs> a mother of 48 seduced boy of 14. <laughs> well, that's not funny. Not her own boy, obviously, but uh, uh, no, a still... neighbourhood child. Um, I don't think it's a funny it said, story so far. He said, Grand Lana Allen, 48, led him upstairs and undressed to her waist. Then took his trousers off. <laughs> okay, bear that in mind. This, <laughs> this is a is quote. This is a quote from him. Right. right. Bear in mind, he's a fourteen-year-old boy. He's quite excited about this. He yeah. says, "Then we had sex. It was every boy's fantasy." <laughs> All right. You're going to show me the picture of her now. Aren't so you? it's a picture of her. Oh, this is not. Bear right. in mind. This is. Okay. In his own words, Rick. Right. In his own <laughs> words, this was every boy's <laughs> fantasy. Okay. Okay. Here's the picture. It's a silent laugh. He's collapsed on the floor. I wasn't floor. expecting that! <laughs> I wasn't expecting- I was thinking it looked like a fat man! I was not expecting that! Oh my god! Oh god! She looks like the drummer of Iron Maiden! That's <laughs> she looks a bit like Lemmy! <laughs> But, I tell you she looks like, she <laughs> make, reminds me of most. Did you see I those- I think they've got one with a fag on as well. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> just the, uh, the, that's it with them out uh, of makeup though. Carl, have you seen yeah. every boy's fantasy? You should see, you should see- <laughs> 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 Oh Hello. god! Oh. Have a look, Carl. Oh. Oh. oh god. How old is she? <laughs> 48. Oh. Oh god. Oh, 48. <laughs> That's lovely. Nothing wrong, no, nothing wrong with that. I'd say if you don't know what- if you didn't see- we weren't lucky enough <sighs> to see the picture, she looks <sighs> just like the, um, oldest man in the world. His photo was on, uh, in newspapers and on the oh. web for a while. He was about 135 yes, or something. No, it's come to our attention that the Allied forces, um, all around the world, in active service, fighting for their country, even though they're in danger, and they're missing their loved ones, they all have one thing in common. The love of one man, the respect of one fellow soldier. He's a civilian, but he's one of them. He is, to some, a, 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 just a, a little bald-headed fool. Carl Pilkington. Carl, what do you think? What do you think of this? It's an honour, isn't it, to do this? Yeah, it's all right, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, there's people out there, Carl. They're fighting in Afghanistan. Iraq, all over the globe. They're in a dark building. They're not breaking radio silence. Morale, often low. There's one man they can turn to to cheer him up. 
Come on, they want some words of encouragement, some words of wisdom. Something to keep them going. A message to the troops. Come on. Go, Carl. What you're is like, it? You're like their Winston Churchill. I don't know what to say to him, really. Do you know any soldiers? Well, yeah, my brother was one, wasn't he? Yeah, mm, but he got kicked out. Why did your brother get kicked out of the army? Um. well, there's a few things. I, I think you get a few chances. I think the final straw was nipping out for some fags in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> Just think of that! Just think of that! Uh, Amazing. And it's Just see that, just a little corner shop, just like the things shaking, dumping off the shelves, and they're going, what is this? What is going on? 20 waffles, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's loads of things. It was that. Um, what else did he do? I think the sergeant wasn't happy that my mum wrote, wrote the sergeant a letter um, trying to get my brother out of going to Northern Ireland. What yeah. did she say? I love this. What did she say? Wow. She wrote a letter. Like, oh. trying to get him out of PE. <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. It was all Let's like... He's had a chesty cough. Let's not forget, your, your mum is a person who put Tipex on a spider so your dad couldn't kill it, so she knew it oh, was yeah, the right so spider. In up. case your dad killed a real spider, then thought, I'd better replace it. <laughs> I mean, it's no, so it wasn't, it wasn't just that. That was, that, that. it was Tipex, so that when my dad was vacking up, or my mum was vacking up, it stood out. It wasn't like it wasn't like branding a sheep, right? It was there, so it stood out because they used to have like um, what's the name? L laminate flooring, right? And my dad changed it to darker carpet, so right. all of a sudden you couldn't see it anymore. I've never heard anything like this. I don't remember this story. You, uh, no, she she no. had a pet spider. What do you mean? It was she just had, a yeah, spider. spider. Yeah, he kept a, she kept a spider. They had a spider, but then it became a pet because it was there all the time, as opposed to just getting rid of it straight away. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, because you didn't clear it away no, straight away, suddenly it's a pet, it's, it's... Yeah, it's a house spider, because they live in houses. You make them welcome, you get rid of other little bugs and termites and stuff. My brother's left home, I've left home, my sister's gone. It's something for my mum, isn't it? She's got a budgie. There's only so much you can do with that. It's not as free, is it, as a spider? Right. So she just looks after that one. They oh, lived for about so eight lonely. years. I'm bored of a budgie. Get yourself a spider. <laughs> anyway, they live in holes. that's a different thing altogether. She just wrote to the sergeant and said, um just sort of, you know, look, I didn't want him to join the army. It was his dad. Uh, he didn't get a job. His dad told him, if you don't get a job, you're gonna join the army. Mm. He ended up joining. He's joined at a bad time. He hasn't had enough practice at this yet. Can you just let <laughs> him Surely off? that's for them. Surely that's for them to decide. <laughs> yeah, no. she's on there going, he can't shoot for Tommy. Yeah. He, oh. he was all right about it. The only thing that really annoyed him is, my mum started off the letter by saying, hello, Chuck. <laughs> <laughs> Not appropriate. <laughs> and, um, and he called back though, he did call her and said, look, you know, I don't appreciate it being called Chuck and stuff, but I got your note, you know, a lot of mothers are in the same boat. Sorry, he actually mentioned don't call me Chuck. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he brought it up, because it's all about respect, isn't it? And Well, she's a civilian. Yeah, but I suppose it's, it's respect still, he's putting his life on the line, someone's saying, you know, alright Chuck. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so he phoned back and he said, presumably, well, I mean, if I was him, I would have, not only would I have sent him to uh, Northern Ireland instantly, yeah. I'd have put him in the most dangerous spot. Yeah. I mean, that's punishment. To get your mum to write a letter? No, 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 no. He didn't ask me mum to do it. She did it off her own back. He was probably horrified, wasn't he? Oh, Oh, wow. that, but imagine that. The sergeant made you go, Attention, got a little letter here. <laughs> Let me read it to you. <laughs> Hello, Chuck. <laughs> Just reads it out. <laughs> and he goes, Pilkington, come here, you horrible little man. Imagine him reading out in front of the troops. I remember sort of looking up to him thinking, oh, that's, he's, he's in the army, I want to do that. He used to come home quite a lot, but he used to do me dad's head in because he'd turn up with like a wagon with like a load of his mates in it, just turning up on sort of, you know, we didn't have any notice. Just turn up and he'd bring them all in. Come on, we'd be drinking my dad's whiskey, it'd kick off, my dad's saying, get out. Mind the spider. And, uh, Don't tread on the spider. <laughs> yeah, he used to just turn up with like half of F troop. <laughs> and they just take over the house. <laughs> really? My dad used to be on night, so he'd hear all this going on, come down and go, what's going on? Get out! He's going, oh, we've come out, get out! So it'd sort of kick off a bit, I'd see him for a few minutes, and then he'd drive off again on the truck. Not Did a the... model soldier, then? Uh, well, what's, what's a model soldier? I don't know. I mean, I, I always thought it was good. When I was younger, and, you know, he joined, I, I was like, oh, I'm gonna do that when I get older. 
And my dad always said, you won't be able to cut it. He said, you can't do it. Oh. And I said, no, I can. I can. Look how good. Because I used to make my bed really neat. All right. So it was mainly housework you were good at. <laughs> yeah. You're probably better off as a mum. No, no, no. I, I, it was like, because it has to be immaculate, doesn't it? They look for no creases and that. And I yeah. was a bit paranoid with my bed. Just with the, with the duvet and that. I used duvet? To... Do they have duvets? Well, don't... I don't know, but just making the bed pride in appearance of, of yeah. the bedroom. Yeah, it's all about discipline. Once, it's all about, once yeah. I made it, no one could sit on it. I used to get all, all stressed out and feel sick if someone came in and sat on my bed after I'd made it. So they don't be coming in. And it was annoying because that's where the CB was. So everyone used to come in to have a go on the CB and sit on my bed. They'd be going, don't sit on my bed. Made it. Right. Why so... do you used to feel sick? It was a bit of a thing. I just OCD, didn't like it. I, a little I, I, bit of, yeah. It's like, I've, I've gone to the trouble of making it. Why have you just come in and sat on it? I wouldn't have made it. Yeah, but, what, but hold on, though. You, you do that in the army, Sergeant Major comes in and goes, Here we go. And he just, he does it for a laugh. He turns over your bed, he pulls out your locker, he gobs on your shoes, right? He goes, Start again, you can. What are you going to do? Going to be sick? Now you're going to go, Yes, Sergeant Major, I'm going to start again. No, I'd say, <laughs> why, why did you do that? I'm missing home as it is. <laughs> I'm stressed out. I'm just trying to make me, me, me surroundings as nice as possible. Teddy's on the floor. You keep coming in right. and messing with it. Can you not do that? Who are you talking to, you little bold can? Maybe my dad's right then. Because he said, he said, that he, I mean, that my dad sort of said the bed making's all right. He said, but you're not that good with laces. <laughs> wow, did you have to tie your laces? Well, I've just, uh, just never been that good. I can tie them, but they never sort of stay tied for a long time. I have never seen him tie his laces. I've realised that. Yeah. He always comes in. Are does Suzanne little, do them for is you? Is he a little mank, one of those little um, mank trainers where they're all tucked in, where you don't see the laces? I tend to just get a good knot on them and then just leave them and kick them off, and then they're tied permanent. So you've got slip-on, laced-up shoes, basically? Yeah. I don't like laces. But they can't be I don't understand enough. why laces are good anyway when you're in the army, especially with boots. You have boots with like about 60 holes in them. If you're in a rush, if you're in bed, you get out of the bed, you make the bed, the sergeant comes in, rips it apart again, and he's going, there's a war, and you're going, stop messing with the bed. And then <laughs> I'm there trying to put my boots on. You've got 60 laces. I don't understand why Velcro hasn't been used. Velcro is ideal for a war situation. You're in bed, woo, siren goes off, you jump out. Why do you want boots with loads of laces? Well, that's a thought for the, uh... <laughs> if again. there's any top brass listening. How would you cope, Carl, in a war situation? Ignore the, 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 the mechanics of being a soldier. I'm talking about the fear. I mean, these men and women are brave beyond compare. Mm. Constantly under duress. I was told they had good pain threshold. By whom? Um, a woman at that face rub place I went to. Right. She, uh Because they ask you when you go in. She said, what's your pain threshold like? I said, I don't know. I don't avoid it. <laughs> she was going, yeah, but, you know, would you say you're very, very good, medium, or bad? I can't imagine you getting hurt much, because... because there's the signals to the brain. You've got, you know, it just is dulled, mm. isn't it, with you, so you don't really... Yeah, but then Suzanne always moans at me when I'm going, oh, God, my wisdom teeth is aching. She's going, oh, shut up. She's going, you haven't got any wisdom teeth, you dopey cat. <laughs> no, she just always goes, I had it, and I didn't make a fuss, but it's one of them things that you can't get through to people pain, isn't it? Yeah. And they don't know what your pain threshold is. So, like I say, I've got brilliant pain threshold. I'm saying my tooth's hurting. She's saying, oh, shut up. But she doesn't know. I wish you'd... I think I've talked about it before about giving someone the pain that you've got. So you go, there, have a feel of that. I'm yeah. in agony here. Eh? Yeah, but you've made it up that you've got a high pain threshold. This isn't. This, no. this is not a scientific No, the woman proven. told me. The woman told me. Well, does she, she know? know? Because I haven't got to it yet. <laughs> when I had the face rub, yeah. she was sticking electric into my head. <laughs> and she was going. <laughs> what sort of place is this? This wasn't a spa. No, it was. It's what Jesus they do now. Christ! What she she I don't know. So she just plugs something into the mains. She plugs something in and rolls Did it. Did she over. have an assistant called Igor? Was it in a castle in Bavaria? She plugged this thing in, rolled it over my head, <laughs> and said, "Is that hurting?" I was going, "No." And she went, "All oh, right." And she said, and then by the end of it, she said, "Look at that. I had that on full." I said, "What is it?" She said, "It's an electric current." That does something. I was going, really? That does something. She's a scientist. <laughs> and, um, yeah. She's a pain yet. She said, she said, no, when you fill out that form, just put you really good at pain threshold. Put you really good at pain. You're going to come again? Well, yeah, 50 quid. <laughs> so do it, but let's try on your testicles next time. <laughs>
<laughs> right, let's have, so let's have more monkey news. What, what have we got? What, no, we've got a t- We've got so answer. much to get into this show. Insults. We don't stupidity. need the insults. I think we've got enough. We don't need the insults. Yeah, there's no more insults. No what more insults. What angers me with Carl is you know he's been planning that. No, I haven't. I, I was th- well, I was thinking about it on the way in because Valentine's Day is coming up and I'm not a big fan of it. <laughs> no. Condoms? You bought your girlfriend a box of condoms for Christmas. I don't think you can have a go at me. <laughs> to no, be fair. No, but I don't just treat her on Valentine's. I'm always. Do you know what I mean? You don't even treat her on Valentine's. <laughs> you don't even treat her at Christmas or on her Hang birthday. On. When do you treat Hang her? Hang on a minute. Wait a cotton picking minute there. Oh, why I order. <laughs> what? Wait a time. minute. What was that? Deputy Dog. I treat your girlfriend better than you, <laughs> and I've only met her twice. <laughs> <laughs> I took her out last night and she enjoyed herself. Where'd yeah. you go? Until she had to write the check. Where'd you go? Where'd to, you go? Uh, to a chippy. A, a really. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Play record. Is to it a chippy? <laughs> no, a really a quality one. Right. Oh God! One, under a fiver for two. Oh, nice lots. wrapping. Not newspaper. Grease proof paper. And bread. And bread. Ash. And sometimes on XFM 104.9, I'm looking to with me, Steve Merchant and Carl Pilkington. Right. We've got so much to get through. <laughs> all right, all right, uh, all right. London's shit, isn't it? Um, sorry, I swear on an on air on air much studio. Never, never swear on an on air studio. Yeah. Um, apologies. Not really swearing, is it? I'll tell you what swearing is. <laughs> oh. oh. Um. So uh, yeah, graduate. You're gonna play that again and give a winner. Give a winner. Well, let's hear it. Uh, so it's Carl Pilkington featuring in <laughs> The Graduate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there we go then. So, uh, are you ready for it? I've, uh, brought some condoms from home that, uh, Suzanne got for Christmas. Benjamin. What? Will you bring me a hanger? A what? A hanger. Tell you what, I've uh, I've got wood. What? Just saying, I've uh, I've got wood. I've got metal ones as well. What, what sort do you want? Either one would be fine. All right. There you go. Are you afraid of me? Uh, no. No, I've, I've seen weirder things than you. Uh, have I ever told you about the, the two lads I went to school with who had big heads? Webbed fingers as well, but not related, and uh, weren't mates, but both had the same thing, which is a bit, a bit weird. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd never found out what was wrong with them. Can I ask you a personal question? As long as it's not about my head being round, because Ricky's always going on about that. He's saying I've got a round head. Well, you can admit uh, that, can't you? No, it's, it's, I'd say it's a normal sort of shape. It's just round. It is, isn't it? Yeah, but what, what, what do you mean? So is yours. Heads should be it's round. It's nothing to be ashamed of. I'm not ashamed. It's just a normal shape. Mm-hmm. And you can talk. Look at your saggy arse. Anyway, get your knickers off. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh, dear. A classic, an Oscar-winning classic. Oh, Carl Pilkington in The Graduate. But what was the question, Steve? The question was, which actor was Carl Pilkington taking the role of? Well, that's easy. Everyone which knows actress that. was he, uh, performing opposite? I know that. And the answer's Ricky? Hoffman. Mm-hmm. And, um, uh, Bancroft. And Bancroft, Dustin Hoffman, and the <laughs> 699 VHS cassette is going to Laura Gomez because she says that she'd be happy with the VHS, not the DVD. So, uh, best of luck to her. I hope she enjoys that. Alright. Yeah? What will we do next week? Uh, I've, oh, got loads of, um, uh, I quite like hearing Carl in a sort of seductive environment. It gives you another insight into it, it gives you another dimension. I know. E.T. it is then. <laughs> Should we have a wrap off maybe next week? Yeah, the three yeah. Of us. <laughs> yeah. Let's try and um, uh, master the art of talking yeah, civilly to each other first before we start making it rhyme. <laughs> oh, Rockbusters, Carl. Yeah. I'm not a champion of Rockbusters, as you know, but I think it's overstayed its welcome. But I'm well, I think with Carl's it. just giving the fans what they want here. Okay. It's yeah. a popular thing, isn't it? Got the, some good prizes. The press well, behind it. <laughs> let me tell you what the prizes are. Uh, it's a dance music compilation, Cream Trance Anthems 2003. I play a lot of trance on well, this I, station. Well, I put that on quite a lot and dance <laughs> exactly. to it myself. 
Uh, there's the uh, original motion picture soundtrack to the forthcoming film adaptation. When you've seen the film, uh, I'm sure that will mean more to you. You like that, don't you? It's a good movie. Yeah, Nicholas Cage I playing himself and a twin brother, and uh, it's written by uh, Spike. Uh, it's directed by Spike Jones. Joined at the uh, what? Uh, no, no, they're not joined mm. at the hip at all, no. or, or at the face. And uh, we've also got the best one-hit wonders album in the world ever. What we got on there? We have got things like uh, the Crazy World of Arthur Brown, brilliant. Um, Nana, Ninety Nine Red Balloons. The Rembrandt. In fact, it kicks off with Nana. Sure. Uh, that's followed up by I'll Be There for You, the theme from Friends by the Rembrandts. Yeah. And of course, Breakfast at Tiffany's by Deep Blue Something. Brilliant. Deep Blue Something. <laughs> is that the worst name ever? <laughs> I think it possibly is. No, Sixpence <laughs> None the Richer. Sixpence None the Richer. That's a pretty good. bad name. Okay, again, we we I know we've got a lot of uh, chill out fans who listen yeah, to yeah, us. So, um, yeah, 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 the best yeah. chill out album ever. Yeah. Bear in mind, of course, all these prizes collated by uh, Carl from I guess People's Drawers. Yeah, looking in the drawer. Looking in the drawer. <laughs> oh dearie me. What is it? The only thing probably worth having is a, um, I mean it's topical, if nothing else, Carl. A seven inch by the White Stripes, Merry Christmas from the White Stripes. That was their, um, exclusive Brilliant. Christmas single, so if yeah, you that's, that's, that's early, isn't it? That's it's it's you get that. It is worth something. A lot of people have got to wait eleven months before that's released. Yeah. Or is it last Christmas is? <laughs> exactly. And I have never heard of this DVD. Go on. I like to think of myself as being fairly familiar with TV and films, but I have never heard of Stephen King's Rose Red. <laughs> Welcome on to DVD. a place evil calls home. And uh, it's on DVD, it's certificate 12, so don't imagine anything too shocking. And it looks uh, appalling. Is Rose Red Mansion truly haunted? To find out, Professor. Duh, 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 some okay, duh, duh, duh. we've got the gist of it. They're it's not very good prizes, too. they're cobbled together, but if you've got nothing better to do, call in if you know the answers to these clues. It's Rockbusters. Let's not right, let them so call in, Rick. Please I'll don't let you these people call in. I'll no, no, some, they're not uh, calling in. It's email only. Carl, don't interrupt me. I'm just. Um, Ricky Gervais at xfm.co.uk. Email only. I can't stress that enough. We just don't want to speak to you people. <laughs> right, go on. Right, so I give some initials out and a cryptic clue and it makes up the answer and that. Well, sometimes it does, yeah. Go there's on. two of them, there's a new aspect which I'll explain about in a minute. Oh, so, God. the first one is, uh, cryptic clue is, well, if he would've been wearing an helmet it would've been alright. <coughs> and the initial there is B, right? So, well, if he would have been wearing an helmet, he would have been all right. B, right? Uh, band or an artist. Second one, uh, why are them Jamaican fellas swinging fish around their head? <laughs> okay. All right, initials. This fills me with. D S. D S. Why are them Jamaican men swinging fish around their head? All right. And the uh, final bit, <laughs> two rockbusters. Uh, it's a new bit. Last week I played you this. <laughs> His face goes along right. with it. That's uh, that's someone beating up a dog. That was smack my bitch up, right? So here's some sound effects and that, and they make up a song. <laughs> <laughs> I could listen to him talk all day. Let's have a listen to the effects. Right, I told you not to play that one, it's rubbish. No one will get that. Well, we'll see. I heard that a couple of weeks ago, so I said it's rubbish, no one will get it. No, it's not the one you think it is. Ah, right. So, um, email in, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and you can win that stuff. I'm a little bit confused. Let me t I, I, I'm here, I've heard what you're saying, we've discussed this in the past, I don't know what's happening. What's that? Is that, is that a clue? That's a cryptic clue, that's, that, um, screaming to a song, is it? It was screaming. Well, don't say it! So it should stand up by itself, don't give them any clue! Hang on a sec, hang on a sec. So this is the name of a song. It's not a band or an artist, yeah, the that's, sound that's, effect. That's so the song. first two are uh, bands or artists, and the, the, the last one <laughs> is the name <laughs> of a song. I said we should abandon this! I said we should just pack it in! What, the show? Yes! <laughs> so, um, Rockbusters then. Yeah. We'll get these out of the way, we running out of time now. I have to say now that so. we've had no answers that have attempted even to guess all three. Right, you see, now, see, that's because you're an idiot. Uh, right, okay, right, do, do the question, do the questions and the answers, and uh, if, 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 if I think that it's either too hard or ungettable because it's stupid, we're binning it. All right. I thought we'd already been. I'm annoyed. But right, come on, do 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 what was the, do do it quickly. Uh, the first one was well, if he would have been wearing an helmet, it would have been all right. Well, right, what's the answer? That was B. What's the answer? Busted. Right, that works. All Busted. Right. That's fair enough. Did anyone get that? I assume no. some people got. No. People have given up, Rick. People aren't even bothering to contribute. Right, what's the next one? They've just ignored it like it never happened. Uh, Busted. Second Busted. one. Um, 
Bastards. Why are them Jamaican men swinging fish around their head? Go on. That was DS. Yeah. Uh, seventies band, Detroit Spinners. <laughs> the Detroit Spinners have become the Detroit Spinners. Yeah. Okay. Um. Brilliant. And then the final bit, I'll play you some effects. Let's hear like this. this. Let's hear this. It's terrifying, Carl. It's <laughs> well, what's happened there? What what was happening? What, no, 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 no. What's it? the answer? That was uh, born slippy. She, the woman was having a baby. The doctor tried to grab it. It fell onto the floor. <laughs> That's in your head, Carl. That's just a load of screams. That's in your head. Oh. <laughs> I, I, I'm. I, I, do you know what? I haven't even got onto born slippy. I'm still on. Did trout spinners. Well, let's put a song. That's it. I, I don't. I, I don't know what to say. Steve, a song for the. A song for the ladies, surely. Did anyone get any of that? And I I just, it's this guilt, and I, sometimes I'll hold it in because I'm nervous. I don't want to go back in what there. What annoys me is like a posh water. I mean, it's a pound of piss. It is a pound of piss. Do you know what I mean? So I, you know, I, or in a like... top hotel or something. Yeah. It's absurd. And I tell you, I tell you what's worse than that. I know that he's doing it because he's got to feed his kids, but it's the fact that I've got to look him in the eye. You know, yeah. it's like he's humanised. You know, if he was only dehumanised, Rick. Yeah. If he, wa if I could see him and I didn't think he was a human being, I wouldn't feel guilty. I if know. he could sort of hide under, <laughs> the, under the the urinal, perhaps, yeah. or if and he just could hide underneath hand the sink, like thing from the Adams. Right? Just he just put, puts out. He you know, just pop a hand out. Doesn't say anything. With just hands in the paper so you don't even see like you know hand go. And then I go. I put a pound in. I take the thing. Put a pound in. Nick a lollipop and run away. <laughs> no <laughs> aggro. Exactly. It's the fact I gotta see them and I feel guilty because you know I'm on the radio. I've got a cushy life. I know. Here's a guy who's just trying to make ends meet. It makes me feel bad. It ruins me evening. Yeah. I'm just pleading for them. Can they not do it anymore? Can they maybe get a <laughs> can they get a job illegal mini cabin or something? <laughs> Please. <laughs> Born again. Star Sailor on XFM 104.9. We're back. It's the 1st of November. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. It's the same old email address if people want to get in touch. Ricky.Gervais at xfm.co.uk. We've had a couple of emails, Rick. Someone, Go actually on. Ian, he's emailed in. He said that because of the blinking post postman, yeah. it's his wife's birthday today. She's had no cards or oh. presents because, uh, presumably because she's got no friends but also because of the the postal strike. But you won't be able to use that excuse for Suzanne's birthday again because she knows that the postal strike won't be on. Around that time. <laughs> All right, Carl. So, but anyway, so would you just say happy birthday to Tracy? Have those condoms run out yet that you got for Christmas? Oh, Carl. I've still got them. Have you? Hmm. Um. <laughs> <laughs> just say happy birthday to Tracy. Make, happy birthday, make Tracy. Happy. And hello to Aidan, who's uh, trying to let us know he's actually listening in Northern Ireland. Oh, God so we're, we're, we've gone international. Sure. Now, there's uh, also a question here. A questionnaire has been sent in by uh, Ruth Chamberlain. At Cord Wainers College. Cord Wainers College? Seems a weird. Cord Wainers? It used to, yeah. It's, it's either used to be a poly or a laundrette. <laughs> I, I think it's, to. yeah. Anyway, it's, uh, it's something that she's doing for, um, she's studying product design for the fashion industry. And anyway, she's got, um, some questionnaire. And we're obviously, we're too busy and important to fill out the questionnaire. But we thought maybe you could answer it, Carl. Look, it's about Carl, look, he's yawning, he's looking round, he's only got to do two hours and he gets a whole day off and he's getting paid for it. Do something, Carl. Be grateful. You've probably you've probably ruined a man's career. He's been ridiculed now for doing this. That, that he's so weak, where he should have slapped, squ squoze your head and kicked you out of the building. So let's have a little bit of effort. You've only got an hour and a quarter to do. Then you get two days off. All right. All right. Right, Carl. It's a questionnaire about happiness. Oh yeah. There's one person. <laughs> 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 well, that should answer it right there. The uh, first question, Carl. On a happy scale of one to ten, where are you on the happy scale? Uh, Is it at this moment or in general? Well, I would say generally. Okay. Yeah, but you don't always have to like. Oh, I mean, I, I, I think I'm happy in that, but I don't always show it. You never show it. No, but it doesn't mean I'm not. I'm not happy in that. Like, I, I'm all right at the moment. I'd say I'm probably on a. It's probably on a, about an eight. I was. A, I was probably on about a nine when I woke up, right? <laughs> and then, uh, sort of fell out with Suzanne over her haircut. Yeah. Right. She went for a haircut and came back with something that I didn't like. What? Sorry. What did you say? <laughs> you so so when your girlfriend walked to the door, she had her hair done. You said I don't like it. All right. Do well, you say she that? Well, you could tell by the look on my face. I, and but I the, said, but don't you say no? I'm I'm happy with it. I just just can't tell. I'm loving it. Because I'll, then she won't have it done again. Oh, uh, Carl, I just cannot know. get over you. I really can't. No, I but cannot. you haven't seen it. Right? I'll st 
So, so then I was fed up, but what, then I thought- Sorry, what authority have you got uh, to talk about haircuts? Yeah, you had the, you had the, uh, well, officially from a, a barber in Manchester above a railway station in a shack, it was two pounds a cut, told you you had the hair of a Chinaman, well, you <laughs> wish you had the hair of a Chinaman now, you got no hair. <laughs> You're a little bald man with your mouth open, so don't- Is she listening to this, Suzanne? Sitting at home with a woolly hat on? <laughs> I don't know. Well, she knows now, doesn't she? What did you say? What, what did you did do you about it, I though? I just said you look like someone out of Slade. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly, oh that's what I look for in a girlfriend. Oh, God! Which one oh. is Slade? That one with the not, funny, uh... Not Dave Hill. <laughs> yeah. The one with the crooked fringe and the goofy- She has her teeth done as well, did she? She had two <laughs> front teeth put in. Dump her. So anyway, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> So- so prior to that you're on a nine, then you saw the haircut, you're on an eight. Yeah. Yeah. And now then, what you uh, on? I'm probably on about a six at the moment. Why? What's happened? Well, while Star Sailor was on, bit more head squeezing going on. <laughs> so yeah, about a five or six. So generally speaking, <coughs> what would you say you are? About four. You are about <laughs> four for <laughs> All right. Um, what would you give someone who wasn't <sighs> very happy? What would you give them? Uh, what are you thinking, Carl? Depends why they're not happy. They're not- they're low, okay, so what would you give them? I mean, if you- if, yeah. Depends, innit? it? If it's someone who's just lost their arms and legs in an accident, you don't give them a lollipop. Sure. Or some mittens. Yeah. <laughs> you give them a hat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And- oh, oh, and, oh, oh. dare I say it, a smile. <laughs> a skateboard! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You don't no, know. You gotta answer the question. Alright, so hang on, let, let's assume that you've upset your girlfriend because you slagged off her haircut. What right? are you doing you now feel to guilty. go and make her happy? How are you gonna cheer her up? Uh, and not buy her a baseball cap? <laughs> I don't know yet, I haven't thought about it because I've got this to sort out, haven't I? <laughs> so wh wh when I get home, get her some gel or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Oh, Christ. Okay, oh. and uh, oh. all right, just name something that always puts a smile on your face, Carl. It always cheers you up. If you're feeling a bit blue, it always cheers you up. A monkey, innit? Learning something. Right. <laughs> That's a bit weird. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love the qualifier. <laughs> That's no, I a think bit it was weird. Two, I, do, I think it was two different seven sentences. <laughs> I think it was learning something. That's a bit weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, learning something that's a bit weird. Okay, and finally, um, if you could have something to make you happy, what would it be? Little chimp, wouldn't it? Little chimp in a suit. Well, don't answer for him. Don't put words into me. Uh, you can have anything you want, it'll cheer you up and make you happy. What would it be? You can't say a, a skin of titanium. It's gotta be something possible. Yeah. X-ray vision. No. What, what would you have? It can be, it can be conceptual. It could be world peace. It doesn't have to be, you know, a, a new watch. Yeah, like someone else wish for that. Sure. It'd be a waste. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, why should you do it? And then that someone else gets a nice new watch and there's world peace. <laughs> exactly. You're walking round, it's nice and peace but you know what time it is. He's swanning round, he's got a lovely new watch and there's no threat of him being bombed. <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm quite happy the way I am really, I don't- I don't really want Are that you much. Really? But you're on a four! Yeah, yeah, You're on yeah, a happy yeah, scale yeah, of four! Yeah, you're on a four, surely you want to get to ten. Surely the point of life is to be on ten. Yeah, but what's- what's a ten? Do you know what I mean? No. What's- what's a ten? Contentment, absolute contentment. Bliss. Joy in your heart. Yeah. Inwardly and outwardly. Not walking round with a little round mank head with your mouth open going, what's the point of that? I've done it once. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why you still got all the condoms? You go, I've done it once. <laughs> what's the point of that? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we're gonna get over here. <laughs> Some air gel. Come on! Ten. Just one thing that would make you happy. That would cheer you up if you were feeling low. Tuesday's off as well? <laughs> I'll have the MD just, uh, you know, resign straight away, shall I? I honestly don't know what would make me happy just like that. Cause I- cause I am happy, I know you- I know you say I'm fed up and that. Do you know what- do you know what- it's it, 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 it wouldn't wanna be too rich. He said, cause if I was too rich then Suzanne would say, let's go around the world. He said he wants to be rich enough, so they're a a happy in that they got their bathroom in, but they can't- they still can't afford any more holidays a year. Mm. Think of that, think of that wish. Think of that capping your wishes. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? Putting a ceiling yeah, yeah, on, yeah. on your ambition. I love it. <laughs> it's genius. Look at his face. Play a record. You It's idiot. like if you'd won that ticket round Charlie's Chocolate Factory <laughs> and he'd said, actually Carl, I want you to take over the factory, it was a test. You'd have said, I just wanted to look around the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. I'm happy to go back uh, and live. No, no, he'd have said, he said I'll, I'll work it but I'm not working Mondays. <laughs> exactly. Play a record. Imagine giving a Chocolate Factory to a kid.
I know. Idiot. Give it to the fat one at least, he yeah. enjoyed it more. So, you know. Sorry, how was this, what was this supposed to be chi achieving? It was why like is, a face why is, You've gone in for a facial and she's testing out what well, your pain threshold Well, that's what is. I said. I said, hang on a minute, what do you mean? It's meant to be relaxing this. Yeah. You normally have whale noises happening. <laughs> yeah. And now it's gonna be me screaming. She said, no, no, it's just, you know, we have to ask, we have to make sure, because yeah. there is a bit of pain. Well, you know, is heat. There's heat into these hot yeah. cloths. Um, yeah, we'll go better than thumb screws. Let's get the thumb screws out now. And plus all that kidney stone pain that yeah, I but had. You just were in agony when you had the kidney stones. You don't. I don't remember you having this triumphant. Pain Absolutely, sure. you I gave up winged instantly. And yeah. winged and winged. yeah, because you have to to get seen. If I go in there and I'm going, I'm in agony, and they're going, you don't look like you're in agony. I went, look, I'd be at the back of the queue. So you have to go in and go. Oh, yeah. And so, they're going, quick, get him in. So pain threshold is good for yourself, but it's not good for other people. So you were bullshitting? You didn't feel pain at all? I was in agony, but I can hold it off. I can sit there and be quiet and have a sweat on. But if you do that in a hospital waiting room, it'll be the little div who's coming with a pan on his head, who's screaming <laughs> and saying his head's throbbing. That's what I'm saying. So to get seen, you have to put it on. It's like a baby crying. There's nothing wrong with it. Is he crying for? He's probably hungry. Well, I'm hungry. I'm not crying. But that's what they use, isn't it, right. to get attention. So you're, so you're braver than a baby, is what you're saying. You're braver than a baby. <laughs> That's all we've established here. In some cases, in not in when others. When you feel like the form, Not in you? others. Sometimes <laughs> babies are braver. When yeah. a baby's braver? You can chuck them in a pool when they don't panic. <laughs> I'm rubbish. Sorry, will you leave my baby alone? No, I'm doing an experiment. Mr Pilton, will you stop throwing children in the pool? No, babies. You're, ba you're barred from this swimming pool from now on. I mean babies. It's the same way you can chuck one out of a window and it can land. Break its back it's no, no, that's not true. Chest. Do not do, do that. Not do that. If you're a maniac, you, you cannot throw this. a baby out of a window. It's just what I heard. you hear that? You're thinking of a cat, and don't throw cats out. <laughs> don't throw any living thing yeah, out of a window. You, you can't throw a baby out of the window and it won't break its back. What are you talking no, about? No, it's just there's a certain height. It's all about us tensing up. We tense up, don't we? It's like how once someone who fell out of a plane, they passed out, and because they passed out when they landed, they were relaxed. They no. woke up. They were like, oh yeah, what happened then? Someone fell out of a plane. <laughs> That's bollocks. It's not, honestly. How uh, far no. was the plane? Oh, high up. It's a plane, isn't it? Well, what's the lowest height well, that a plane well, could be at? Even if it was at 30 feet, that's a height, isn't it? To fall without... Yeah, well, exactly. But if was, it was, the plane, higher... was the plane just on the runway? No, it was iron up, iron up. It was high up enough. Is this the way you went? <laughs> for the holiday? We're going to high up enough. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me! Can't, can't even talk. So yeah, pain oh. threshold, I'm very good at it. So, uh, would you say you've ever been brave? Because I was thinking, before we did this, I, I can't think of a time when I've ever been brave. I don't think I've been cowardly, I've just never been in a situation where I needed to be brave, particularly. And I've always managed to avoid fights, conflicts. Yeah. You see, I, uh, when I was in Salford, I'd nip to Greg's to get a pasty. Mm. I heard some bells going off, I came out, just so, oh, I don't know what that is. Went over to the car, sort of thinking, oh, I can't wait to have this pasty when I get home. Cup mm. of tea, nice cup of tea, maybe a bit of bread. I love the fact that, that his head was just filled with food because <laughs> he was buying food and thinking food. When he's eating, I'm thinking, I'm eating food. Food. Just just one big globular mess of food cells in his head yeah. for the for the duration of the food experience. I can remember that food thought going on now, and it was probably, like, 15 years ago. <laughs> but I remember how happy I was. I'm out at the Greggs, I've got what I want, I'm on my way home, this pie's hot, it's gonna be hot when I get home, it's gonna be a nice cup of tea, bread. These are the things you save, and yet you forget really important facts. Yeah, he doesn't know why wars are happening, yeah. but he does remember this. Yeah, but yeah. Listen, this is why I remember it. Like I said, you forgot the bit that I said. A bell going off. Mm. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, I'm walking over the road, put the key in the car, I turn round, bloke comes running out of the post office, obviously the bell's gone off, he's got a big shotgun, balaclava on, and he stops and looks at me, he's there with a big gun in his hand, and he's looking at me. And I just, I wasn't scared, I just was thinking, does he want me pie? <laughs> I remember thinking, if he said, if he said, I want that, I'd have to give it up. <laughs> So a man with a gun. I told Suzanne, she said, no, he's probably thinking about nicking your car. He's got your What, key. he didn't have a car ready? He came, no, he, he had the balaclava, it. he had the balaclava, the gun, and he goes, fuck me, I forgot the car. In the end, he sort of ran off down the back alley. I love the fact that you, he looked over at you for a split second and you thought he might be interested in your Was pie. there other people around? Were Nick you sure it. this happened and you weren't reading a comic book? No, it happened. And so he looked you in the face, he yeah, saw you. his balaclava, he made eye contact, I looked at him, everything sort of stopped for a minute. And then he just sort of legged it off down the back alley. 
And uh, you, what, what, did you, did, what did you say to the police when you obviously went? I didn't. I just well, went. Well, you were witness to the risk. Really? Aye. Like I said, it was warm. Aye, it's not going to stay warm forever, is it? But wh when they when when it was on Crime Watch a few weeks later, no, it wasn't. That, but... That's what was weird. I said to Suzanne, "Oh, let's watch like ground reports tonight. See if I'm on the telly or anything." Nothing. Didn't even get reported. Why would you be on the telly if you just ran just away? Just didn't say CCTV or something like that. If I was involved in it, they went. This happened today in Salford outside Greg's. Are you this man with the pie? I wanted to make sure I was well out of this one. Because Suzanne sort of said, oh, should you get involved? But you shouldn't get involved, because then I'm at threat, I'm at risk, aren't I? Nobody well, there was killed. You are. We're back to bravery again, aren't yeah. we? Yeah, it is bravery. Go on, then. Next door but one. There's a fella there. He, uh, he likes a drink. He came home late one night, banging on the door. Obviously forgot his key. He was trying to kick the door in. I looked out the window, and he was not thinking someone's breaking in. Right? I see it's in. I saw all the curtains twitching. He just went back to bed. Now I kept an eye on him. He kicked so hard, he fell back, dropped his curry, landed in the road. <laughs> dropped his curry! Right. Oh God, why didn't he get a pie from Greg's? Because that lands and it's still fine. So, anyway, he passes out. Right. Curry all over the shop. Yeah. Head in the road. Cars come down that road. Yeah. Sometimes pretty fast. Yeah, it's night time. He could yeah. get his head squashed. Yeah. Like I said, curtains are still a switching, no one's a helping. <laughs> <laughs> I I go out there and I go, You alright, you alright? And he's he's totally off his head. He's obviously had a you know, alright skin full. Uh, he's going, Oh, where am I, where am I? I'm going, You're outside your house, but you've got to get off the road because you're gonna get squashed. So he's like, Oh and he could hardly move, so I sort of picked him up sat him on the pavement, sort of picked up the curry and stuff. Suzanne came out, what's going on? I said, oh, look at him, he's in right state. Anyway, sort of coming round a little bit. Um, in the end, I said, where's your keys? Got him in his house. Job done. But that's not bravery. That's not bravery. There was no there's threat no, to you. No. It's just put yourself out of it for two minutes. It is bravery, because he's, he's out of his head. He could have thought I was attacking him. He could have swung at me. Now, the good He's thing is... He's lying in the road, unconscious, covered in curry. <laughs> this, this is not a threat. It is a threat. I'm out on the street late at night. Someone could have come round the corner and thought I was mugging him. And, and then they, they attacked me. Why would they attack you? They because they think, what are, you, what, are you, what are you doing? People don't ask questions because you're not allowed to, like with the sergeant. They chip in straight away. I know what's going on here. No, you don't. You don't know the full story. He's pissed up and his curry all over it. <laughs> it, isn't, it isn't blood. It's masala. <laughs> You hear about this all the time, misunderstandings. Now I helped him. The day after, he remembers, he comes round and he gave me some minced meat that he had left over. <laughs> I love this! Where do you live? This is amazing! Oh my God! So the thing oh is, it God. goes to show that I put myself out, he appreciated it, he said, you're right, you know, the way cars come round here, oh, I'd, I'd had a bit of a week, you know, I'd had a lot to drink, good on you. Now no one else chipped in. Now it is bravery, kind of, because no. no one else went out there and helped. You didn't even know about that. It's only because you just asked. It was ages ago. I don't shout about it. I don't want an award. <laughs> have a go hero. I don't want any of that. I just <laughs> did There's no have a go did hero you, about it. Did you take the mince meat? Yeah, I did, yeah. It was good stuff. Yeah. That's uh, better than an award in a way, isn't it? I told him that. <laughs> so, it depends. I think there's different <laughs> ways. Have a mince meat! I <laughs> love that! <laughs> I, would, uh, I was saved by a, a bald man. Slaughter my finest pig, <laughs> mince the meat, and send it to him. What about phrases from the uh, war days? What about things like, um, careless talk costs lives? What do you make of that? Careless talk? I suppose just busy chatting in a trench rather than <laughs> <out there. laughs> No, it doesn't! It doesn't mean that! <laughs> Have another go. <laughs> Careless Talk cost lives. They used to have posters up all over London and other cities. Careless Talk costs, costs lives. lives. There was another one, there's another saying that means the saying that might give you a clue. The walls have ears. Yeah, but that just means, um, don't be slagging someone off because <laughs> someone will hear it, pass it on, and then they'll end up fighting their own instead of who they should be fighting. Well, no, you're and almost there, but think it, about what you mean. It's not about gossip, it's not about But it is a way it is, it's, but it's, it's, it's about very specific gossip. Much more important tittle-tattle. K 
careless whispers. No, that's that's that's, <laughs> that's George, George Michael. Michael. Say again. Okay. What's the first one again? Careless talk costs careless. lives. I don't know. I imagine it being like a. Don't go shooting your mouth off about things you know about the war effort, because there might be a German spy in the pub disguised as a barmaid. Oh, you're lovely, Tracy's going, yeah, I'm Carl. What do you know about no, the war? That's What's true, that does happen. I remember our my brother being in the army, he, he had the same thing. He what? was told, he was told not to, because he liked the women and that. Yeah. He was told, listen. One of them might be a German spy? Yeah. He said, don't, don't be going out with German women, because they're quite muscly. And Could be a man. There'll be a gang of them, no, and they'll do you in. Sorry, your brother was told... Don't go out with a gang of German women because they're quite muscly and they might do you in. Yeah, because it's all part of the thing. They sort of go out, like you say, pretending they're just like women out on the night because he was, he was in Germany for a bit, he was posted over there. Right. And apparently they target like British soldiers and that. And like I say, he, he likes his women. He'd just go along with it thinking this is good. Um, you know, Actung baby or whatever. <laughs> That's okay, and you too. Hey, yeah. action, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, action, baby. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, got him in a headlock and good night, Vienna. Well, well. <laughs> good night, Vienna. Uh, why, why, would they, why are these random German women just killing oh, sorry, British blokes? What, what's the reason for this? It was a proper thing. I remember him telling me, telling oh, me, Mum, saying, oh, girl, they had a right dilemma. I met some women, German. Couldn't go with them, though, because we were told that there might be, uh, you know, it might be trouble. Really, yeah. Honestly, that's that's Sorry, a fact. Sorry, British soldiers were getting beaten up by German women. <laughs> this is not true. <laughs> Can't be. Why? If you're caught off guard, you're just thinking, oh, you know, out with the ladies, and then they suddenly turn on you. It's a but, shock. It's a surprise element. But why are they element. beating them up? With? It's, it's presumably talking about the because Cold War. Because he's a soldier. Yeah, but, but we they, were... They, they were allies then. Well, when your brother was stationed in Germany. He wasn't. It wasn't occupied Germany. We hadn't invaded. It wasn't. It wasn't the German resistance. White stripes, dead leaves, and the dirty ground on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkerton. We have got a great show lined up for you. Absolutely. Today it's just uh, yeah Valentine's weekend. Some love songs. Ooh. We've got some chat, and of course the competitions. I'll tell you what. I, I was walking here today, and. The West End is crammed. There's helicopters, there's police, there's about a million people sort of just milling around, standing around with placards and stuff. I don't know what they're doing, but they've got too much time on that. They, they need a war. You don't read the newspapers, do you? Boring. Ooh, those boys can rock there. That's the guns with all their roses. <laughs> and sweet child of mine. <laughs> on oh. XFM 104.9. I enjoyed device. that. Yeah. That yeah. was good. It rocks. It I, rocks hope, I hope the audience was playing it loud, like us. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Ricky Jones, <sighs> Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Well, look at him yawning. How rude is that? Carl, what's wrong with you, man? Have you been up late? A little bit. <laughs> Girlfriend was away, wasn't she, yesterday? Yeah, I always have a problem with that. I always have a. Because you don't go to bed, do you, early? Do you know what I mean? You what? sort of think. I, I just always mm. find that thing that if, you know, you're used to living with someone. Yeah. One of you will go, well, let's go to bed, then you'll go, all right. Um, but when you're on your own, you go, oh. You just forget to go to bed. So you I go, just stay up. Okay, was... stop, stop eating now, Carl. You've had all the food. That's just the plate. All right. Okay. Yeah. No, I just, I, I stayed up and watched, um, there was a thing on about Dracula. <laughs> right. <laughs> what, Dracula? And I found a flaw in it. Go on. Uh, not, not the fact that he's the living dead and there's- No. Nope. And drinks blood to stay alive and he doesn't reflect- And he can turn into a bat. Well, and you can, go on. The mirror thing, you can't look in mirrors, can he? Well, he can look in mirrors, but he can't see himself in a mirror. Yeah. Like that it still doesn't work. Go okay, on. go on. It doesn't work at all, Carl. It doesn't work okay. at all. Go anyway. on. No, 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 no. Well, centre parting's always really neat. His centre parting's always really <laughs> How neat. How does he do it if he can't look in the mirror? <laughs> Bl blood on the floor or something it was called. Rubbish. <laughs> <Go on. laughs> I love the flaw in the Dracula film is that his centre farting's too neat. How did he do it without a mirror? Ah, oh. Was it a documentary about Dracula? No, yeah. there was the real Dracula. The real Dracula. <laughs> yeah, the real yeah. Dracula. It's just a film. It had blood on the floor or something. It's called. Yeah, it's yeah. From 1970. Yeah, right. But you, you say that and watch that. You know there aren't yeah, really vampires that, in that yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah, but it still annoys you that his centre parting was too neat. Well, if you're gonna do it. Do you know what I mean? I'd like to see him with a fringe, sort of pushed forward, mm. and maybe a hood up, alright? Come to suck your blood and that, alright? 
Uh, yeah, just bits of tissue paper all over his face yeah, where oh, he's cut himself oh, shaving. Oh, I can't see it. Bloody mirror is annoying <laughs> me now, isn't it? Yeah. I'd love to see that. A little mank drack. That'd be great, wouldn't it? Well, that, that might be a film that we do in, uh, our movies. Mancula. Just, just getting onto that. Mancula. Count Mancula. <laughs> all right. You got any rave? You got any rave music? Huh? Uh? Johnny Oasis or that? Uh, that'd be brilliant. <laughs> uh, he came from Manchester. Please welcome Mancula. All right? That'd be great, wouldn't it? His hair's a mess. Well, I can't see a mirror, can I? <laughs> well, we've got a show lined up for you. Um, sad news. For Rockbusters fans, it is going to be the last Rockbusters. Does that mean that we are doing another one and it's the last one? Or we are doing another one, together? and it's the last one. Oh, man. Got a bit yeah. of a special one, Steve. Have you? Yeah. Um, it's just sort of done. Well, it makes uh, sense. No, it's <laughs> <laughs> First time only. No, it's it's uh, it's done on accents because I'm running out of like clues and that to use. Oh, is this as bit good as the Jamaican one? Uh, <laughs> the the de trout spinners. <laughs> the trout spinners. So it doesn't work. At all. A bit like that. Okay, so go on, what's, uh, what's the gist of this one? Well, it's just, um, I've been the sound effects bit, that, that didn't really wow. work out. So there's three sort of cryptic clues. Yep. yep. And, sort uh, of cryptic, yeah. it's done on, uh, it's done on accents and I've sort of worked down the country so I've got a northern one, mm -hmm. I've got a brummy one and I've got a, uh, cockney one. Oh, right. Excellent. We'll look so forward to that. We've that got later. quite a lot of competitions, haven't we? Because you've also got your film competition. He's, uh, appearing in The Shining this week, Steve. Excellent. <laughs> okay. Um, we've also got, ooh, chimpanzee, that. More monkey news from around the world. <laughs> monkey news. Uh, Stay tuned for that. But, there's one that I thought we could phase in as we phased out Rockbusters. It's an old favourite. Carl, it was before your time. XF Family Fortunes. XF Family Fortunes, it's brilliant. Get it owes nothing to TV show Family Fortunes. No, it's XF Family Fortunes. You can't get him on that. So we'll be playing that a little bit later as well with two lucky, um, people at the and we'll be giving away some great prizes, I imagine, Excellent. Steve. Yeah. Go through those a little bit later. Yeah. Um, as it was Valentine's weekend, what about, uh, a lovely song by Lloyd Carl? Oh. Like Lovers Do, I'd yeah? Love to be right. <laughs> yeah. Lloyd Carl. Like lovers do on XFM 104.9. Is that for all the lovers out there? <laughs> yeah. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Merchant and little Carl Wilkinson. Oh, we're having a laugh, aren't we? Little Carl with his hey, sandwich and that. Up, oh, I'm a, oh, I'm still bruised where you punched me in the shoulder, showing that you could box. Yeah, to be fair though, Rick, you do think that you're now a professional yeah. boxer because like you've been on the telly like boxing. Marciano, yeah. No, he does. Uh, I mean, he laughs about it, but he does walk around thinking, yeah, I could probably handle myself in a yeah. street brawl. In fact, I walk around handling myself. Yeah. A lot of the time, don't yeah. I, Carl? Um. And often mm. Carl. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love it. Because his little round head, I've got another mate that's got a little bald head, and I'd like to squeeze it. Mm. I'd just <laughs> like to see how far. Do you know what I mean? Like an egg. It, you can squeeze it f that way, sort of sideways, and that hurts. But then squeeze it forward to back. It doesn't hurt so much, does it? Do you know what worries me, though? I think <laughs> if you ever actually did crack Carl's head, I think yolk would come out. <laughs> yeah. I did, he was drawing, and I gave him a little karate chop on the back of the head, and he jumped. He spasmed. Sorry, you it? gave him a karate chop on the back of the head? Yeah. To be fair, though, I think I'd spasm. <laughs> <laughs> if a man crept up behind me and karate chopped me in the neck, oh, that's probably laugh, a natural God. reaction. Didn't I laugh, oh, eh, yeah, God? This is right, good laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so we got lots of uh, little things to get through. I mean, look at his little face. You are right? We had a little lunch yesterday, didn't we? We did indeed. That was a nightmare. Yeah. I hate going out with you two. I, I was explaining to Carl, right? I, I like to excite Carl's imagination, right? And uh, um, if it involves chimps or monkeys, all the better. Um, brains he likes, parts of the body, deformity. You know, I know, I know where to, you know, what buttons to push. And, um, I told him about this thing, I don't know if, uh, uh any of you out there, um, know about this. Um, but there's, there's an experiment they did in the, in the 50s, um, a, uh, a clinical psychology experiment where, uh, there's, your two hemispheres of the brain, okay, they're joined by a thing called the corpus callosum, right, which is a, just a little f flap of skin, like a little scartly that joins your two hemispheres. And what they did, they cut that in half, and they thought it was a cure for schizophrenia, but what it turned out to be, or epilepsy, I think, I can't remember, um, uh, was that your two sides of your brains didn't function together. You couldn't get information. I was telling Carl all this thing, and I, one of the things I told him was that they did it on a monkey, and it fought itself over a nut, like its right arm was connected, you know, by its left 
lobe of the brain, and it was mm -hmm. fighting over itself. And Carl went instead of like thinking this is amazing experiment, he went, "Would it would it have been happy if you'd given it two nuts?" <laughs> yeah, I know. And well, you started off by explaining, it, and I remember you mentioned because I, I was watching the two of you as you were describing it to me. You said, "Of course, one side of the brain deals with uh, symbolism," and as you said the word symbolism, I noticed Carl drift away from looking at you, <laughs> pick up his mobile phone, <laughs> and start pressing buttons randomly. <laughs> And I, I thought it was the word symbolism that got him. And I noticed it took you just a moment longer. And I think the first thing you said was, "When did I lose you?" Yeah, I know I'd lost him. It's extraordinary, and he doesn't even try I to think disguise I said it. I said Nolakachir at one point as well. Right, yeah. And I, I knew I was dicing with death there. Yeah. But yeah. um, I did, but I tried. You tried to look it up, didn't you? On the on the web, you didn't find anything about yeah, it. The yeah? spelling, the spelling of it's what? What is it again? What's the word? Corpus callosum. Yeah. I'm sorry. I couldn't, put, couldn't do it. Couldn't no, put it's a point. Yeah. Don't bother. Give up. Don't bother. Give up. Um, so any, if anyone knows any interesting facts about that, that, uh, Adam's but yours hasn't been cut in half, has it, Carl? <laughs> that would, again, might explain to I'll tell you what we will be talking about later. I don't know if you're, you're, if you're sort of aware of them, Steve. Go on. Bonobos. Oh, I, told I don't him know about, much about bonobos. I told really. him about them. He was looking for stuff. I said, put in bonobo. He was having no luck with chimp. Um, and they're, uh, they're a, they're a form of chimpanzee, but, um, they're, they're even closer to us. Evolutionally speaking, they've got their social um, groups are more like ours, they're, they're more intelligent. And he was loving it, weren't you? Oh. So is it, is it human bonobo Carl? <laughs> is yeah, that how it works yeah, on the yeah. evolutionary ladder? Chimp Carl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're yeah. talking about bonobos, you're excited about that? Yeah, That's yeah. Uh, coming up in, uh, monkey news? Um, uh, no, I think it's a bit of a monkey bonus. <laughs> 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 W.C. featuring Snoop, The Streets on XFM 104.9, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. I think we should, uh, kick off with a bit of a competition. I think we should get the, the listeners involved here. Mm -hmm. Phone up if you wanna play XF Family Fortunes. Now a lot of people of course won't be familiar with this because we played this in the very early days of XFM. Yeah. Um, do you want to explain the rules or do you just want people to phone it's in? It's like Family Fortunes. We need two of you. <laughs> uh, I asked you- Do you remember we discussed this before, you can't say that? Yeah. Um, and so get two on the line, you're, you're competing against each other, and so it's fingers on the buzzers. Um, will you stop chewing, picking your teeth? It, it's, it, I mean, even if the listeners can't hear, it really annoys me. It is a bit like having a chimp in the room. Do you know what I mean, Carl? Right. Have you ever seen him he eat hot food? No. Uh, honestly, it is like a chimp. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you doing? What? <laughs> Just get. Oh, God. <laughs> or like the cookie monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh.